these two. Hello? All right. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the first inaugural, the, the inaugural Gravity Games held here at Evolve Strength Sunridge in Calgary. Sessions just started for the morning. We have Sophie Restoro called at 77.5 kilos. I'm Danny, and alongside with me here is Jenny Hua. That's no lift for our first lifter, Sophie. Looks like she missed a command. Yellow card is command. Our technical officials this morning are our chief referee, not shown on screen, Connor Lutz. Being evaluated for his provincial referee. On stage left, house right, we have Sh Chantel Zuch. And on stage right, we have Matt Perry. Now here, called at 77.5 kilos. Clock's running for Janelle. Pretty smooth walkout. You made the time. Well, I don't know about that. Looks like a good lift to me. That's a good lift. Janelle under the supervision of Max Hall, I see. A longtime coach and personal trainer out of Lethbridge. Platform manager, Zaid Ibrahim and his platform crew. We've got Vanessa Cates called at 80 kilos for her first squat. And we've got a cool B shot, B cameras. Not shown on screen are our media team, Adam and JC. Pretty easy first squat for Vanessa. Lights are good. All right, next up we have Diana opening with 85 kilos, 187.4 pounds. Nice and steady walk out. And that's a good lift for Diana. Elise here called at 85 kilos for her first squat. No belt or wrist wraps. Now that's raw, raw. Oh, might be a little high and jump to command. That's probably no. It's no lift. No lift. Two calls for depth and one one for one for a technical foul. Looking through the questionnaire here, it seems like a lot of the lifters, seems like it's the, the first meet for a lot of the lifters here.
shown briefly was our technical controller, Arshia Arshadi, another longtime powerlifting coach. Got Danielle here, 92.5 for her first squat. Rack height six. One of our more diminutive lifters so far. Nice smooth opener. I believe Danielle is coached by Abby Hall, another veteran powerlifter from, from ages past. Ashley Wall is called. 92.5 loaded. Is they double checking those callers? Good lift. Next up, we have Leah Fanning opening with a hundred two point five kilograms. Running for Leah looks like the rack height's pretty high. Loaders have it set to rack 15. Nice smooth opener. The coach might have the rack height lowered one or two just to make it easier for her to walk out. If the lifter needs a rack height change, it's done on their time, of course. The lifter's responsibility to verify the rack height information that's declared at weigh in. I have Megan Dashkin here, 1025. Same rack height. Jenny and I are pretty short, so our rack heights are. What's, what's your rack height here, Jenny? Six. Six. My rack height is 10 or 11. 11 on a good. 11 in weightlifting shoes, but no lift. Looks like the fans again. Like Jenny said, a lot of first time, first time lifters and lifting to commands is, is a unique experience if you, if you don't practice it in training. Big rack height change down to rack nine. 115 here, getting the blues on for Caitlin Budgen. Was hilarious last time. Not the last time we had to go from rack height 18 all the way down to rack height 7. A lot of ocean mates, we get a we get big rack height changes because the sessions aren't sorted into into weight classes as as neatly as they are in in the higher level competitions. Looks like Caitlin did not get a squat command. She does not appear to be standing erect. The chief referee waits for the side referees to give the signal to start once the side referees are satisfied with the lifter starting position. That's a good lift. Good lift. Lifters, of course, have 60 seconds once the bar is called as loaded to be, to receive the signal to begin the lift. And we have Olivia Hudy here, 63 kilo sub junior. Coming up at 120.
confident walk up. Solid opener. A good lift. Session team stacked with a bunch of 63s and 69s. Most looks like most of our lightweight middle middleweight and under women in this session. Alicia coming up here, 125. Red is on. First lifter with the red. Smooth opener for Alicia. And that's a good lift. A lot of decently big jumps declared for our lifter's second attempt. You can access the score sh the live score sheet at s y m p l m e e t dot p l m e e t dot com. Nice easy walkout. Just what we want for an opener: confident and smooth. Hey, Danny, why did Mickey Mouse go to outer space? Why, kiddo? He was looking for Pluto. Yeah. 140 coming up here for our one of fifth lifter, Pam Potter. She happens to be the president of the Alberta Powerlifting Union Association. Pam electing to lift in partial kit, only knee wraps, no squat suit. Under the supervision of longtime coach Brian Kravtsov. Nice, neat wraps. You can see the X pattern over the kneecap, and the end of the wrap tucks neatly away. Last thing we want is the wrap to undo itself. A heavy under a heavy squat. A little shaky, but likely 140 is over Pam's raw max. So you don't always have to be fully equipped. You do not have to be fully equipped. There are a lot of lifters who do squat and wraps, bench in, a, bench in their bench shirt, and We'll, we'll just deadlift raw, but if you register, if you register equipped, you have. If you register equipped, you have to lift. Uh, well, you don't have to lift equipped, I guess. You can register equipped and do raw openers and decline the rest of your attempts as a part of a qualification strategy. Back to the top of the order for our first 82.5 loaded. Sophie was called for missing commands on our first, if I recall correctly. So I'll get you in that bag. Let's see what the referees say. That's no lift from Connor and Chantel. Next up, we have Janelle, 85 kilos. 7.5 increase from her first attempt. Decently big jump, it's almost a 10% jump from first to second. Like 
the matching stitch we've got going on. Please patient stand up. Move second, but we'll see what we'll see what Max declares for the third. Reese Martin coming up now, eighty five, eighty five loaded. Running for a lease. I don't recognize her coach. It's a good lift, at least on the board. Diana Jimenez is coming up. 80, 92 5, excuse me. She's just going to be hitting her personal best as a professional tennis player. Sounds like training was pretty good. She'll go for a PR on her third attempt. Command. Looks like she's got a little more in the tank. Vanessa coming up here, ninety two five. Matches for lifetime best. Good grind on the second. No, that's a good lift to, by majority decision. When she hits on her Looks like down looks like downward motion that Connor spotted. Next up we have Danielle. Matches her lifetime best again. Declared on the second. Sixty nine five three. How many sub juniors? Two in the first group. One in the second. Two in the two second. In, two in the second group. Nice patient walkout. Easy second. Nice and smooth. Just what we want. <laughs> Setting her up for a big PR on her third. That's a good lift. Ashley Wallace coming out, also with 100 load declared. Patient walkout. That's a good lift.
Megan coming up here, 107.5. It's a five kilo increase from a missed opener. Jenny, do you remember why? Do you remember why that first was a miss? Might have been commands. Seems like we've had a couple of those already. Sometimes it's hard. Generally, we don't like to go up on, especially for newer lifters, after a, after a technical miss. It's better to be safe than a chance bombing. No, that's a good lift, excuse me. Megan's on the board. Leah Fanning coming out, 110. 142 pounds. For those of you who are not in the scientific community. Nice smooth second. Looks like a good lift to me. It's a good lift. Blue's coming back on, 122.5 for Caitlin. Only there for one attempt. The remainder of the attempts are over over 125. Is loaded. Squat command. Fast descent, not too bad up. That's a good lift. Red's coming on here. 127.5. Coming on for two attempts. Lucia's being called to the barbell. The narrative is going to tell us pretty soon. Squat command. A bit sticky in the middle, but the weights are getting heavier. This is the second attempt. It's a good lift. Running for Olivia. Coming out here for 127.5. Smooth second. Lots in the tank. White five kilo plates coming on, 137.5. Lost the 300 pound mark. Can 
No miss. Good catch by the spotters. Probably retake that. You are equipped with their pan coming out, so 147.5. Looks like we have APU alumna back, backstage with Pam and Brian. <clears throat> nice tight wrap. Aggressive walkout. Seen Danny, how many more pounds can you put on an equip versus raw? In the full kit, you can see anywhere from depends how good you are with the equipment, of course. <laughs> but but you can see carryovers and into the seventy five plus kilos. Fun and equipped powerlifting is, of course, the danger. So theoretically, I can bench 120 kilos. Or more. Or more. That's the top of the order for Sophie. Sophie's third squad after two misses. Very risky going up after two misses. Good grind on that third. Let's see what the technical officials say. It's a good lift. It's on the board now. Being on bomb watch on the first lift is no fun. But very, very stressful. Now coming up, 92.5 declared, 2.5 kilo PR squad. Nice precise setup. A lot of lifters have their own have their own routine that they like to do between to get ready and and rack and walk out the barbell. Good attempt. Little little head shake to let the spotters know that it's not not confident, not going to take the barbell. Conserve some energy. Elise coming up here for her third squat. Ninety two five. Seven point five kilo PR squat. One master, one eighty four plus lifter to come. No belt, no knee sleeve, no wrist wrap. That's a make. Good lift for a leaf. I 
Indiana coming up now, 97.5. Connor gets a signal from Zaid, our platform manager. Two for two, this will be three for three if successful. Good attempt. Good catch by the spotters as usual. Got a strong crew on deck. Ninety-seven point five. Same There's weight a, for Vanessa. The five kilo PR if she hits this. Not too shabby a day at all. It's already two for two. Shout out to Impact Strength System. One of our meat sponsors and powerlifting coach, Victor Akbawan. Narrow wow. miss on that third. Nice try, Vegas. Yellow's coming on for 105 for Danielle. This is Danielle's first official competition. Danielle competed at an unsanctioned, unsanctioned mock competition in the fall. I think that might have been the QOQ Dinos meet. We called it the Jurassic Classic, if I recall correctly. Did you did Watch you name it? it? <laughs> nice smooth third, three for three. All smiles over there. Ashley Wallace coming up. Same weight matches her best PR in training. Coached by Ann Walls in the back, it looks like. There's the squad command. Good grind on that third. Lift is good. Three for three for Ashley. Megan coming up, 112.5. If she makes this lift, she's going to take her place as number one in the 63 junior. Run through that second point. It's a good lift, two to one by majority decision. But Connor called for downward motion again. Maybe soft knees. Red's coming back on, 125 loaded for Caitlin Budgen.
Caitlin did get a replace call on her first. That's no lift by majority decision, two to one. Might have been Deb, right? Looks like Deb. with 130 on the bar. Going from 102.5, 110 to 130 for her third attempt. Easy. Big increase, but I can't argue with a successful attempt. That's a good lift. All right, next up we have Olivia, Olivia Cuddy. 7.5 increase from our second, 135 loaded. Watchman. That was a very easy third attempt. Very smooth third, lost in the paint. Great to see so many sub juniors doing their first meet. Alicia Steinke. 37.5, 10 kilo increase from our second. Looks like her coach might have missed the timer <clears throat> on our first to the second. Only a 2.5 increase from first to the second. Nice and smooth for that sticking point. That's a good lift. If I remember correctly, I think her second attempt also got a little sticky, so I think that's a good. Jump. The pole coming up. Mr. Second looking for redemption on the third. Powerlifting coach and personal trainer and sponsor of the Gravity Games, Vicky Vicenza Nero, backstage with her. Nice and timed. That's all right. Last in our first group is Pam coming out to retake 147.5. What was she called on last time? And Pam missed the Pam missed her second. But Brian's probably cranking on those wraps in the back. The equipped power lifter penguin walk coming out. Those wraps are real tight. I always find it so crazy with like the full suit. The grind. It's the rack command. It's no lift by majority decision. No lift on depth. I'd say that's a pretty good attempt, though. Switching to the second group here, 142.5. Or 
Arena. Our 184 plus open woman. 42.5 declared. This should be an outlet. Quick change over in referees for the second group. Garcia, our second most recent technical official, sitting in on stage left. Bars loaded. For one forty two five. Nice confident opener. That's a good lift. Green's coming on for 145. For Owen. Really nice picture of him. <laughs> oh, I see. It's not a, not a change in referees. But it's a quick, quick break for Sensel. A long day for our technical official. Been in the chair all day. He's one of our. Junior. Yeah. Like Mr. Nice Swatchman. Move up on a second though. So long as he listens to the SWAT command. Colin coming out. 145 declared. 93 junior. Three 93 juniors. Nice and deep. That's a good lift. Easy opener. And 50 coming on. For Michael. Master 2. Master 2 might be our might be our most most senior senior lifter in the first group. Discussion from the technical officials regarding blood on the barbell. Already? Not yet. Doesn't look like it, but the loaders have to stop and clean the barbell, of course, if there's any blood or other biological matter. It's a good lift for Michael. Same weight for Ivan. 66 Jr.
the call to the platform. No knees leave. Easy. Nice, easy opener. That's a good lift. One fifty two point five. Wilson Wong. His squat personal best is one sixty five. Let's see if he breaks that today. of clean up just in case on the platform. Wilson coming up now. Nice precise walkout. Squatting in Nike Air Max. Good lift. Good lift by majority decision. Might be soft knees on that. Might be soft knees at the top that longtime technical official Chantel saw. Chantel happens to be the officiating chair for the Alberta Powerlifting Union, conducting the evaluation for Connor Lutz. Harold's coming out now. Yellows are on for 155. How many 56s do we have in this fight? Five 66s between junior and open. Fair number. Nice smooth opener. Good lift. Weight remains at 155. For a cold. Coming up. I haven't seen so like this many guys in the lower end. <laughs> you know what? I like chicken wings too, so. <laughs> Can't pass up a good wing deal. I guess there wasn't a requirement for what your lifter picture had to be. So long as it was in good taste, I'm sure. <laughs> nice smooth and in opener. Cole's case, it was the good taste of chicken wings. Ah. Christopher coming up one six zero. like coaching from Andy in the back. Get the signal. Nice patient descent, nice smooth ascent. A good lift. Blues are coming on for the first time. 165 for David Nicholson. David happens to be an elite lifter in the Special Olympics division, taking an open competition in training. Coached by Curtis Howden in the back, longtime weightlifting and powerlifting coach. I'm 
looking for funny space jokes, but none of them are very funny. Solid first. Solid first. Not quite escape velocity, but... That's a good lift. Third red's coming on here. 180 for Connor Holmes. Nearly walks on with his headphones. Coach pulls them out. It happens. Headphone technique is key as the as a powerlifting coach. Most lifters have headphones in for before their attempts. Nice smooth opener. Lift is good. Weight remains 180. Zenon, Zenon. Our selfie. Our selfie given to the narrative lens for their bio cards. Hey, Danny, you want to hear a historically accurate fact? Let's hear it. When our solar system was formed, formed, the sun was in charge. Well, you know what happened after? What's that? The planet started a revolution. Mm. All this lifter so far, rack 18. Easy opener, good lift. Wow, you gave me flashbacks when I had to spot. Some of the guys with rack heights that are over 17. 185 coming up. Carter Bailey. That's our first squat that crosses the 400 pound mark. Seems like we have more 66s than 93s. That's new. Might be more in the second session this afternoon. That's nice easy smooth first. opener. A good lift. Loaders hard at work tightening the collars between attempts. Alexander coming out, same weight. The call. He's our second sub junior of this flight. This. Oh, that's a bit of a misstep. A little Lost too balance. speedy. No lift. Lifters have to wait for a rack command. Back to the top of the order for second squat. 147.5 for Zarina. Let's see what Alex's coach puts in for the second. Should have been easy. Seems like there's a little oopsie on the stream here. Bear with us. Oh, there we go. So we have Diana here. Oh, that's not Diana. Um... 
147 and a half. Same weight, Zade. For Zrena, successful. All in coming out, same weight, same height. There's a boo boo at the score table. <laughs> Nice easy open second attempt. It's a good lift. Yellow's coming back on. One fifty seven five. For Owen. Owen missed there's a no lift on the first. Four point five increase on the second. I think he might have just missed the squat command, so it makes sense that he would go up. Very risky, increasing, increasing 4.5, though. His first attempt was really fast, though, so maybe he got it in him. Nice, confident walkout. There we go. Uh, good lift. Lots in the tank for Owen. Owen. One sixty coming on here for Michael, our master two. Master two is fifty to fifty nine. With any luck, I'll still be lifting at the, at master two. I have no doubt about that. Walk command. Okay, good second. Same weight coming up for Wilson Wong, 66 oh, Jr. Michael Me, actually. Oh, never mind. Michael just went. Sorry, I'm still waking up. Wilson Wong. Setting up for us PR squat with any luck. Secondary camera operator Henry here. Making the lifters look as cool as possible. High bar squatter, Wilson Wong. That's a good lift. You can tell might have called him for soft knees on the first. Looks like an adjustment on the second. Sixty-two five now, two point five increase between attempts. So Ivan's up next. Twelve point five increase from the first to the second. Big jump. Big jump for a big jump for a sixty-six. No wraps, no sleeves. Just the squat command. Seems like we might have a battle of the 66s here. Maybe those are ribs and not wings. <laughs> Quick discussion with the technical officials and our platform manager. Let's 
Speaking of wings, Danny, why aren't astronauts hungry when they go to space? Why is that? They had a big launch. Ah. Discussion about the correct calling order. Using a new, one of the newer meat management software packages, Simple Meat, designed designed by Ryan Stin out of Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. If a lifter was called incorrectly and had a successful lift, they can elect to keep the same. They can elect to accept the results or to take a reattempt at the end of the round. Poll coming out now, 162.5. A good lift from Cole. Blues coming on now. Harold, 165. One kilo increase from first to second. Going to wrap height eight. Need two changes to make that rack height. The opener. Second attempt, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. Great. Nice and smooth. Lifters setting up for their thirds now. Great. We have Christopher squatting 170. Pneumonia enjoyer. I believe Lifters Christopher is a uh, coach out of Evolve Seaton. Seen him around. Nice patient walkout. The officials say here. No, no lift on depth. Three red lights. I see Brent from Team Core. Speaking of three reds, the third third red is coming up. One eight one eighty for David Nicholson. Ten kilos off of his personal best. Fifteen increase from the first. Blast off. Now that might be escape velocity. <laughs> no lift on no lift by majority decision on depth.
Alexander coming out 190. Hawk marks on Zage Kurt already. Lifter's probably brushing up against him. Giving him a big bear hug. Okay. Misstepped on his first, but corrected that on his back end. That's a good lift. See if he can keep that momentum for his third. Green's coming up now. 195 being loaded. Big rat height change up to 18. Patient set up. So tall, his head doesn't even, the top of his head is gone Cut from off. the screen. That's a good lift. I always wonder what it looks like up there. Jenny here at the 52. Five foot one and, one and a half. half. What's that in centimeters? I think uh, 156, seven. Yeah. Carter coming out, 195. Good habit. Good habit to double check the. Opposite side of the barbell that you can't see from the staging area. Just in case. I should practice that more. Last thing you want is uh last thing you want is a misload and then you have to take a fourth heavy squat. Save your energy for deadlift. Nice and smooth. It's a good lift. Last lifter in the round, yellow coming on for Honor. 74 open. PR of 227.5. 30 kilo increase from his first to the second. Wow. And he'll take a big jump up to 230 for a little, little 2.5 kilo PR. See how this second one goes. Nice wide stance. Nice smooth second. Lift That's is good. good Back to the top of their order. For our lifters third. Yeah, 152.5 coming up. Fox running for Zrina. 2 for 2 going into this 152.5 attempt. Nice patient walkout. Oh. 
Good grind. Flip is good. Owen coming up. Taking the minimum increase of 2.5 kilograms in the second. going to be a 7.5 kilo PR if he hits this. He's already walking away with five. Can't argue with a little, just a little more. A cherry on top. Three for it's a three. good lift. Three. Two for three. Miss make make for Owen. Wilson Wong coming out. 165. Blues are coming up. Wong. Matching his personal best. Bar back squatter of the session. Nice, confident walkout. No lift. Good catch by the spotters. Seems like he might have lost the challenge on his heels there. He might get the yoga ball to sit on later. These chairs aren't very comfy at all. Nothing but the best. Nothing but the best for our Alberta Powerlifting Union officials and volunteers. <laughs> Michael Me, our master two. It's, it's no, no lift. lift. Three red lights. I think he might have jumped the rack to make this. I've been coming out, same weight, 170. Big squat bar, 66 junior here. No wraps, no sleeves. Nice and fast third. That's a good lift. Christopher coming out now. We have three lifters at 172.5. Christopher taking the minimum increase of 2.5 kilos from the second. for Christopher. Thirty seconds on the clock. Christopher might be timing out if the second one was the second one was difficult. Nope, there he comes.
Lifters have to get the squad command. There he gets it. Before the end of the timer. Nope, that's no lift. Two more lifters at 172.5. Our 66 is our neck and neck. 172, bo both are taking 172.5. Harold has a lighter body weight. So he will be leading going into bench press. If yeah, they're both like successful. A, we have a battle of the 66s in the open and potentially the juniors as well between Ivan and Wilson. Yep. Steady walkout for Harold. Nice, confident third. It's a good lift from Harold. Pull now at the same weight, 66 open. Harold has a significant body weight advantage by almost three kilos. Good grind on that third from Cole. Third red's coming up, 185, across the 400-pound boundary. Halfway through our second flight now for Harold Smith. Two at one eighty five. Clock starts for Colin. Thirty seven point five kilo increase from his second to his third. Big increase. No lift. Green's coming on for 195 for Alexander. Excuse me, 185 again for David Nicholson. Five kilo increase from the second. David was called for depth by majority decision on his second. And he's our one Paralympic lifter? Special Olympian. Oh, what's his name? What does that mean? Good question. That's a good lift. Green's coming on now for Alexander. He's a double checking that caller. Spotter staying close on this one.
Good catch by the spotters. Fast descent on that one, but failed to achieve escape velocity. So if I had Jade spotting me, I wouldn't be scared of anything. I can't imagine how terrified the Shrinks were when I was spotting for them. Well, that didn't stop them from missing. 200. 200 for Xenon. Two attempts at 200. Zenon. Zenon or Xenon? We'll find out after. We'll find out during the break. Might be our tallest lifter in the morning group. That's a good lift by majority decision. Depth call by Matt Perry on house left. House left, stage right. I kind of wish I hadn't acted scared. Carter coming up. Thumbs up. 200 matches his best. Our 293 juniors are also neck and neck in the squat. Carter has body weight advantage. Weighed in at 87.28 kilos. Nice and smooth through that middle. That's a good lift. I've had a little more in the tank, though. Coach Logan Heffron. Big hug. Last, last in the morning group for squats is Honor. 220 being loaded. Wide stance, Connor. Getting set. Good push through that middle. That's a good lift. That concludes our morning group of squats. Lifters will, the loaders, excuse me, will strip the bar down and swap, set up the platform for bench press. We'll see you in around 10 minutes.
My name is Mohanad Ibrahim. And I'm Kylie Morrissey. The two of us, along with Camille Lim, are going to be your meet directors for the Gravity Games. Our goal for this meet is to bring new elements to a standard powerlifting meet and create a unique lifting experience for our athletes. We'll be doing this by giving out additional prizes, including athlete interviews in our live stream and creating an overall unique atmosphere for our athletes. We'll see you all on April 13th. We can't wait to give you an out of this world experience. My name is Mohanad Ibrahim. And I'm Kylie Morrissey. The two of us, along with Camille Lim, are going to be your meet directors for the Gravity Games. Our goal for this meet is to bring new elements to a standard powerlifting meet and create a unique lifting experience for our athletes. We'll be doing this by giving out additional prizes, including athlete interviews in our live stream and creating an overall unique atmosphere for our athletes. We'll see you all on April 13th. We can't wait to give you an out of this world experience. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Gravity, Gravity Games. Games.
right, so we're kicking off our bench session now, starting off with Diana at 45 kilos. Nice easy opener for Diana. I'm here at the table with Zaid now. Danny is now the platform manager. I think he didn't appreciate my jokes. <laughs> <laughs> so we have uh, Danielle here, same weight at 45 kilos. Pretty smooth for Danielle. Nice and easy opener. Same weight again for Sophie. Her personal best is 60 kilos. So let's see if she gets up there today. 45 kilos could be nice and easy for Sophie here. Very easy opener for Sophie. Nice soft touch. Have Caitlin up next at forty seven and a half. Very easy. Double thumbs up from her. <laughs> so we have uh, Megan up next. Same way. Very close to her PB. PB is 50 kilos, so two and a half under her PB. See how that moves. Very easy. We have Vanessa up next, opening with 50 kilos. Shout out again to Impact Strength System and my coach, Victor. <laughs> Victor here, Jenny? Is he handling? No, I think Anna's handling. So, okay. Uh, Victor's going to be here in the afternoon I see. handling the boys. Right, right. You can see in the background there we have a bunch of sponsors for this meet. We have King Fitness, Impact Strength Systems, right. Wiley Strength, Vic Powerlifting, Inner Strength, Strong Arm. Sports, Rocky Mountain Barbecue, PC Nutrition, Fit Kitchen, Supplement King. Uh, <laughs> the Push Pull Co. SBD. Straight Up Fitness. Um, my eyes are getting bad here. Ward Smelling Salts. Uh, we have Rain or Monster Energy. True um, North. True North, yeah. Mod Meals. 
Uh, they make a banger buffalo mac and cheese. You should all definitely try it. Yeah, we have Ace Lemon, and Rain, and LMNT. Have you tried LMNT before? I don't know, but I hear Andrew Huberman talking about it a lot. <laughs> it's it's really good. I, I really like it. It's expensive, though. It is expensive. We have Nicole here by the Cool Duo. Here's the opener for Nicole. Same weight for Janelle. Personal best is 62 and a half. Elise now uh, with 55 kilos, which matches her personal best. Training must be going good for Elise. Seems like it. Pretty smooth opener for Elise. I really like them. Yeah. It it also has the same amount of caffeine as the big ones. Like 150, 160 milligrams of caffeine. And I think the big one or the original rain is about the same. Yeah, supposed to be healthier too, being plant based. So, kind of makes me think what was in the original one, or just like yeah. in other yeah. energy drinks in general. <laughs> Leah is opening with 27 and a half kilos over her personal best. Either she hasn't competed in a while um, or she's now a bench specialist. We'll see. <laughs> Super easy. Very easy. Same weight for Olivia here.
nice and easy opener. Which I believe, oh, 120 kilos. Yeah, just under, that's just right under her personal best at 122 and a half. For you that don't know, Pam is doing an equipped bench where uh, she wears an, uh, a bench shirt. Yeah, you can uh, definitely speak a lot about Whips. Yeah, I know a thing or two about it. A thing or two. <laughs> it's not like you didn't compete at Worlds for it. <laughs> See how that goes for Pam. It's a lot of weight. That's all right. She'll come back and try again. That's sometimes how equip goes. Um, it's really common to see people miss their opener, come back, and hit it just at an RPE five on their second attempt. So because equip is from, definitely a lot more technical. Technical, yeah. exactly. So right there, in my opinion, she touched a little high, but I'm sure she'll come back and fix that, and she'll get her second attempt for sure so i guess if you're touching a little high you're, you're going like straight into the hook okay and uh no so when usually with the uh, bench shirt you want to touch a little lower than your um, raw bench um just because the collar they're low cut collars so right. just assists you a bit more um yeah it depends really from one lifter to another at the end of the day I don't want to try it. You should. <laughs> you really should. You are a technical lifter, so I think you'll be good at it. Easy opener or second attempt for Diana. Okay, now we have Caitlin up. Staying with. Caitlin is currently leading um, in the 69 kilo junior Olympic. Next up, we have Danielle. Same way. That's a 5 kg PB for Danielle. A good grind on her foot. Same weight for Sophie. Sophie's opener was really easy here, so. Pretty smooth second attempt there. It's about the same as her first. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, Megan up at 52 and a half. 
A cold show personal best for uh, Megan here. This is up next at 50, 55 kilos. <clears throat> Vanessa is also coached by Victor, right? Yes. So part of your team. Yep. Yeah, we have a few more in the afternoon session. Here. Yeah, a bunch of guys, right? Yep. Pretty smooth second attempt for Vanessa. I think uh, there are a few people here that are also trying to get the provincial qualifiers as yeah. well, especially after the new ones came out. Yeah, yeah, they raised the uh, provincial qualifiers and provincials here is around the corner at June. Yeah, that's pretty close. Getting close. Yeah. Maybe in two months from now. So a lot of these lifters, you'll see them again at provincials here in Calgary. So for those of you who are watching who haven't applied for provincials yet, today is also the last day to apply. Good luck for Vanessa. Next up we have Nicole matching her personal best at 57 and a half. That's a no lift. I think that was our first miss of the day on Ben, yeah. I believe. Well, let's see if she comes back and hits it for a third. That's 60 kilos for Janelle. Two and a half kilos off of her personal best. A bit of a grind on her second. Lift is good. Close for Elise. Wow, that was one heck of a grind for Elise. Definitely hit a wall there. It was pretty smooth off the chest and then hit a wall. We'll see if she can overcome that on her third attempt. Here 
You really have to give it to the lifters who can grind it out for 10 seconds. Oh, yeah. It's always not an easy thing, that's for sure. Even like a three-second grind feels like an eternity. Oh, yeah, when you're under that bar. Oh, we have uh, Alicia here. Miss her opener, it seems. So she is currently not sure what is going on right now. I think they're having issues with the scoreboard. We'll see in a second. Everything's back in order now. Taking a five kilo jump from her opener at 25. That's interesting. Because it seems to me that she missed her opener, right? Maybe it might have been a jump snare. Maybe. All right. That, that seems like a good nice. list. See what the refs say? Yep, that is a good lift. Okay, same weight for Leah. It's always a crazy move to me when people jump uh, from a failed opener, especially on your local in a local meet, like on your first meet. That must be that. That would make me really nervous. <laughs> I mean, confidence is key, right? That is true. Second for Leah. Bell smile. Okay, now we have Olivia with 70 kilos, 2.5 kilos off of her personal best here. Very easy second attempt for Olivia. She definitely has a lot more in the tank there. That's for sure. Now we're back to uh, Pam here, who we'll missed her opener. Um, we'll see if she's going to make any adjustments to the shirt or technique, try and get that uh, attempt in. And that keeps her in the meet. Brian is also handling Pam, who is also uh, a well-known equipped lifter in the CPU. I actually competed against Brian about a month ago. Let's see it here, Pam. That's a good lift for Pam. That was a much better, smoother touch and a press for Pam. I think she might have gone a soft elbow call. I think so on that uh, right elbow, it seems. But otherwise, she's on the board now. Yeah. Good job, Pam. What blows my mind is like the time it takes for one equipped lifter to finish a lift, it's like, it's equivalent to three normal lifters. Yeah, yeah, like, trying to find that equipment yeah. to go to standard. Because for those of you who don't know, equipped lifting has the same standards as equipped lifting. So whether it's depth or touching the chest on the bench or lockouts on deadlifts, it is the exact same rules to the same standards. So, yeah, finding that equipment is not easy to get to that standard. Now 
forward motion for Diana. Very nice grind, though. It's not there today. I remember during Western, the it was like the equip session versus like the regular. Yeah. Match, right. Like the time it took for one guy to finish his bench, like maybe like three squatters or yeah, yeah, three it, benchers had already gone on the other platform. <laughs> yeah, very normal to see like a five second descent on a bench. It equips, especially when someone's wearing a really tight shirt. Unfortunately, Danielle had a. Uh, Sticking point off the chest there. Seems like people are getting really ambitious with their third attempt. That does seem like the case. We have two missed attempts so far. Sometimes you gotta send it on your third. <laughs> Live and you learn. Yeah, exactly. It's just a local meet, so everyone's having fun. Five kilos for Caitlin here. Seems like a little bit of a misgroove right off the chest there. That does seem like it. I think she went a little too far back. Towards her head there. We'll see if uh, Sophie is the first one to get her third attempt this flight. Doing 55 kilos, which is five kilos off of her personal best. So let's see. Should be nice and smooth. That is our first good third attempt of the day on bench, at least. All right, up next, we have Megan here. Same weight at 55 kilos. Nice try, Megan. And just a shout out to our spotters here, helping. Without them, these meets cannot happen. So, big shout out to the spotters. We have Nicole now, who missed this on her second attempt. We'll see if she can uh, get it this time. That was, that was a great fight. And that's an example here that you can miss her first or second and then come back and get it. Sometimes it's just technique. Same weight for Vanessa. This is two and a half kilos above her personal best. I think that was just too heavy for the day here. Same 
point for Ashley. Matching her personal best. Just a little too heavy off of the chest there. It's crazy to see with Ben how... So Ashley only jumped two and a half kilos. Her second was moving good. And then those two and a half kilos made all the difference. Ben, uh, it's, you definitely don't see that on deadlifts and squats. Mostly a bench thing where two and a half kilos makes a huge difference. Yeah, I, I mean, you see that a lot more with female lifters. Not totally. so much... Uh, like the guys, right? Yeah. Like you see guys take like 5, 10, 15 kilo jumps in That's their true. bench press. But yeah. then like, I don't know, for me personally as a girl, like the five pounds really makes a difference. Because it, it it's all about the percentage, right? Like five pounds um, is a higher percentage of your max than for yeah. me, for example, right? So. It's definitely crazy to see how, like, I guess 405 is, like, the new bench standard for a lot of the guys, hey? Yeah. It, the sport is just growing exponentially. And it just, I don't know, with that growth comes a lot of really, really strong people that are showing up these days. And some of them are juniors. They're so... Sub-juniors. Sub-juniors, too, yeah. Okay, next up we have Alicia with 72 and a half kilos, which matches her personal best. It made the difference. Yeah. Try right, Alicia. Okay. Yes. Like right 75 now? kilos for Leah. Yeah. And it's coming down. All right, as you can see there, Zaid has now taken over now alone. Okay, let's see if Leah hits this. And that's a no lift for Leah. with me okay same weight for olivia here strong bench for a sub junior Uh, and that's a no lift for Pam. The shirt is definitely a lot harder to fight than you think.
So I think that's the end of our first flight. Now moving on to our second flight, starting off with KG. Owen's been having a pretty good day here. Ended up with a real amp squat. And no lift on his opener. Let's see if he can come back for his uh, second attempt. Okay, so now we have David Nicholson opening with 105. Okay, solid opener for David. David. Let me know. When Oh, is the stream back up? Big brace from Carter before he unwraps. Solid opener. Okay, now we have Christopher here. Opening with 115. Chris is currently one for three. Let's see if he can turn it around with his, he might. Good opener. Okay, now we have 117 and a half for Alexander. Super easy sec uh, first bench attempt for Alexander. Okay, now we have 120 for Connor.
Super speedy opener for Connor. All right, on to our second attempts. Starting off with Zarina again. Uh, this time she's going to be hitting 67. Brian from Zerina. And that's a good lift. Up next, we have Harold again, hitting his second attempt at 92 and a half kilos. which is a five kilo jump from his opener. Nice and conservative. Uh, got a little stuck. Let's see if he can turn that around on his third attempt. Okay. Next up, we have Michael going for his second attempt again at 100 kilos. Okay, solid second from Michael. Now we have Wilson Wong, same weight. Solid second. Now we have Zenon here, 102 and a half. Getting nice and set. Ah, uh, seems like he might have jumped the press command. Yeah, that's a no lift for Xenon. Okay, now we have Ivan with a 102 and a half. 
226 pounds. Nice and easy second for Ivan. Thank you. Okay, now we have Colin with one oh five. All right. Those are pretty good second. A little sticky, but looks like Colin has some more in the tank for his third. Now we have Owen up next at 107 and a half. All right, that is a good lift for Owen. Now we have David Nicholson with his second attempt at 110. David has ha has been having a pretty good day so far with his lift. Nice and easy second. Okay, we're slapping on the blues now. We have Carter here with a second attempt at 115. That's a good lift for Carter. Now we have Cole here, same weight.
Or I believe that was a good lift. I think Cole might have had some soft elbows there. Now we have Chris. Second attempt at 120. Good grind on his second there. Let's see if he has any more in the tank. Okay, now we have Alexander up next. With 125 for a second attempt bench. Looking nice and determined. Nice and speedy. Now we have Connor Holmes with a second attempt bench at 140. Big bench. And that is a no lift. He got it up though, so if he takes it again for his third, let's see if he hits it. So now we're back up to the top for our third attempts, starting with Zarina at 70 kg. Her second attempt was successful, so she took a nice little jump. Let's see if she can go three for three for her bench press. Uh, unfortunately, it was a little too heavy for her today. All smiles, though. Okay, next up, we have Harold with his third attempt at 92 and a half. So he's retaking his second attempt here. Let's see if he makes this. Ah, oh, so close. Mm. 
Now we have Zine in here also retaking his second attempt at 102 and a half. There's been a few rocky second attempts um, in this flight so far. And yeah, a lot of the lifters are out for redemption. All right, good lift. Two for three on bench press for Xenon. Okay, next up we have Michael with a 105. Five kilo jump from his second attempt. That's a nice third attempt for Michael. Now we have Wilson with 105. Another 5 kg jump from his second. Oh, that's a good fight. Nice try, Wilson. Now we have Ivan here with 110. Ivan is currently leading in the 66 junior category. a good grind for Ivan. All right, seems like he's going six for six. Okay, next up we have Colin with 112 and a half for his third attempt bench. That's a seven and a half kilo jump from his second attempt. Oh, there might have been a little bit of a downward motion. Yeah, that's a no lift for Colin. He's so close. Now we have David, Nich David Nicholson with 115 as his third attempt bench. Let's see if David can go three for three on his bench.
Oh. Good grind. No left. Okay, now we have Owen here. Um, he's gonna be going for a provincial bench record at 116 kilos as a junior 66 or sub junior 66. So this is a relatively big jump compared to his first and second, but let's see. So close. I'm sure he'll get it next time. Now we have Carter up with 120 for his third attempt. So this is matching his personal best. Nice and steady unwrap. And a nice and steady third. Good job, Carter. Three for three on his bench. Now we have Christopher here with 122 and a half for his third. This is two and a half kilos above his personal best. Nice third for Chris. Gotta love it when you hit the PRs. Now we have Cole, same weight. He's currently leading in the men's open category in the 66 weight class. Good grind. That's a good lift for Cole. Now we have Alexander with his third bench press attempt at 130. If he hits this, he'll be going three for three on his bench. Looks like he might have taken a little bit too much smelling salt.
Oh, that's a good lift for Alexander. The quick down and up. Okay, now we have Connor attempting 140 again. All right, you got it this time. Nice job, Connor. All right, now that concludes our bench session. And then our deadlift session will start in about 10 to 15 minutes.
Okay, we're going to be starting our deadlift session soon here. First on the list, we have Sophie Restaro starting off with 90 kilograms on the bar. Okay, we got a thumbs up from Zaid here. Bar is loaded. Okay, Sophie's personal best is 120. This should be nice and easy for her. Yep. Okay, now we have Janelle up next. Same weight. Nice and easy opener for Janelle. Now we have Elise with 95 kilos on the bar. She's five kilos above her personal best. Nice and easy for Elise. So now we have 105 on the bar for Diana here. Good. Diana is coming up to the platform. We have 105 kilos loaded onto the barbell. Look at Zayd in the background, just smiling, having a good time. I'm joined here by Bray, oh. a one and only Bray. Oh, yeah, I should probably introduce myself. Hi, my name is Brayden. Uh, if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's at Jonas Lifts, J-O-N-A-S dot L-I-F-T-S. Make sure to follow me. Yes, I am Jonas Lifts. <laughs> Hey, nice and easy opener for Diana. How much, much, how much more room do you think she has, Jenny? Where she can go from there? I think she might have 200. All right, we got Vanessa Cates up next. Got some pretty decent numbers on the board, 105 kilos as well. Look at that hair. That's some cool hair she has. Right? Yeah. Chat, you can't see it, but the ref is also agreeing with me. Hey, nice and easy. And three white lights, that is a good lift for her. As green as her hair. Look at Connor Lutz. Again, you guys can't see him, but so inspirational. <laughs> Ashley Wall is coming up to the platform. 107 and a half kilos. That is not Ashley. That is Patty. Patty, why are you in the way? <laughs> Patty is now... Part of the spotting and loading team. <laughs> Patty's going to be throwing around whatever she needs to. Good job, Pete. Okay, nice and easy opener for Ashley. I believe she's out of Royal Oak, if I'm not mistaken. She looks familiar. 
Granted, a lot of people look familiar in this thing. Seems like we have some new spotter spotters and loaders here. <laughs> we're, we're just rotating um, through everybody. It's that time of the year. That's okay. We have one of the smaller spotters and loaders handling the jack, which Yo. is usually not ideal. Yeah, it's not great. <laughs> I mean, shout out to Vic, though. She's trying her best. Well, yeah, wait. This seems a little backwards, though. But for Danielle, that's a good lift. Three white lights. <laughs> Why is Vic operating the jack? I don't know. Good job, Vic. Keep doing you. You know, even sometimes I struggle to jack up my own weight. Yeah, no. It's, I feel like you, especially on the small you got to, like, put a lot of, like, into it like you gotta like jump into it almost yeah it's kind of dangerous speaking of dangerous caitlin coming up to the platform 120 kilos loaded onto the barbell right seems like either she's really tall or the or, live stream is really we gotta, close we gotta back up the camera a little bit <laughs> either way uh three white lights has a good lift I don't know if you know, but this sport isn't really meant for tall people. So. <laughs> it's not, though. <laughs> That's so much more of a disadvantage if you're, like, above 5'8", which isn't even that tall. That's the problem. Megan up next to the platform, 120 kilos, loaded onto the barbell. Dash kid. Dashing right through that opener. Three white lights, that's a good lift. All right. Now we're slapping on the reds here. 125 for Pamela. Ooh, Miss APU herself. Shout out to Prez. Is she completing raw? Uh, she did equipped bench, but she's doing uh, wraps for squat. And, or she did wraps for squat, and I think she's just going in raw, raw. Can you do that as an equip lifter? Can you just yeah. compete? Oh, get, you, you can. can. Oh, yeah. Morning, Confirmed morning, no. it with uh, Danny this morning. Yeah, there you go. When he was here. He's not even yeah. here anymore. Where did Danny go? Um, Danny Lee, if you're in the building, the oh. kids miss you. Yeah. <laughs> we need to see you. Powerlifting father. Nice and easy for Pam. And that's three white lights for Miss President herself. You know what's crazy? She almost benched her deadlift opener. That's what I'm saying, man. <laughs> uh, so I, if only I could have that ratio of like bench to deadlift, I'd be so good at the sport. Or store bad. I don't know. Double edged sword, but Nicole coming up to the platform. 127 and a half kilos loaded onto the barbell. Look at this angle. Shout out to Henry on the live stream. He's... Shout out again to Narrative Lens for. Yeah. We love cool Adam angle. and the team. Three white lights for Nicole. That's a good lift. Olivia Hudley. Huddy. Huddy. I had to put an L in there. Okay, 140 on the bar for her opener. What are the sub juniors eating nowadays, man? That's not fair. That is not fair. Don't you wish you started this sport? I wish I was good at the sport. That's a completely different thing. Honestly, Olivia takes the platform. Easy opener. White snappy indeed. Three white lights. That's a good lift. Okay, now we have Alicia up next with 145. Her personal best is 157 and a half. When she looks like she's on pace to break that. Record. Her and lifter picture is her deadlifting, so this might Maybe be her favorite. specialty. Oh, yeah. Nice and solid. Strong opener. Three white lights. This could be the day. Now we have Leah opening with 150. 182. 182. Jeez. 182 for her best. So she's she's warming up quite conservative. Okay. Nice and easy. 
those pink socks. Super easy. A very conservative opener. And I believe she deadlifted in combat boots. So she means business. Did she? I don't know. They look they didn't look like they definitely weren't slippers of like anything I've seen before. They did have a little bit of a platform, but maybe that's for her advantage. I don't know. I am not one to judge. Sophie coming up to a platform. 120 kilos is her current best that she is doing her. Oh, we're going back to our openers, I believe. Yeah. Our second attempt. Second attempt. My fault. I am not good at this sport, but that's okay. 97 and a half kilos loaded onto the barbell. Henry. Finally got off the ground. Okay, nice and easy second attempt for Sophie. Saving her strength for that third attempt. I'm excited to see what she has down the line. Janal coming up next. 100 kilos loaded onto the barbell. That looks like a wily picture taken from Maria. Shout out Maria if you're out there watching. Probably not though, but Hall Strength Systems alum or I guess athlete. It's it's one of them. Yo, we're on live stream. Check out the right corner. Hi guys. <laughs> Solid second for Janal. Very solid all the way through. No sticking points. That's what let's get an ideal second attempt and saving enough room for a, a good third. Will Max send it? Will Max send her? Let's see. We will find out. Elise coming up next. 100 kilos loaded onto the barbell. Y'all run live stream again. That's crazy. For the face of Gravity Games. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Three white lights, that's a good lift. And the crowd seemed to like that one. Ashley Wallace coming up next. 15 kilos, just five feet short of her personal best. Deadlifts are definitely flying through. They usually are. And as someone that does media, that's it's a godsend. It's so nice. Look at that game face. She's prepping. She's ready. Solid second from Ashley. She, has, she definitely has more in the tank for her third. 117 and a half on the bar for Diana, which is two and a half kilos above her personal best. Ooh. We go. love the PRs. Let's go, Diana. Let's see what you got. There you go, Diana. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. A new personal best at the set for Diana. And she still has a little bit of room in the tank. I'm excited to see what she has next. Maybe an even 120. Just even it. Okay, same weight for Vanessa. Her personal best is 115, so she's already chipping it. She has some cool glasses. What a stylish person. She does. Shout out Impact Strength Systems. Nice. And a new personal best has been set. Two white lights as a good lift. And just like my degree, above 50% is a pass. Sub Junior, Danielle coming up to the platform. 120 kilos loaded onto the barbell. You know, I'm in engineering and above a d plus is good to me yeah or c minus actually yeah but there's like levels to it you're already in like a pretty difficult course so you have to be like really smart to get into it i'm in like a not so smart course and i'm still struggling but danielle wasn't 
Three white lights, that's a good lift. Yeah. Shout out to her. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, one day I'll figure it out. Yeah, shout out to all the students who are still going through their final season. Yup. I just came back from an exam. It's okay, Chad. I certainly did. Caitlin coming up to the pack form, 125 kilos loaded onto the barbell. Big Ouch. From the handler. He means business. Not even face. Look at that. You know, I always think about what would happen if I got slapped really hard before I lift. It depends, like, who slapped you. A 52, like, kilo lifter, you might be thrown across the venue. Yeah. yeah. Just like how Caitlin threw that bar up. Three white lights. That's a good lift. Megan Dashkin coming up to the platform. 127 and a half kilos loaded onto the barbell. Megan, that's what the MC said, so I will say that too. Chad, I'm very bad at names, but that's okay. Can we get a pog champ in chat, please? <laughs> hey. Ooh. Blast off. But a beltless lifter. Three white lights. Starting to increase in popularity. I know you're an advocate for beltless lifting. Yeah. Yeah, I've, uh, I ditched the belt and started pulling beltless um, sumo, but, mm -hmm. like, since I've been doing a lot more conventional and trying to slap the belt back on. That's fair. Very occasional. But not occasional is Miss President herself, Pamela Hodder, 135 kilos loaded onto the barbell. Solid. Solid second attempt. Good job, Pam. Still three white lights and an out of focus shot. Out of B, Henry. Nicole Boucher coming up to the platform. Already beating her personal best by two and a half kilos. Hopefully she can get it up. Very steady second attempt for Nicole. And we're jumping to the greens with Olivia. 147 and a half kilos. Five kilo chip. That is a big chip. It looks like she wants more chips. Maybe I'm just hungry. I don't know. The bar is loaded. Shout out again to Narrative Lens for this phenomenal live stream. I feel like anywhere above 315 is definitely becoming like a standard, like for females. That's crazy to think, though. I know. I love seeing it. The sports keep growing in interesting ways, and people are only bound to get stronger. Who knows what the sport will look like in like the next five years? I'm here, and I want to see it happen. 155 right. kilos loaded for Alicia. Big deadlift. Ooh. A little sticky, but that's okay. Yeah, Look once she that. got it past her knees, it was money. Yeah. She got three white lights, so that's what counts. Hey, 165 for Leah. Yo, let's go. We're slapping the blue on. I think she might be closing out the flight with this one. Let's go right back to our uh, third attempts. As we're almost done with our flight A lifters. Let's go, Leah. The pink. Sock warrior herself. Super easy. Very conservative still. I'm very surprised. Maybe she has a little bit more in the tank for a third attempt. Well, you know what, though? For her squat, she actually took a 20 kilo jump from her second to her third. What a dog. I know. I need to do that. 
I should also still sign up for props. I haven't done that yet. Chat, let me know if you're signing up for props in the comments below. Remember, today is the last day to sign up for APU Provincials. Yeah. Registration ends at 11.59 p.m. Get on it. Are you doing props? I am. Jenny is doing props, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to see her compete, you can also compete as well. <laughs> Now we're getting to our third attempt here. Sophie will start us off after we get a little bit of brushing done on the bar. Making sure every variable is controlled. Jenny takes a sip of her Gatorade. Gatorade Zero, the lemon lime flavor. Uh, it's not as good as Rainstorm, though, <laughs> who's one of our sponsors for this meet. Ooh, okay. Um, I really recommend their... Kiwi Blend, that's the one flavor that I tried. It's really good. And they also have a bunch of other really good flavors, such as peach nectarine. Um, they also have some nice citrusy ones, too, some sort of orange. Um, and then they also have a grape flavor as well. Shout out to Rain. And shout out to Sophie for blowing up her third attempt. Well done to her. I don't know how she did because I just got to the, pl to the competition, but I'm sure she had a great day. Shout out to her. Definitely had a few uh, rocky seconds uh, yeah. for her bench. Um, and, like, even for squat, too. I know, I think there was one on Bomb Watch. Mm. They came through. Shout out Bomb Watch. <laughs> At least 105 kilos for her third attempt. I love being on Bomb Watch. No. <laughs> Jenny, no. <laughs> Three white lights as she literally shrugs the barbell. Off of her shoulders. Don't think that was on purpose, though. But either way, that's a good run. Janal coming up to the platform. 112 and a half kilos loaded onto the barbell. Great. Our loaders are doing a really good job at cleaning off the bar after every third attempt. Deadlift. Good job to them for being so quick and efficient. Great. But sometimes it's like too quick and like too efficient. Yeah. Let me let, let me catch my breath, you know? But that's okay. <laughs> Janal. Fighting. Okay. Still fighting. No. Unfortunately, that didn't know left. Won't break the floor. Chat, give her a big round of applause. I don't know how that's going to work, but. But she's showing some good class. Look at that. An underrated role in powerlifting, but one that goes definitely appreciated. Is it really, though? Unwritten? Oh. To, like, shake hands with the judges? Because the judges don't want to touch your team. I mean, some don't, but it's it's more it's more so just, like, the, the operating, or not the operating, the thought that counts, you know? Yeah. And these judges, they, they volunteer their own time to sit in a chair all day. Yeah. Like, I get headaches just from the amount of chalk I consume, so I can't imagine how they're feeling. Shout out to judges. Vanessa taking the platform. I don't know. My only thought is like having to like shake a bunch of like sweaty hands. Like, That's fair. Ooh. Yeah. And a dozen sweaty hands. Fighting, rising, completing. Vanessa has earned herself three oh, white lights. Yeah. That's a good lift. And as we speak about that, she goes and shakes everyone's hands. <laughs> Chat, she may have missed the last judge. That's okay. Ashley Wallace coming up to the platform. 120 kilos loaded onto the barbell. Coming out looking nice and determined here. Juice loud. Fighting, rising. <laughs> Ashley has done it three white lights. That's a good lift. She high fives her handler and she cleans a smile on her face. I think it's a it's been a pretty good day for Ashley, so yeah. she gets to end it on a high note. Shout out to her. I don't know how she did, but shout out to her. I'm sure she did good. Now we have Danielle here with 125. One of our sub juniors. 
He's so cute. He's a sub junior indeed. I think she might look more senior than I do, though. Hmm, <laughs> but you're also like an anomaly. Jenny has a confused look on her face. I'm an anomaly. A little bit. Danielle takes the platform. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. Ooh. Hey, ending it off with a big old smile. Three white lights. That's a good lift. And she's an excited lifter as she leaves the platform. You love to see it. Diana coming up next. 127 and a half kilos. A whopping 12 and a half keys over her personal best. I believe she chipped it already for a, lot, for a second. Now this is gonna be a PB to be happy about. Ooh. Hey, I see Danny. The Danny's. He has, he has oh, both Danny's. Danny squared. Pretty sweet. Oh, that's Danny. Shout out Danny. Good grind from Diana. Oh, third attempt for Diana. She's earned herself three white lights. That's a good lift. Hey. So much celebration. Next up, we have Caitlin with 130. 130 keys loaded onto the bar. Oh, yeah. third attempt. And she leaves having a, I want to say a good day. I think she had a good day. I'd say so. Fun. Ten keys over her personal best. Megan's looking for a nice, a nice subtotal PR. Who doesn't love a good subtotal PR? Well, it's definitely hard off of the floor for her, but once she gets it, like, past her knees. But she persevered. She stuck with it. Nicole coming up to the platform now. 142 and a half kilos look onto the ball. I feel like it's really tricky with deadlifts sometimes. Like, I know some people, like, they... They are stuck on that floor for maybe like a good three, four seconds. And then once they break it off, like. It just, it just zooms right past. Yeah. It makes no sense. I don't get it. I do not have that level of patience. If it doesn't move off the ground, I'll probably give I up. Know. Like, a few seconds definitely feels like an eternity. Oh, 100%. Just like that grind for Nicole. I'm sure she thought it was a lot longer than it actually was. The three white lights. A big hug uh, on the That's a good lift. Okay, now we have Pam, 145, which is a 10 kilo jump from her second attempt. Okay, now we have some rapid hand movements here from our side judge. Oh, true. Come on, Pam. Let's, Let's go, go Pam. Pam. Leading by example. See what the president has.
tag up Pam. And for the APU press, she's earned herself three white lights. That's a good lift. Yeah. Good job, Miss President. Big smile from her. Hey, now we have 155 for Olivia here for a third attempt. It's a pretty big deadlift. Olivia, big back slap to the back. I think Olivia has had a pretty good day so far. Um, she ended up with a pretty solid squat, a pretty strong deadlift, and then now she's hitting 155 on her third attempt deadlift. I'm excited right, right, to see where cool. she goes in yeah. the next couple of years. I'm sure she'll do a great performance at Prague. Three white lights, that's a good lift for her. Alicia taking the platform, 165 kilos onto the barbell. This is uh, 10 kilos above her second attempt. Ooh, quite a large jump. And anytime they do a jump like this, it would be the end of the competition. Got our narrative lens once again. Let's see it, Alicia. Oh, oh. oh she's stuck. Oh, unfortunately, that is a no lift. But the heart was there, though. Hey, I left the floor. It did, leave, it did leave the floor, and she made sure to give it. She gave it everything she could, and that's all you can really. Have. Oh, we got the three reds on for as we, Leah. As we round out our flight A. From what it seems, um, there's a lot of sixty sixes in the second flight, and I think uh, there's two. 66 is going against each other, Ooh. both in the open and the junior category. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. so that, that's something you don't typically see, like, no. at meets, like, especially, like, guys in the lower end, okay? Or especially enough guys in the lower end. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> but that makes these local competitions more interesting. There's a lot of new people. Oh, Take it easy. Leah, three white lights. That's a good lift for her. I think she had more in, in the tank. Yeah, but that's okay. There's nothing wrong with leaving on a high note like that. Making sure you get what you need and nothing more. And I'm sure she'll be there. And here we are transitioning towards our flight D now. Opening with 130 for Zarina. Zarina. That's a cool name. She also has really cool hair. Because powerlifting is a little harder to, like, have your own individual style. So everything that you can do to help distinct sync yourself goes a long way. Serena. Our two-tone lifter. Solid opener. Very, a pretty decent opener, I'd say. To probably on pace to either just to go below or just meet her personal best. Speaking of best, Christopher Linares coming up to the platform. 160 kilos, blowing on to the barbell. Let's go, Klee Stepper. Shout out to Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, Let's go, Chris. Yeah. Look at him. Just get it again on the platform. Let's go, Chris. Go, <laughs> The lift's so good, his girlfriend missed it. He might like it. <laughs> the 
cancel it. That's okay, though. <laughs> Willis Wong. Willy Wong Mar- himself. Willy. No. No? Do you know this, Willy? Is this a different Willy? How many Willys are there? Pause. Wait. Yeah, no. Is, cut that out. <laughs> this is a this is a Wilson yeah. Wong. Wilson Wong. Uh, in the afternoon session, we have a Willy Wong. Oh, my mistake. Well, it, yeah, it's okay. You know what, chat? Two Wongs make a right. And three white lights, <laughs> that's a good look. Couldn't have said it any better. <laughs> Verbatim. Colin. The Flippio. That's cool. Why is it these cool names? Why am I stuck with Cordero? I think Brayden? that's pretty cool. I don't know. It's not more Mexican. Okay, but my name is Jenny. And there's a Jenny literally. There's like a hundred Jennies within like a five kilometer radius. <laughs> actually, I don't know that yeah, many Jennies. Nice and easy. There's that's a lot just... of Asian Jennies, actually. That is fair. That is very fair. And then my last name is. Three letters. Oh, how? Why am I thinking Zank? Who's Zank? That's what it is. And everyone still messes it up. Yeah, it's crazy. Jenny Huawei. 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 Jenny, haha. Jenny, hoo ha. Harold taking a platform. 165 kilos. I honestly feel like these openers are really, really conservative. Yeah. But that means you have more room for a third attempt. And who doesn't like to see that? Ooh. Quite a conservative opener. You got you kind of happy with that pump fake at first, but other than that, that's a good look. <laughs> Owen Bowes. With, uh, so strong, he's not even in this picture. 170 kilos floated onto the barbell. Uh, his personal best is 195, so let's see if he gets up there today. Believe Owen has had a pretty good day so far with his squad and bench. Um, I think he Ooh. tried attempting a provincial bench record, uh, but he just fell short. Oh, that's okay. But his deadlifts are looking promising, though. Nice and snappy and breezy off the ground. It'll be good. Hey, now we have Ivan with 170 on the bar. Ivan has also been having a pretty good day today. I think he's currently six for six. Ooh. Oh, seven for seven. It looks like he's not tr- stopping that train anytime soon. Yeah, he is currently leading in first place in the 66 men's category. Um, the other 66 in the junior men's is, I believe, Wilson. So let's see if the next couple deadlifts attempt. Well said, Jenny. Well said. Connor Holmes taking the platform. Nice variety of lifters we have in this fight. We don't have any. Uh, oh, wait, never mind. I guess like the 105s are in the afternoon. Oh, yeah. Heavy, heavy boys are always last. David Nicholson with 182.5. So many medals. Seems to be a crowd favorite. Yeah, so David is a Special Olympian, um, from what I know. Uh, he's been having a really, really good day so far. Seven for seven. Let's see if he goes nine for nine. Excited to see you, David. I wish you well. Who we got up next on screen? We have the one, the only. This Michael. guy, Mr. Michael. Solid temp from Michael. 182 feet. And a half kilos to his total. We'd love to see it. Oh, that's an awesome picture. Chicken wing, <laughs> chicken, chicken wing. 
Winner, winner, chicken dinner. We'll see yeah, what Cole's also been having a really good day so far. Um, let's see if he can end it on a high note for his deadlift. Is your arm not tired? Oh, okay. I'm just asking. Arm day. That's good. Jenny and Trooper, y'all. Shout out to Jenny. I'm the only powerlifter that does bicep. Chad, I can't confirm she does do bicep curls. Cole, basically curling that barbell. Oh. Unfortunately, that is two white lights. I believe he dropped it at the bottom, if I'm not mistaken. But also, I'm not a judge, so don't say what I take say for granted. Just as a BTW, when you're deadlifting, don't drop the bar. Make sure you set it down. Yeah. Or at least keep the bar, your hands on the bar as you put it down. It, it kind of bothers me when people like put it down really fast and they move their hands like right away. Yeah. I'm sure judges are able to like make that call, but in the moment, I'm like, did he get that lift? Is he deadlifting in heels? I think he might be. Um, All right. Either Our he daily. forgot or he, that's just what he likes. Yeah, that's true. Carter Bailey takes the platform. What's up, brother? 205 kilos loaded onto the barbell. One of our squatters in the second session. Um, he's squatting in Nike Air Maxes. Yo, let's go. Um, you know, I understand the heel element, but I don't really understand the cushion element of it. The cushion element is what throws me off. If I if I squat in the shoes I have right now, I'd roll an ankle. Yeah. But thankfully, Carter's. Is deadlifting in flats. A strong opener for okay. Bailey. Okay, encore. Three wide lights. That's a good lift. Special plays, special teams, special players. Now we have Zenon, our tallest lifter of Oh, that's a session. tall man. What? No. That's a very tall man. Again, this sport is not kind to tall people. I would just love to live like a day in his life. <laughs> Does it be up with that perspective? No. Man's so tall. Push it to get cut off by the live stream. Yeah, look at Henry. He had to readjust his camera. <laughs> Easy. Strong opener. All right. Will Zenon break the 500 mark today? We will find out. We will see. Hey. We're going back to Zarina. 145 for her, for her second attempt. Just five keys short of her personal best. Let's see what she's willing to put on the line for her third attempt. Yeah, that is very true. Well, let's get past these seconds. Also, it's very humid right now. Yeah, a little bit. That's for you. Maybe. I oh, don't know. Chad, I'm a very sweaty person. Serena, Serena coming up to the platform, 145 kilos, loaded onto the barbell. Henry backing himself into a corner. That's okay. Nice second. And three wide lights. That's a good lift. He's looking to either match or maybe a chip. I'm sensing a chip coming from Serena. Okay, now we have Wilson Wong for his second attempt at first, 170. The first Wong of the day. <laughs> Wilson, if you're watching this later on, trying to get your lifts off the live stream, I apologize for mistaking you for the other Wong. There's only one Wilson Wong. And he's taking the platform right now. be a fun thing to do on live streams and leave anecdotes for the athletes <laughs> <laughs> later on it's like foresight nice and speedy for wilson that's a good lift very conservative second too that could have been an opener that very much could have been an opener wow we are Ripping past the deadlift. Colin already making his way towards the platform. Oh, that's it. 
Hey, why is Danny at the table now? I don't know. That's why I'm saying he's eating right now. <laughs> Let's focus on calling for a bit here. Three white lights. That's a good one. Very conservative. I would love to eat right now. And now Danny's just cheating the system. Man signed up for commentary, and now he's probably the furthest away from the desk you can possibly imagine. Shout out to Danny Lee, though. The hurricane himself. Hey, Harold. taking the platform. Training out of King's Fitness. Oh, does he? Oh, yeah. I see him around. Good kid. Good kid, a big heart. Um, he's actually in the men's open, so I don't know if you should be calling him. My fault, Harold. I apologize. For all you know, he could be hurt. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Asian don't raise him. Okay, nice nod of approval from Harold. So now we have Ivan with 175 on the bar. Seems like he's taking the lead now in the 66 junior category. I think it's a solid deadlift. Look at that. He was also squatting me uh, sleeveless as well, so he got some pretty strong knees. Must be nice. I could not do that. I remember one time I tried and I nearly collapsed from underneath my feet. No, I've been doing a lot of knees exercises. Them, but yeah. I don't know. They still, they still click and crack and pretty soon. But... I heard they only get, I heard they only get louder with age. So. Yeah. That's okay. I think I'm also predetermined to get like earlier. Oh, let's go. That's what I'm talking what? about. You're talking powerlifting? That's okay. Unfortunately, there's a no lift for Owen. I see the reasoning why. Did he drop it or did he just like. I don't think so. He got his opener, so he's on the board. Yeah. He is not on bomb watch. But... Thankfully. Christopher Linares taking the platform. 185 kilos. Look, That's a 25 kilo jump. I think 25? Let's go, Chris. I think that is a 25 kilo my boy's feeling ambitious today. Oh, Maybe he is still warming beautiful. up. Big Chris. Maybe good job. He just took his that's last a good opener. Look. Yeah. He took his uh, last warm up as his opener. Maybe. Strategic. It would be very strategic. Do you have chicken wings? Yeah. Chicken wing takes the platform, 185 kilos. Blow it onto the bar. He missed his first, but I believe he will get his second as long as he holds on to that barbell. Super easy. And he's making sure. Oh. Okay. Oh. Okay, See, that's well, what I mean. There was a good lift, but there was a, there was a split moment. For a split second, that couldn't have gone any way, but thankfully, he was on the board. No longer on bomb watch. Well, he better not do that. <laughs> yeah. Don't make that a habit. Let's go, David. Our jolliest, our jolliest lifter. David got good vibes. I like this guy. There you go, David. Absolutely blew it up off the ground. Nice Three job, white David. lights. That's a good lift. I put my thumb in the air. Good job, David. You guys can't hear the music right now, so I'm going to recreate it. <laughs> Michael and me taking the platform. I love uh, powerlifting meets with, like, really hard dubstep. Right? I feel like traditionally it's always been, like, heavy metal rock. But this is, like, significant in, like, the new age. The dubstep makes more sense. Yeah. Favors. Yeah, just taking the space. Like, but then if you go to like any other federation, like you typically find like a more redneck like metal rock uh, people. Yeah, you're not you're not wrong there. Can cannot argue that one. 
We got the heel lifter himself, Alexander Bungy Bungby. I don't know. I figured his handler would say something if he if he wanted it otherwise, but he's your own. I'm not a coach. I'm not gonna say anything. I mean, he still looks pretty like stacked. That's true, but I, don't know. I feel like a lockout though. It'd be a little harder if you're already pitching forward. It's a lot more counterweight you have to like fight against. That's true. Yeah. Now we have a partner. Speaking of, yeah, speaking of counterweight, Carter Bailey. Of team core, 217 and a half kilos loaded onto the barbell. <laughs> Average Reaper enjoyer. Show them what you got, Carter. Come on, Carter, get it off. There you go. Oh boy. Nice. Carter, nod of approval. Looks like he got a little bit, a little bit more room in the tank for the third attempt. Okay, now we have Connor Holmes with 220. Seven and a half keys of his personal best. Set himself on good pace for a good day. Crowd is starting to get on their feet. Ooh. Yeah, I feel like once deadlifts come around, like everyone's watching. Yeah. It's definitely the easiest lift to watch. Like it happens so fast and like you see like all the heavy weights on there. Yeah, bench is by far the most dreadful. Yeah. Shout out to bench, I guess. <laughs> You're currently waving your cross into the score table. Shout out to the score table volume. Shout out to all the volumes here. And shout out to Zenon. Big pull for the big man. 235 kilos loaded onto the barbell. Jumping straight into the 500 pound mark. And then some. Ooh. Wow, I think you might have. A whole lot more in the tank. Yeah. Maybe as much as a 10 kilo jump. We shall see. He kind of sights me out with that slack pull, though. Because I keep thinking he's going to do like a slack pull and then go into it, but he just, he just rips straight into it. Yeah. No, no without warning. I don't really understand slack pulls. Some people are just like that. I don't, I don't think it's. Like, yeah. Rip it and. Rip it, rip, rip it and rip it, rip it and grip it. But then again, maybe that's why I keep losing my grip. Oh, oh no. <laughs> uh -huh. Shout out to Jenny's grip. Well, at least I don't bomb on Jenny. Let's go! We take those. One problem at a time. <laughs> yep. Uh, catch Jenny at APU Probs. If you sign up today, she will make sure she makes a third devil. I'll be pulling from Oh, she's switching. Probably a necessity. Shout out to Impact Strength Systems and my coach, Victor, for forcing me to. <laughs> yeah, I listen to your body sometimes. That's okay. Serena, 155 I mean, kilos on I the I don't barbell. love bombing. But you also don't love bombing out. So. I don't know. Yeah. Do what you can. Serena! You know, I think that was a perfect third attempt. Yeah, no, that thing's exactly happy what about it. Thing. It wasn't too hard. It wasn't too easy. Just right. Yeah, the perfect medium. The Goldie Bear, or the Goldie Gold. Wait, Goldilocks. Is that the one yeah. with the three bears? Uh, yeah. Yeah. The oatmeal. Yeah. This one's too hot. This one's too cold. This one's just right. Yeah, that was that was Serena's yeah. level selection. Shatter. Hey, now we have Harold. Harold the man. 
job, uh, Brent, in the background looking super happy. Why is he in a hoodie? It's starting to get hotter. Right. You. Eh, not bad. Oh, that is crazy. Shout out to Seb. I'm currently waving at Seb. You're a very cool person. Not my personality. Harold blew it off of the ground. Very conservative. Third attempt. And three white lights as a good lift. Probably saving it for props. Adding on the 1.25 kilogram chip on the end to make that 187 and a half. Let's see if Colin can execute his third attempt here. Let's go, Colin. I think that was too easy. That's a pretty good third attempt, though. That's also. Okay, now we have Wilson Wong. Wow, blowing up his first little best. But what's the math of that? One eight seven half minus one six. By a lot. That's a, that's a that's a very big jump. Not a math. Let's replace him in second place. Yep. Okay, he's nice and snappy third. Adding another W to his name with that win on the deadlift. Okay, Jenny. www.wilsonwong.com. <laughs> Owen Bowes coming up to the platform. Just shy of his personal best. That's okay. He's a really strong sub junior. There's a lot of strong sub juniors out there. I'm like, at a 60, at like, 66, yeah, 66 too. Yeah. Yeah. This would place him in first place for the time being. I bet you're a menace in your high school gym class, Owen. I would not want to play dodgeball. Those leverages are way too big. Oh, and Bose is pulling for the win. Ultimate sleeper build right here. That's what I'm saying. Fully <laughs> <laughs> locked out, too. Stuck I, with the bar. I Major. think he might have. And he got it. Three white lights. That's a good lift. <laughs> but you know what, though? I think he, like, he really held it on that down command. <laughs> he had to make sure he got it. I don't blame him for that, man. Like, I'm not letting go until I see those inputs being put in. Yeah. All right. So, I'm in here taking a kilo jump. He's currently chipping. Oh, making sure that he gets to win. He looks surprised. Wow. So, he went from 70, 70, 175 to 195. And he's oh, going to. Oh, my goodness. What? That could have been like an opener for at least a second. Wow, oh, Ivan. Oh, well, Ivan. He ran away with that. Congratulations to him. Ivan, more like I win. Yeah, let's go. Okay. <laughs> All right. Chat, I'm okay. sure you like that one. I think Chad's probably like that. Okay. Next up, we have Cole hitting 200 kilos. Also, as a 66. Who was? A lot of love for Serena in chat. A lot of love for Serena. I love Serena. Serena's biggest fan. All right, let's go, Cole. Uh, we got Cole. Right Cole oh. on to the bar. Aw, there you go. <laughs> nice and gentle. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Good job, Cole. Textbook. Okay. Serena's biggest fan says Serena is their queen. Shout out to them. So a lot of Serena's uh, Serena dancing. Back. 
David getting a nice little hype talk. Look at him go. Man, I love David. Look at him, man. He's just having a great time out here. Come on, David. Give it all you got. He's going to go. Let's go, David. There you go. Stick with it. Atta boy. All right. Now that is a nine for nine day for David. Super happy. Big smile on his face. Giving everyone his props. Showing the roses. You love to see it. Christopher Linares taking the platform. 205 kilos loaded onto the barbell. Big pull for my favorite Toya. So that is a 20 kilo jump from his lap. What are these trucks he's taking? Look at Chris. Wow, these guys are ambitious. Filipino power. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, maybe I, I'm not Filipino. Come on, Chris. Ah! Ah, big he really wanted to break that 450 pound. He was almost there, though. He almost had it. He just lost it halfway through. Well, good show for Chris. Big hug all around. You love to see it. All right. So now we have Michael, Michael also Lewis. same weight. Um, His personal best is 132 and a half. So he's jumping all the way to 205, naturally. Like, I don't know if that's like a little typo or. I don't know, but we'll see what Michael's got. From what I remember, his second attempt moved pretty well. Oh! <laughs> Ooh! <laughs> Uh, shout out to my boyfriend, Randy. <laughs> shout out to Jenny. Shout out to David Bronte. Um, yeah, Alexander has also been having a pretty successful day so far. Um, he's definitely like a really fast twitch lifter. Oh, yeah. Um. Oh, yeah, he's one of the... Heels. Yeah, he's Heel the one with the heels. Um, he had some pretty quick squat attempts, pretty quick uh, bench attempts, and yeah. Oh. Oh. Now, Ooh. that is a solid third. Yeah, oh, let's go. Let's go. Yeah, a little bit to lean to it. Yeah, lean with the rock with it. Three lights with it. Yeah. Connor, now we have Connor. Connor this He's matching. So I know. They're always really strong. I mean, no, this, this he's not the tallest one. No. But most of them are strong. Like yeah. Connor Lutz, our, our head judge today. Insanely strong. strong. Danny Lee leaving the premises. Okay, now he's a uh, Connor here is matching his personal best. Ooh, there you go. Watch it as a no lift. He knew that right away. And that's what happened. It was not there on me day. It was not there on me day. That's no problem. Uh, I slowly relate. Daily. Big thumbs up to the camera. Okay, two and a half, or seven and a half uh, kilos above his personal best. 10 kilo jump from his last attempt. He's all amped up here. I'm so ready for lunch. I'm safe. Got the mod meal. Yeah, shout out to our sponsors once again at uh, Gravity Games. You can all see the sponsors all in the back there. We have so many. Uh, nice try, Carter. Oh, 
All right. And that concludes our morning session. Good job to all of the lifters. Oh, just <laughs> kidding. We have Zenin. I am sorry. I. That she is focused on lunch right now. You got to change on the bar. You got to put place in second place. Second oh, place? No, it's going down. Oh, okay. Just... I don't know. I just work here. I don't get it. You know, I thought I mistaken Zenin for Zarina, so I thought yeah. we were kind of just at the top again. I mean, in all fairness, there's not a lot of Z names that are putting on the stack. Yeah. Shout out to people who can't find their names on the internet. Shout out to the tallest man in this building. Yes. Now on the platform. It's not a hard, hard feat to call myself. Oh. Rip it off in the ground. Need it. You know, he could have kept the two and a half he, kilos. Yes, he could have. There's no reason for him to change that. That's neither here, though. We're f- and now, we're now that concludes our morning session. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting all of the athletes. Make sure to stay tuned for our athlete interviews. Are you doing? Someone's doing it. Stay tuned for more of Bray's commentary. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. <laughs>
All right. We are live here at the Gravity Games with Leah Fanning, who just took home the best female lifter of the meet. Um, how does that how does that feel to be best female lifter? Um, I'm really surprised. There's a lot of really talented people here and a lot of people doing their first meet, which I really love seeing. I just really love powerlifting. So, I mean, I didn't expect that last deadlift to come up. It's not the heaviest I've ever deadlifted, but I haven't done a ton of training, I guess, coming up to this. So it was just really fun. Lots of fun. <laughs> yeah. So uh, obviously at a local meet, we have a lot of first time lifters. This is your fourth or fifth competition. Is that? I think it's my third or fourth. Um, yes. So. So you have done it. You've come back and done it again. What keeps you coming back to the sport of powerlifting? I think it's really inclusive. It's a really great community. Um, I myself am a trainer, and so I work with a lot of different people. And I find that the inclusivity and the ability for people to break past their barriers and break past different goals is super, super motivating. And it's really awesome to see people lift for the first time and get those goals, right? When they didn't think they could. I love it. Um, so do you have any other meets lined up? Provincials, nationals, what are we thinking? I don't have anything lined up right now. Um, I'm thinking about maybe Westerns, but I don't know for sure yet. I have a lot of, I do cross training. So I have a lot of like running stuff that I'm doing as well. So kind of a really big balancing act with all of that but I do love powerlifting so so not only are you the strongest woman here you might be the fittest woman here as well what a what an amazing combination um thanks so much for taking time to chat with me thank you have a great day yeah, <laughs>
Yeah, um, I'll definitely be at Provincials this year, so that will be a very fun experience jumping over to that and hopefully work on the Nats qualifier. Um, if this is the break into the 83s, it's going to need a little bit of a bump, but it should be fun either way. Awesome. Thanks so much for chatting with me. All right. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, man. All right, I am here live at the Gravity Games with Colin DeFlippo. Um, this was your first meet, I believe, right? So how was this initial meet experience for you? Uh, it's definitely a different experience. Um, at first, it was uh, kind of overwhelming, trying to just figure everything out. And uh, just where I, I usually train, I don't use any kilogram plates. It's all in pounds. So that part just was a big curveball for me today. And then, uh, and also, too, I had to travel like uh, nine hours to, to come here today. So it was, uh, it's been quite a weekend for sure, yeah. Wow, yeah, that is quite the journey. Um, I, I did notice something going on with the squat attempt selections. Yeah. You jumped about 40 kilos from your second to third, almost made it, which would have been huge for the total, but what kind of was going on there? So I didn't know where to hand in my, my weight card sheet, and uh, when she only put me up by 2.5, I got frustrated, and then I went and like was warming up, and what I thought I had on the bar was what my coach has programmed me for being like, if everything went perfect, so I thought that was going to be 185. It was not 185, what I had in the bar. In practice, it was like 170, and it, was, it kind of went up. But I'm really, uh, I was very surprised with the 185 on the bar. It like felt really good. Um, if I just had more uh, training, getting closer to that number, I probably would have got it. But yeah, it was quite the, quite the big jump, quite the big jump. Yeah, I mean, I was surprised when I saw the jump, but it, it was close. Like you almost, you almost had it. Um, so now that you have the first meet uh, under your belt, what's next? Do you have any competitions lined up or what are you thinking uh, your future is in powerlifting uh definitely want to do another meet not sure which one yet uh definitely want to go back to the, the drawing board and just like really spend more time focusing on the little things um there was some things today that i didn't know when i was coming into the meet with like uh with bench press i didn't know i have to have my feet completely flat and i've been training this entire time with my heels up so that was a big curveball too but besides that i think i just uh 
you're just going to spend more time training and really focus on hitting some personal goals and then come back with more confidence and really just, uh, yeah, do really good. Yeah. <laughs> I love it, man. First, first meet's always tough, but, uh, second one and onward, you'll only, only get better. Thanks so much for chatting with me, man. Thank you. All right, I am here live at the Gravity Games with Miss APU herself, Pamela Hodder, our solo equipped lifter of the day. Um, let's just start off, walk us through the meet. How did it go? Um, I managed to get what I came, which was the total for to qualify for nationals in 2025. Um, only got one squat, one bench, managed to get all three deadlifts, but that's the way equipped is. It's yeah, it's hit or miss. You never know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and that's all you need some some days and equipped, especially. Um, I know on your bench you missed your opener and then made a little bit of a technique adjustment. What what happened there? I don't know. <laughs> um, I, oh gosh, I don't know. With the shirt, I mean, it's just the slight millimeter of a difference, and you just lose it, right? So I don't know. <laughs> it just it, it came together. It just seems the way it goes. <laughs> So you've been competing for a while now, around eight years or so, um, doing multiple meets a year. Um, how is the Gravity Games stacked up to some other meets that you've done? Um, it's running fabulous here. Um, that's one thing with APU meets, um, especially the past you know, few years. Like it's, they're just stepping up, raising the bar, right? Um, but yeah, it's running super smooth. Um, volunteers, you know, of course, you know, they're awesome. It doesn't run without volunteers, but, uh, yeah, it's just proud to see, you know, meets and people stepping into the roles of meet directors and giving lifters an opportunity to step on that platform. I love it. Um, before I let you go, which I know that you're eager for me to do, um, what, what's next? Are we competing classic? Are we competing equipped? What do you, what do you have lined up? Um, so next for me is, uh, IPF bench worlds which uh, is towards the end of May, first part of June. I'll be competing in Classic and uh, Quip Bench. There you go. Why, why go with one when you can do both? Thanks so much for, for chatting with me, Pam. All right. Thanks, Adam. <laughs> My name is Mohanad Ibrahim. And I'm Kylie Morrissey. The two of us, along with Camille Lim, are going to be your meet directors for the Gravity Games. 
Our goal for this meet is to bring new elements to a standard powerlifting meet and create a unique lifting experience for our athletes. We'll be doing this by giving out additional prizes, including athlete interviews in our live stream and creating an overall unique atmosphere for our athletes. We'll see you all on April 13th. We can't wait to give you an out of this world experience. My name is Mohanad Ibrahim. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Gravity, Gravity Games. Games. Two of us, along with Camille Lim, are going to be your meet directors for the Gravity Games. Our goal for this meet is to bring new elements to a standard powerlifting meet and create a unique lifting experience for our athletes. We'll be doing this by giving out additional prizes, including athlete interviews in our live stream and creating an overall unique atmosphere for our athletes. We'll see you all on April 13th. We can't wait to give you an out of this world experience. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Gravity, Gravity Games. Games. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 2024 APU Gravity Games. We're starting off strong already with Daniel Latillo with 120 keys. I'm Nick Manders. Uh, joining me today is nobody. Unfortunately, we're starting off the day a little rough with a no lift there. Uh, that's two to one, two red lights, one on the front and one on the side. Potentially a depth issue, but the squad itself is quite fast, so I'm sure he'll be able to fix that on his next. Loaded now is 147.5 kilos for Leo Jenkins.
Pretty easy looking squad for Leo Jenkins. Let's see if that's a good lift. And it is three white lights. So today we have the an assortment of lifters. Both junior and open, both middle and heavyweight. Coming out next, we have Curtis Linton with 150 kilos. So far, some pretty conservative openers. Being said, we're only three lifts in the meet. I'm getting ahead of myself. Curtis, one of our 120 pluses today. Like I said, we have an assortment. Bit shaky on the descent. Bit of a pause in the bottom. Now, it's not uncommon for first-time lifters, this is a local meet, to accidentally pause in the hole. There is no command in the squat, uh, in the hole, uh, that, that is. There is obviously the squat and the rack command, but aside from that, you don't have to pause in the hole. If you want to, you're totally within your rights to do so, but it only hurts your own performance. Juan Carlo up next with 157.5 kilos. Ramping up the weight on the bar quite quick here. Coached or handled at least by, it looks like, Nick Para. He gets a replace command. Let's see what that's for. That's usually for either knees that aren't quite locked or not an upright enough posture. My money's going to be on the knees maybe being a bit soft. He gets a squat command there. And that's one of the reasons why you want to take a slightly lighter opener than usual. You know, especially during your first meet. You want to make sure that if there are any mishaps, if you do have any issues getting a command... You can re-rack it, unrack it, re-rack it again. Do whatever you need to. Get your lift in. And that was a good lift. John Rocks is up next in the 83 open class with 160 keys. Now I'm trying to look ahead here at the spreadsheet, see if we have any potential battles lining up. However, usually I'm on co and I have a lead, and trying to do both right now is quite difficult. So instead of looking for a fight, I'm just going to watch this lift, and we'll see naturally if any fights occur later on, and if I can, you know, see them, catch them, commentate on them, talk about them, discuss them. For now, John Roxas has a very quick-looking lift. Let's see what the judges think. Three white lights. Nice and easy for everyone so far. Nothing has seemed too heavy. No one's opened a bit too overzealous. Kingsley Zong coming out, same weight, 160 kilos. Also in the 83s, however, Kingsley is a junior. So, by that matter, he mogs the last guy by just a bit of years. Lift looked just as easy, and the judges think it looked just as good. Three white lights again. Gravity Games giving you some athlete profiles. You don't see that at many local meets. The production value today is as high as it can get. Justin Ganser coming out. Five kilo jump from before with 165 kilos on the bar. Another 83 kilo open mail. We got a pretty tight 83 spread here. Speaking of battles earlier, it might be that these are the men battling it out for podium or position today. Like I said, I haven't had much of a chance to look at the spreadsheet.
However, Justin has a bit more difficulty getting up. I'm going to think it's a good lift, and it is. Three white lights. But it wasn't as easy as the rest of the openers. And you can see that on his face. He looks a bit flustered. Could be that he opened a bit heavy. You know, it could just be some nerves. Some first-time nerves getting out there on the platform. Trust me, I know how it feels. My first time going up to squat. Scariest thing I could ever imagine. The bar feels so much heavier than you would ever expect. It could just be the kilo plates. Now, now, you guys can't see it in front of me, but my screen has been decimated. I have no idea who's coming out, but they are coming out for 165 kilos. I can't see the name. I'm sure it's a great name. It's one of the best. Henry Clark, I think. Henry Clark coming out now. 165 kilos in the 83 junior class. That looks like a nice and easy squat for him. Unfortunately, three red lights. I missed it. I think he also missed it. Um, he jumped the squat command, I think. Um, I didn't hear it. And that's very easy to do. You, you go out there and you think that the bar feels nice and good, and it did. Um, he had a very easy squat, and he just jumped the command. In my professional opinion, I think he should maybe just go up five kilos, you know. It was a technical mistake. Very easy to correct on the next one. Scott Proch now coming out with 170 kilos. So far, we haven't had too many missed openers and none on strength, which is what you like to see. A missed opener on technicality is no death sentence. It's very easy to fix. And that's a good lift, two to one. Right hand judge who I shall not name, <laughs> didn't like the depth, but that's okay. The other two judges did like it. And the only reason I won't name that judge is because I don't want you guys witch hunting him. He's doing his job. Arvin Lee getting ready for 172 and a half kilos, taking his time, chalking his fingers. Now he is opting for one rack in, one rack out. You can opt for both racks in. You can opt for one or the other out. Most lifters tend to like both racks out. However, if you decide to take one in, it gives you the benefit of a bit more time just to get on the platform. If you ask me, it doesn't offer a lot more. However, for some guys, they, they like to feel that they can get their grip in a little better or out. Or it could even take a bit of a whip out of the bar by just setting it in a slightly narrower position. And no matter what he gets out of it, it looks like it does work because that's three white lights with that lift at 172 and a half kilos. Next up is Wes Bowie with 175 kilos. We're hitting that three red milestone. Now it's three reds with a comp collar, so it's a real three reds. 170 is, a, is three reds in a gym setting. However, those collars aren't real, and you can't count it. And if you do, you're lying to yourself more than anyone else. West is another one of our 83 opens. It looked like a bit of work. However, some people just squat like that. They put a bit more effort into their face. Their bar speed maybe isn't as fast as the others. 
it's up to him and his coach to see how much more he has on the bar. And it was a good lift. Now up next is Joshua Manuel with 185 kilos. We have broken into the 405 milestone. Now if you don't train on kilos and rather you train on pounds like a true gym bro, this is the four-plate squat. And if you know what the four-plate squat is, I don't need to tell you the significance of it. It's everything. The only thing better than a four-plate squat is a, a five-plate squat. And based off of that good lift, Joshua may have a five-plate squat in his future. Maybe not today, but in his future. If he, if he spreads out to a five-plate squat today, I will be very surprised and very happy. Willie Wong now with 195 kilos in the 93 open class. Starting to ramp these weights up here. And this is only our first flight. We have two flights in this session, and the weights are only going to get heavier. Three white lights as well. Again, we've had some very nice clean openers today. Nothing too crazy, nothing too too dramatic. Which is really what you like to see on the openers. Eric Nielsen. Coming out with 200. Sorry, that, that lifter profile caught me off guard. His, uh, his blue eyes really stared right into me. I'm alone in the booth today, so I felt something. <laughs> I apologize for that. <laughs> 200 kilos for Eric Nielsen. He's a very tall lifter. He makes very easy work of it. That is a low rack height. Please, that man, on his third attempt, if he gets a little too overzealous, he might run right over the rack. And I would be in harm's way. However, that lift was a good lift, and he managed to get back into the rack safe. He's a 93 junior. He's very tall. The Alico rack can be adjusted in the tiniest increments. I think we should hike that a little bit higher. Just so that way we aren't trying to sort of pirouette something heavy into the rack on our third attempt. But I mean, it would make for some drama, wouldn't it, folks? It'd be, it'd be really fun to watch. Actually, lower the rack height. Take back what I said. All right, now we're starting our second attempts on squats. Demisi Latillo did miss his opener at 120 on a technicality. He's opted for a 15 kilo jump regardless. Like I said, I think this is fine. Squat looks strong. Did he jump the squat command by just a bit? No, he didn't. That is three white lights. He timed it just perfectly like a veteran. So he now has 135 kilos on the board. That 120 is erased from history. He's good to go. Load up something big for the third. No longer has fear of bombing out on the squats. We still have bench and deadlift. You know, anything could happen. Leo Jenkins up next with 152 and a half. It's a five kilo jump from his opener. That was a good lift for Leo Jenkins. So far, we haven't had anything too challenging, too dramatic. Makes my job as a commentator a bit boring. Someone do something really cool. 
but not too cool. Don't hurt yourselves. It is the second round of squats after all. We'll get to thirds eventually. Curtis Linton going for 165 keys. Now this is cool. This is a 15 kilo jump from his opener. To be frank, his opener didn't look that easy to, in my opinion, maybe justify a 15 kilo jump, but I did say it could be nerves. Let's see how he handles it. Bit sticky on the unrack. But he commands some force. And that's a good lift. Juan Carlo Tamiro, 74 kilo junior, coming out for 165 kilos. These, these juniors are the future of our sport. It's always fun to watch them lift, see what kind of poise they command on the platform. I think that's more important than anything else. The poise, the confidence, the strength will come later. Just how do they handle themselves under the pressure? That's what makes a true athlete. And Juan is fixing his initial mistake of not having those knees locked out. He's getting fast commands. He's learning quick, showing a lot of poise. He's looking like an athlete. Kingsley Zong coming out, 83 kilo junior with 167 and a half kilos on the bar. Now, I just heard one of the spectators to the left of me say he could probably lift more than this, and I'd hope he can because he has another attempt after. You're maxing out on your second. You're wasting a bit of energy. You have three attempts. You know, you paid for them. You paid for all nine minutes on the platform. Use them. These meats aren't cheap. And I think I'd agree with that spectator. He can probably lift a lot more, and he has a chance to do so. That was a good lift, and he can go up. Justin Ganser up next, 170 kilos, five kilo jump from his opener, 165. Now, for anyone at home wondering what these are in pounds, it is on the screen. I refuse to read it. I am a kilo elitist. And I will not be discussing in pounds unless it is a plate increment and therefore a milestone. Because those are cool. Justin fighting through a bit of turbulence with 170. It's still a good lift. How many more kilos does he have from his second to his third? We'll see. Now a big part of these meats is not biting off more than you can chew. You could either take five kilos, play it safe, or you could gamble with seven and a half and lose all seven. At the end of the day, the total is what matters. But at the same time, lifting a big weight feel fun. Speaking of big weights, we got John Roxas coming out with 175 kilos. The three reds loaded on the bar with the comp collar. You love to see it. It's very beautiful. It's very aesthetic. In powerlifting, the only aesthetics we care about is how aesthetic the bar looks. It's much more important than anything else. And he handles that beautiful looking bar just as beautifully. That's a good lift for John Roxas. Now, Henry Clark up next, 83 kilo junior with 175 keys. He missed his opener of 165 keys again on a technicality. So it wasn't on strength. This isn't quite as big of a gamble as you think it might be. If I do remember, he just jumped the command by a smidge. He just has to stand upright, lock his knees, wait for that squat command, and do his thing.
And he gets the command. And I think he'll get the squad as well. It's three white lights. So. We now have no lifters in flight A. In the squad at least on bomb watch. So from here on out. I'd say just start gambling. Roll the dice. Have some fun with it. Bet it all on black. And looking at the sheet towards some round three squats, it looks like guys are going to be betting on black and throwing it all at the table. We got some big looking jumps. First, we have Scott Crotch now with 180 keys, a 10 kilo jump from his opener. And he handles it. Not as easily as some of these other guys with their second attempts but that could just be how he squats i don't remember his first i'm trying to juggle a lot right now so i have the memory of a goldfish i'm very in the moment but it was a 10 kilo jump so we'll see where he goes with this third the next up we have arvin lee in the 83 junior class with 185 a 12 and a half kilo jump from his opener The reason I focus so much on the jumps from opener to second to third is I think it shows the confidence of the lifter. Big jump shows that they felt their opener was nice and easy. And it really dictates how the rest of the meet is going to go. If you see small jumps, you start to get a little worried for the lifter unless they're just playing a conservative. But even then, that speaks a lot to the lifter's mindset and also their handler and their coach in the back room. Now, Arvin handling that sizable jump confidently. And that's what I'm talking about. Three white lights. And we'll see where he goes with this third, but probably doesn't have another 12 and a half, but he'll have a decently large spread from his opener to his third. And it's better to open light and take these bigger jumps than to open too heavy and fry yourself out. It is taxing to hit heavier lifts. You know, you have three squats. You have, a nine, you have nine total lifts today. You need to pace yourself. Some of these days can be quite long. I'm worried for my own pacing. I might be talking too much. I'm going to have to talk for a couple hours here. So I'll let West Bowie's 187.5 do the talking for just a second. Now, unfortunately, he didn't talk too much with that. It was a no lift. Failed it on strength, as you can see. He has another chance at that on a third attempt. He can't go down from his lifts. That is one thing in powerlifting. You cannot go down from your initial attempt. Or not your initial attempt, right? Well, your initial attempt, technically. But you can't go down on the bar once you've submitted that number. Aside from the third deadlift. And we'll talk about that when we get there. But for every other lift for now, whatever you throw in as an attempt, you have to hit it or higher. Joshua Manuel coming out for 192.5 kilos. Adjusting his lean sleeves. You guys might not have been able to see that due to the spotter. The knee sleeves are on. The belt is buckled. And that knee sleeve adjustment seemed to have do the, done the trick. That's a good lift. Well, it pays off to take your time on the platform here. Each lifter gets a minute from the moment to say the uh, head ref calls bar is loaded. You have a minute to get that initial squat command. And then from there, you know, you can take almost as long as you want. If you want to sit there with the bar on your back for, you know, two minutes, 
I think you're allowed, within the rules at least. Head ref will probably call for a replace. Now, Willie Wong with 210 kilos, taking no time at all, rushing out to the bar. Showing a lot of confidence with this 15 kilo jump. He moves it with some speed and efficiency. He drifted back just a bit, but it wasn't too much of an issue. Ever drift back too far, and you'll fall over. Eric Nielsen. Now that screen, I think it said 83 kilo junior, but I'm pretty sure Eric is a 93. Oh, no, he is an 83. I, I can't read. He is just a very tall 83, and it's taking me off guard. He did have the low rack height before, but he has opted to raise it by quite a bit for 215 kilos. Doesn't seem to have phased him, and he'll have a nice and safe three rack, unfortunately. And that wraps up the second round of squats right into our third. Now, Eric Nielsen, just to comment on it, is a very tall 83. I almost can't believe it. I think his rack height was 18. As a fellow 83 on these Aligos, I have a rack height of 11, making me feel very short and inadequate. Thank God I'm behind the screen. Leo Jenkins coming out now with 160 keys. It's easy work of it. Is that Leo? I could have sworn that was Demisi. Demisi him? Isn't this Leo? Have I already screwed up the names? Did they scrub the names? I'm pretty sure that was Demisi. Isn't Demisi the Demisi? Yeah, they Demisi Leo hasn't done a squat yet. There's been a mishap for sure. I'm certain of it. That was Demisi. That was Demisi. He had a good lift. I know because he, he failed his opener on a technicality, jumped up 15 kilos, had it good. Jumped up huge to 160, nailed it. That was a good lift for Demisi. Leo Jenkins also has 160, which explains the situation. However, he has not yet hit his third, as far as I'm aware. And I think that's what they're catching on to as well. Now you have the same weight on the bar for two lifters. It's an easy mistake to make, but now here, here comes out Leo Jenkins for his attempt at 160. The previous good lift was Demisi's 160, and he did get that. Um, ignore what's on the screen. The screen, my bad. It's not Juan Carlo. It is Leo Jenkins. Now, the mishap doesn't seem to have mattered because both Leo and Demisi both hit their 160 kilo third. So. so, for all intents and purposes, Demisi could have just done that and Leo could have walked away and just the outcome would have been the same. However, Leo did decide to earn his place, earn his 160. 
Now, barring any mishap, no, this is Juan Carlo Horneros with 172.5 kilos. No, he, I, it looked like he nearly jumped the rack command and decided against it last second. Gets the lift. Three white lights. Thank goodness he had that last minute moment of clarity. Last second, even. Because it looked like he was about to just rush right back into the rack after that lift. It's a costly mistake, and there's no more painful way to miss a lift than jumping that final rack command. It hurts. It hurts so bad. You'll think about it years later and fall to your knees in a Walmart. Now, Justin Ganser coming out here for 175 kilos. He fights it and struggles. Doesn't slow too much at any given moment. Stop with it. Strong. And that's a good lift. Next up, we have Kingsley Zong with 175 kilos. Same weight on the bar. Fast turnaround. Our platform manager, Anton Zmushka, just making sure that the collars are still tight and the rack is at the right height. Kingsley clapping for himself before he's even lifted it. Now that's confidence. And now the spectators clap. You know, you get a bit of back and forth. Clap before, clap after. Why did no one clap during? These are the questions that will keep you up at night. Up next is Curtis Linton with 177.5 kilos. Pretty sizable. 12.5 kilo jump from his second. However, his opener to his first was 15. So we're getting a pretty decent spread from opener to third. Which is why it really shows that it doesn't matter where you open from. It matters where you end. And can Curtis end with 177 and a half kilos on the squat going into bench and deadlift? Underact looked a bit smoother than a second from what I remember. He gets two to one. Side judge didn't love the depth, but the other side judge thought, no, that's deep enough. That's good to go. John Roxas, one of our 83 opens in this session with 180 keys. Not as sizable a jump from his first to his second. He jumped. Initially a 15 kilo jump, this is only a five kilo jump. The weight gets heavy quick. But the question is, is it too heavy, too fast? Or can we stick with it? Bit bobbly at the top. The judges don't care. Three white lights. To be fair, it was bobbly, but it wasn't illegal. It was all good. The only kind of bobble that will get you a red light in a competition is any sort of downwards movement of the bar. Once the bar starts going up, it can only go up or it can stall. But if it dips down at any moment and a judge catches it and hasn't fallen asleep at their chair, you will unfortunately get a red light. It is very unfortunate. However, no, no lifter has had that happen to them yet. Henry Clark coming out here with 182 and a half. Thank <laughs> you. 
That's three white lights for him. He went from having a missed opener on a technicality to ending with 182 and a half. We actually haven't had a missed third attempt yet. We've had some hard ones, but no failures. We've had some very, very good attempt selection here at the Gravity Games. Scott Crotch now coming out to 800, 187, yeah, 187.5 kilos. I threw in an eight too early there for a moment. Nearly gave him an 800 kilo squat. That would be cool. Number 187 and a half is just as cool if he can hit this. Gets the command. Now he sticks with it. Do the judges like the depth? Three reds. They did not. It was unfortunately a bit too high. Now I fear that was the commentator's curse. I think every single time I've said we haven't had a missed lift yet. It is immediately followed by a missed lift. I think from here on out for the rest of my career, I will never speak on that again. I feel very, very guilty every time. West Bowie coming up for 187 and a half. Hopefully he doesn't continue my streak of guilt. West, cheer me up. He did miss his second on strength, so this is a reattempt at that weight. And still, unfortunately, a bit too heavy. <laughs> Truly, I'm thinking I shouldn't have said anything. Marvin Lee coming out with 192 and a half. We only have a handful of squats left in this in this flight in the third attempts. Hopefully, someone can break the curse. I say curse. It's only been two lifts so far. Arvin accidentally stepping on the platform manager during a setup. That's a bit of a faux pas. You know, your life is in these men's hands, and if you're stepping on their toes, it makes it a lot harder to save you. But Arvin doesn't need saving. That's a good lift. Joshua Manuel coming out for 197 and a half kilos. Now, he took the time before his second attempt to adjust his knee sleeves. Needed no such adjustment on this third. He either did it preemptively or he's just that confident. He nods. That confidence is deserved. Three white lights. He, like a lot of these lifters, is going into bench three for three on squats. Some really strong attempt selection today. You know, powerlifting and 
the maturity of the lifters has grown a lot since I initially got in here. At some of my first meets, this would have just been a sea of red on the score sheet. We weren't very good, but we had a lot of heart. Uh, Willie Wong showing a lot of heart. Coming out here for 217.5 kilos, a 7.5 kilo jump from a second. is our, our second heaviest attempt in flight A of this session. He lets out a scream. It's a good lift. Well, Eric Nielsen saw that and said, I want 10 more kilos on that. 227 and a half kilos. This will be our first and only attempt in the squats, at least. Over 500 in this flight. 500 pounds, that is, not 500 kilos. I don't know if I needed to make that distinction for anyone, but if I, if I, if anyone was confused. 501 pounds, this is the lowest attempt you can make to surpass that 500 kilo milestone. And unfortunately, 500 pounds was a bit too heavy today for Eric Nielsen. So Willy Wong takes the heaviest squat in that flight. However, we are going right into flight B. We will have some bigger, heavier hitters. Biggest attempt in the openers, at least, for this flight is at 305 kilos. So we're going to have to utilize all the reds we got today. But starting us off will be Vernon Luke Lave with 145 kilos. Now this is our flight B, so we're running back down to openers. So hopefully we go from the drama of grindy lifts missed lifts even back down to some more conservative easy attempts and fast bar speeds vernon here is going to set us off set the pace for the rest of the flight and the bar looks so light there that when he went to unrack it it just hovered out of the rack Consistent speed throughout the entirety of the lift, and it is a good lift. Next, we have Dustin Peterson with 145 kilos. Same weight. However, a heavier class. In this class, or rather, in this flight, we have 93s up to 120 pluses. So these are the heavyweights. These are the big boys, the big heavy hitters. Dustin is a junior. However, he stomps the ground with authority. And he takes 145 with authority. And the judges agree. It's a good lift. Now, if you thought junior was young, you went, surely there's nothing younger than a junior. Aaron Miles. 105, sub junior. It does get lower than junior. I don't think it gets lower than sub junior. Actually, it does. It goes down to youth. Sub junior does actually have a cap. However, today, sub junior will be our youngest. And not our lightest, however, with 147 and a half kilos on the opener here.
two white lights based off the way you hand he handled that you wouldn't guess he was a sub junior he looked very calm very composed on the platform sometimes you see a sub junior walk onto the platform so nervous they start crying i'm speaking from personal experience as a former sub junior i may have actually been the only one to do that but i remember it vividly Diego Salazar Valencia. Apologies if I butchered that in any regards. 160 kilos. I'm not typically lead. I don't typically call the names. Usually I can put that off on someone else. It's their mistakes, not mine. But speaking of mistakes, Diego makes none. That's three white lights and a good, easy opener at 160. Now, our second sub-junior of the day, Yasser Ibrahim, also a 105. If we have a battle between the 105 sub-juniors, that would be rare. Typically, sub-juniors compete alone. They don't usually come in pairs or packs. So it would be very interesting to see a sub-junior fight for podium. Let me just scroll ahead. They aren't too far away in projected total. If anyone makes mistakes, those doors could open up. Let's see if Yasser starts strong today. Man, one of his shoes is chewed up. I'm honestly surprised it made it past equipment check. Plus a very low bar position with a very extended back. Reminiscent of the French and Japanese style squatters that you might see at higher levels in the IPF. Very, very technical for a sub junior lifter. And it does pay off, by the way. It was a good look. Three white lights. You know, John's athlete profile is just beautiful. I wish that stayed on screen for just a second longer. Hope you all caught it. It was wonderful. He, he clearly put a lot of work into it. And hopefully he doesn't have to put too much work into this 200 kilo opener. Oh, he is requesting racks in. We'll see if that bites into his time. Now, I don't know if it was on the initial sheet to call for racks in. So I don't know if he'll get a time reset. Uh, the referees are discussing the clock reset, so he will get a clock reset. He will get his racks in for his 200 kilo opener. That is going to be three reds, a green, a black, and a collar. The graphic on the screen is lying to you. Don't believe it. Don't believe everything you see. But do believe that John can squat 200 kilos. I don't know if that transitioned well at all. I think there was too much time between lines. But speaking of too much time between, we are going right into Sander Sampson's 205 opener.
Sander blows up 205. Three white lights. Same way for Felix Rashley. One of our 120 opens today. How many 120 opens do we have? I don't know. I'll count later. I'll come back to you. Very speedy lockout for Felix. If he didn't have those strong lats and grip on the bar, it would have flew off and hit Anton Zmushka, our platform manager, in the head. And that's saying something, because Anton is a very tall man. Luckily, no one was hurt, and it was an easy opener at 205. Good lift. Mason Johansson, or Johansson. Surely he'll watch this back and correct me. I doubt he will. With 210 kilos. A 105 junior, of which we do have a couple. And that's three white lights for him. Up next, we have Roald Pelea with 210 kilos, same weight as Mason. And after this, we have Tristan Costoy with, you guessed it, 210 kilos. Can you guess what we have after that? It's a different weight entirely. We're all glancing back to check the time, which I don't know if I understand. He just walked out on there. He had 50 seconds left. He's in no rush to get under the bar. 30 more seconds to go. He could get out from under this, take a jig, and still have time. But he's going to unrack it and be good to go. It challenging for an opener. It could be that he got a very, very long start, man. One judge also didn't love the depth. And is also saying that they didn't love his knees before the start of the lift, meaning that he does need to lock out a bit harder before getting that start command. An easy adjustment, adjustment to be sure, but one that he'll have to make in his second and thirds if he wants to move them a little faster. Moving on anyways to Trish and Costoy with, again, a 210 kilos. It's a popular opening weight for these men today. Tristan making easy work of it. Three white lights, no such problems as previously. Moving on to, like I said, a completely new weight. We haven't seen this before. It's not 210. It doesn't even have a yellow. It has a blue. 215 kilos for Almio Sai. We're breaking new ground. Now, Almio Sai is another one of our 105 kilo juniors. Like I said, we may have a bit of a battle in that class. And Almiel makes easy work of that 215 kilos. Moving on to Joseph Rowe, the 220 kilos. 
in our 105 open category no longer in the juniors we've grown up now joseph trains at king's fitness at crazy hours king's fitness is one of our sponsors and one i have a bias for that's where i train at and i've trained with joseph And that is a good lift for Joe Rowe. I'm not just saying that due to bias. The judges mostly agree it was two to one. Now for our last opener, we have Ajapal Singh Guman, one of our 120 plus opens. I think our only 120 plus. No, there was a other one in the flight beforehand. However, Ajapal is going to have a huge opener of 305 kilos. We're going to need every spotter on the platform for this one. I might even have to get out of my chair and help. I'm close enough that if I have to, I can. 305 kilos is not a opener you tend to see at meets like this. These are openers reserved for high-level competitions, nationals, worlds even. So we'll see how he handles this. This is our biggest opener by a long shot. It may even be one of our biggest lifts of the day, and we're only on openers. We'll see how Agipal handles this. It's clear why lights. To be honest, it wasn't easy, but it wasn't light. It was a very heavy opener. We'll see where he goes with that. That is a huge opener for a local meet. 305 kilos at the Gravity Games. And at least he doesn't have to do it again. But he will have to go heavier. Well, he, he doesn't have to, but he can, and he will. Going back around, now we're on to the second attempt. We're starting out with Aaron Miles at 152 and a half kilos. A lot of weight just had to get stripped off that bar, but our volunteers here today made quick work of it. Blink and you miss it. I blinked. I didn't even see it. Aaron Miles, one of our 105 sub juniors. Five kilo jump from his first. He did get one red light, I think, from the center judge on his opener. It's typically going to be due to knees. And it's a bit of work, but the judges love it. Three white lights. Up next, we have Vernon Luke Wave with 155, 10 kilo jump from his second. And his squat personal best previously was 145 kilos, which is what he opened with. Squats have made a lot of progress in training, I assume, because he has a 10 kilo PR loaded up on the bar. Now, it wasn't the easiest second attempt, but it was a 10 kilo PR. You don't expect PRs to be easy, and he even has room to push that PR a little higher with the third attempt. Now, up next is Dustin Peterson with 157 and a half kilos, a five kilo PR for him. I'm only just now noticing PRs. I forgot that they were a thing. And they're going to be my hyper fixation for at least the next five lifts. And then I'll probably forget about them again. 
Dustin Peterson electing to not wear any knee sleeves today. He doesn't need them. He's better than that. He's better than all of us. And he's definitely better than 157 and a half kilos. The judges agree. Diego Salazar Valencia up next with 175 kilos. Look at that cat. It's got a bib on. It's adorable. I wish he could bring it onto the platform. However, there are no cats allowed rule unless they are created by SBD. That, that is in the rule book. Trust me. I've read it many times. However, Diego doesn't need a cat on the platform. He has three reds instead. I'm sure if he tells his cat about that squat, he'll be very proud. Or he. Yasser Ibrahim up next with 177 and a half kilos. Yasser is our 105 sub-junior, again, with the very, very technical lift. Watch how low he gets the bar. Watch how extended he gets to counteract that low bar. Again, if you're a fan of the sport, it's very reminiscent of some of the French lifters. Bit unstable on the walkout. He keeps looking back behind him. His wrist strap did come loose on one side. I heard a replace command. I heard a hold it command. I heard a lot of things. He still gets two white lights. So the replace, yada, yada, the wrist strap coming loose. None of it matters. He gets a good lift. I'm surprised his wrist strap came loose. That's typically a sign that it's worn out and old. My goodness, John Emanuel, look at that profile picture. It is weird to have a worn out wrist strap of that extreme at a sub junior age. He's a true vet to the game. John Emanuel coming out with 212 and a half kilos. A 12 and a half kilo jump from his opener. Again, they have forgotten to put his racks in. I don't know if that's actually on the board. It's not. There's no indicator to have racks in. They just have to remember that. They really should update that for the ease of the volunteers. And also for the ease of the lifter, it's somewhat jarring to have to tell them every single time, can I get racks in? It takes you a bit out of your groove. However, the racks are in now. Platform manager Anton Zmushka is tearing up the table, telling them, get those racks in. Tell them on the board. Get it on the simple meat. Get it on the software. It should be good for the third attempt. John Emmanuel Reb Rebeldel. I've completely messed it up. I started chewing on my own tongue. Forgive me. 212 kilos on his back, racks in, good to go. It's hard. But it's good. Three white lights. Where does he go from there? Because he does have one more attempt. I'm saying five keys. Any more and you're getting greedy. Christian Costoy coming out now for the same way. 212 kilos. Taking a bit of time on the spotters and loaders ends. Just trying to get those racks back out. It is a bit of a finicky process with these older racks. Our bar is loaded now for Tristan.
This is only a two and a half kilo jump from his opener. And he did have a very easy opener. What I assume happened is that he failed to get in a second attempt to the table within a one minute time frame. Now, again, that's a very easy lift. Once you are done your lift, you have a one minute to get to the table and submit an attempt. I hope he doesn't make that mistake again and only jump up another two and a half after his second because it was a very, very strong opener. It was a very, very strong second. I'd hate to see him leave with only 215 kilos if that were to happen because the man easily has 225 in him, five plates. I'll make no such mistake as rolled Palea jumping seven and a half kilos from what I consider to be a very tough opener up to 217.5. Now the adjustments he has to make here are to get those knees upright, to get that start command a bit faster. Having that bar, it's very, very heavy. Having that bar bearing down on you, trying to get a command, it really saps you of a lot of energy. If Rold can make that adjustment, if he can get under the bar confidently, get that start command fast, I think that this second attempt can move way better than his opener and give him much more room to move into his third. The adjustment was not made. It was also a bit too heavy, I, I might add. Immediately folded into the hole. Shook his head no. The spotters had to take it. He does have a third chance at that weight. Or a second chance at that weight, rather. A third attempt is what I meant. And if there are any adjustments to be made, if he has any demons to summon, any hype to be had, it's very possible to come out and hit that attempt on his third and we shall see but first we have mason johansson or johansson i don't know with 222 and a half kilos this is a confident 12 and a half kilo jump from his opener taking that false grip with one hand just fingertips on the bar perfectly legal And for him, perfectly stable. The weights got heavy and shifty, but he stuck with it. Hits three white lights, and that's a good lift for him. So far, we've only had one missed attempt that we just saw with rolled in this entire flight, both in firsts and seconds. At least no one's on bomb watch. Now, last time I made any statements on there being missed lifts or not, someone immediately missed. Let's hope that. Felix Rashley doesn't miss this 225 and a half coming up. Otherwise, the commentator's curse is very real. Now, Felix can't miss because he has the nicest colorway of Savaleos. I would know because those are the ones that I own. I am objectively correct in that matter. See what I mean? The weight got heavy, but Felix can't miss. The commentator's curse is a farce. And up next is Sander Samson with 225. Basically five plates, 496 pounds. Now I know what some of you might be thinking. 496 isn't 495. However, pound plates at a commercial gym aren't even calibrated, so it could even just be 490 for all you guys. This is a true five plate. I know there's only four reds on there. Just trust me. Let's 
Sander moves it with such confidence, such speed. It could have been five reds, and I think it would have moved the same. Maybe not, but it could have moved the same. And it's a good lift for him. Almio Sai going, I want that plus a chip. I want 500 pounds. I don't want five plates. I want 500. Almio Sai loading up 222.75. Jumbling over my words at this point. He's calm. He's cool. He's collected. I think he's going to do a little bar slam. Let me see if I remember. I lied. But he doesn't need a bar slam. 500 pounds, 227.5 kilos. Good lift for Almio Sai. Up next is Big Joe Rowe. 235 kilos, a 15 kilo jump from his opener. Joe's colors are all out of whack. That burgundy shirt with the black and white fit. I don't know how I feel about it. Let's see how I feel about this 235 kilo squat. Two to one. I think it makes up for the fashion faux pas. Now, last second attempt of the entire Gravity Games for the squats, at least. Doesn't mean much because third attempts are where it's really at. But regardless, Ajo Pei Singh with 320 kilos. This breaks the 700 pound mark. 705 pounds. This is a huge squat attempt by Ajo Pei Singh or for really anybody. 700 pounds is nothing to scoff at, and to have that on your back, to sit down and to stand back up, can he do it? Is he capable? And does he have more afterwards? Because we are only on second attempt. We can only go higher. Legally, within the rules, you're not allowed to pull down the bar again, so we can only go higher. And he blows it up. I don't know if the stream could hear it. They put on classical music for it. He's wearing dress socks. It was a very classy, one of the classiest 700 pound squats I've ever seen. It was a very, very odd choice of ambiance. I loved it. It was beautiful. We are now moving on to our third attempt. Quickly looking ahead at the score sheet, Ajapay Paul, or Ad, Ajapal, I think I've been ruining his name this entire time. I've been so caught up in how much weight he's shifting, has elected to take a 332.5 kilo third. That's big. I don't have to tell you that's big. You just saw how big 320 was. Add more onto that. It's really big. It's large. First, Aaron Miles. 
with 157.5 kilos. One of our sub junior lifters today so far hasn't missed a squat. He timed that squat command perfectly, like a veteran. Goes three for three, like a veteran. These sub juniors are better than they've ever been. Up next is Vernon Luke Lay with 160 kilos. I remember his old squat PB was 145 kilos, so this is. It's big. Previously on the second attempt hit 155 kilos. It was a 10 kilo PR. Kenny, excuse me, Kenny had five more kilos onto that. These lifters are taking their time before their third attempts. These are the last squat attempts of the gravity games. Take your minute on the platform. Don't take too long, though. I have to use the washroom. And we will have a break after squats to do that. But Vernon used that time perfectly. A very, very well-executed and well-picked attempt. 160 kilos. That's a 15-kilo PR for Vernon. Going into bench with a lot of momentum. Dustin Peterson hoping to follow suit with 170 kilos. So far, it's mostly a sea of green for these lifters. However, like you saw in the last flight, third attempts get a little wild. Dustin Peterson, the sleeveless hero. Only one out of both flights to have no sleeves on his knees when he squats. He likes to feel the weight. No sleeves. Thick mullet. Dustin Peterson looking just as good as that 170 kilo attempt. The good lift. It's three for three going into bench. Yasser Ibrahim with 185 kilos. It's 407 pounds. It's the closest thing we have in our two and a half kilo increment sport to that 405 squat, that 405 loaded bar. Four plates on the bar. Four pound plates. Yeah, Sir Ibrahim, our technical sub junior with the chewed up shoe. He might have a dog at home that wanted to bite his Adidas power lifts. But he doesn't mind at all. Let's watch that wrist wrap. Is it going to come undone this time? It's not. He's as secure as he's ever been. Low bar, extended position. Hits the squat command. He looked like he had more trouble getting into the hole than out of it. Unfortunately, the refs did not like how far he got into the hole, which is why he struggled so much. Two red lights on both the sides. That's unfortunately a no lift due to technicals. He's due to depth. Diego Salazar coming up now with his cat picture. Beautiful. Love it. Want it back. 10 more kilos from his second attempt up to 185 kilos. Same as last attempt. Diego almost pausing it in the hole and bouncing right out. 
getting three white lights. Beautiful attempt. Up next is Ryold Polea. 217 and a half kilos. He missed this on his second attempt due to strength. However, if he can make the adjustment, he is going to come out for it. If he can make the adjustment, I believe it could be there. Now on his second, he didn't come out of the hole. He nodded no right away. However, time has elapsed. Whatever he needed to do back there, hopefully he's done it. Hopefully he can come out now, redeem himself on his third. And walk away with seven and a half more kilos than he would otherwise. Bit of a struggle on the unrack. I've noticed his rack height is maybe a bit high. He was grinding for it. He got way farther than on a second. However, just ran out of gas and ran out of steam. Unfortunately, same as his last one. Missed it on strength. However, he did at least get his opener. So he's still safe and secure in the competition. And hopefully he can make any adjustments he needs to on bench press and on deadlifts and still finish off the day strong. There are still six more lifts in the day after this. So what's, what's two? Two is one of the smallest numbers. You could miss that. That's fine. There's like barely any numbers smaller than two. There's a one of them. Decimals aren't real. The... Spotters and loaders are currently just making sure that the racks are in. As John Emanuel has requested for 220 kilos. This is a seven and a half kilo jump from his second, and his seven, or rather his second, wasn't that easy. I'm expecting a bit of a fight here, a bit of a grind, a bit of a struggle. But I'm not expecting a miss. And unfortunately, it was just a little too much. And it was a miss. It was also a grind and a struggle. We got a little bit of everything. Two and a half kilos less, and he could have got that. But that's okay. You got to try. For some of these milestone numbers, like 220, you got to try. Sometimes you lose, but what if you win? Mason Johansson coming out now for 225 kilos. The equivalent to our five-plate milestone, 496, 495. Who's counting? It's one pound. The weight of a hungry man dinner. And those are extremely tiny, frankly. Um, you eat those as a hungry man and you leave a hungry man. Mason, hungry for 225 kilos. There's only a two and a half kilo jump from his second. His second was 222 and a half kilos. It's not often that you see these smaller jumps on something like a squat. It is only a two and a half kilo jump, but it's still almost 500 pounds. They have to shift twice. It's very taxing. And for how much? And for Mason, it's an extra two and a half kilos. And it was a very well picked attempt. I don't know if he had another two and a half kilos. So if you want to just add on to that total, that's exactly what you do. Tristan Costoy coming out for the same weight. However, he had a much lighter second attempt. So we'll see how this moves. Tristan initially also had that same two and a half kilo jump from his opener to his second, which I suggested may have been a technical fault from the handler or himself if he is handling. And he has corrected that and gone for a reasonable 12 and a half kilo jump from his second to his third, hopefully making up some ground on that beginning mishap.
bounces into the hole and bounces right out. Control three white lights. Next, we have Felix Rashley, a 10 kilo jump from his second up to 232 and a half kilos. We're past that 500 mark and we will stay ahead of that 500 mark for a while here until we eventually get past a 700 pound mark. That's the beauty of these local competitions is depending on who shows up, you can have a huge swath of numbers on the plates. It makes the jobs of the spotters and loaders very, very hard because you have to load and sling a lot of plates, a lot of reds. Luckily for them, they haven't had to catch too many of those. Some very strong third attempts coming out. Felix could be the next one. A beautiful attempt by Felix. Barely any kilos left on the platform. And unfortunately, I spoke too soon. Two to one. They probably didn't like the depth. It's almost always depth. It didn't look like anything else to me. The knees looked steady. The knees looked sturdy. He looked upright. And it was just the depth from the front and the side judge. They didn't love it. Unfortunately, probably a half inch high. If I was him, I'd count it as a gym lift. Don't tell anybody. Xander Sampson electing to put two and a half kilos more onto that bar for 235 kilos total. 10 kilo jump from his second. Xander has that very, very fast squat. It's very bouncy. It's almost athletic. And 235 doesn't slow him too much. Three white lights. It's a good lift for him. Our last two squats of the day. First will be Joe Rowe with 252 and a half kilos. Above that 550 mark. I lied. I, I spoke way too soon. I was looking at my sheet. Almio Sai first with 235 keys. Joe Rowe will be after this. I apologize, but Almio Rowe with 235. Seven and a half kilo jump from his second. His second moved quite easily. His third should be within his means. He's calm and cool, collected. You wouldn't be able to tell from his face that he has over 500 pounds bearing down on him. And it barely phases them. I already introduced them preemptively, prematurely. I apologize. Joe Rowe coming up for 252 and a half kilos. This will PR his squat. Previously, I, I think of 245. It was on the screen. I missed it. It'd be a seven and a half kilo PR if you can hit this. And I think he can, despite his questionable choice of shirt color with the rest of his kit. Joe Rowe with some ideal attempt selection. Unfortunately, I keep speaking too soon. Two to one. The depth wasn't quite there. The strength was, however, he needed to go a stitch lower. 
will still end the day with 235 kilos. Now to end the day, we have Ajay Paul's 332.5 kilos, 733 pounds. Uh, the spotters and loaders here are just making sure that everything is tight. The bar is nice and secure. You'd hate to have a loose collar with this kind of weight. However, the bar is loaded. He now comes out 733 pounds, 332.5 kilos for Ajay Paul Singh Guman. The heaviest squat of the day by a country mile. Just a bit heavy, but a great catch from the spotters. They didn't panic. They didn't freak out. They caught it. They got under it. We got it back to the rack. No one was hurt. Aside from perhaps A.G. Paul's ego. But he still ended the day with 320 kilos, which is massive and huge. And that concludes our squats for this session. It concludes the squats for the Gravity Games, but we will be back in just a bit for the bench press. And we'll see you then.
Hello and welcome back to the APU 2024 Gravity Games. I think I did that out of order, but that's okay. We have our bench session starting now. I am no longer alone in the booth. I have John Walls with me. He'll be playing Co to the best of his abilities. John, is this your first time commentating? First time commentating, but it'll be, I'm excited for it. It'll be a good time uh, commentating here today, looking at uh, 70 scores up to one. And if John does too poorly and I see it in the stream chat that you guys don't like him, I'll tell him to shut up. However, I, I think he'll do just fine. I think he'll be great. Speaking of doing just fine and great, starting out today on Bench Press, we have Juan Carlo Torneras. I don't know if it's John or Juan. The announcer said John. I'm going with Juan. 80 kilos on the Bench Press. He's electing for no handoff from Anton Zmushka. Anton is a huge puller. Maybe he's afraid that Anton will just pull the bar away from him and never give it back. Three white lights. It's great that John Walls is here with me today because he is our resident bench specialist. Um, I'm no good at the movement. I don't like it. John loves it. It's great that he's joined us for bench. He may leave by deadlifts. We'll see. Kingsley Zong will be joining us for bench press with 92 and a half kilos. Hilarious. Anton just asked him if he wants a handoff, and he looked surprised and said, Sure, why not? 
Kingsley may be taking his first handoff ever here on the platform. We'll see how it pays off. It looks smooth enough to me. John, what do you think? And the referees agree. That's three white lights. John, do you take a handoff when you bench? Yo, I just think of that patented CSF bench, that no handoff, no, uh, no wrist wraps, get nice and stacked underneath it. What about you, Nick? John, I also have the CSF bench, but my numbers are tragic. <laughs> so maybe I need to adjust them. Leo Jenkins coming out for a not-so-tragic 95-kilo opener. Electing for no handoff, no wrist wraps. My God, it's almost like we just discussed this. Head judge didn't love it. I was going to say, that's a very fast press command, and it's actually just that he jumped it. If the other two judges don't notice, it's still a good lift. You only need two. Looks like a good lift. I think he has plenty of space in his second. Just make sure to hold it, and we'll be good to go. Or he could just keep getting away with it. <laughs> keep jumping the press command. Nisi Latilla with 100 kilos. Speaking of commands, he jumped his opening squat. Doesn't look like he's going to make that mistake more than once. Three white lights for Demillo. Demisi, rather. I've combined his first and last name. Demisi got some interesting openings here. His Delaware's opener is actually only 100 kilos. He might be hiding something there. What do you think, Nick? Maybe he, he just wants to take some big 100 kilo jumps on the deadlift. I think those are always very fun. Could just be a fake opener. He could move it later on. Maybe he just doesn't like deadlifting. However, we have Arvin Lee now with 105 kilos. Electing for no handoff. Oh, he got her. Oh, well, yeah, that's exactly what the judge said. They don't love the heels. The heels have to be flat on the ground before you get a start command. He was under that bar for a long time. One of the downfalls of having those just like the shoes, if you have all the shoes on, the heel does tend to pop up a little bit there. So. Yeah. As soon as you start using a shoe that doesn't have the flattest structure to it, you start to gamble a little bit. Now, that gamble did pay off, but only just. Curtis Linton came away from with squat. Uh, Curtis Linton came away from squats. Three for three. Can he do the same in bench? He'll start off with 105 kilos. I apologize for that earlier. I've been talking a lot. My mouth is very dry. Bruce shrank. And he's got lots of it. Three white lights. Stop crotch now opening up with 107.5 kilos. After this, we have another lift at 107.5 kilos. And after that, it's no longer 107.5 kilos. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Three white lights. If me and John were also refs, five white lights. Add someone else in. Six white lights. 
John Roxas, like I hinted at before in that little preview, 107.5 kilos. The room has an odd hush to it for this opener. John with an interesting unrack. He was quite far away from the bar, but he pulls it out. Tons of strength. We'll see how that unrack affects him with heavier loads. I tend to find that if you have to pull the bar out too far and you don't have the assistance of a handoff, you tend to get pulled out of position by those heavier loads. We'll see how he maintains that he has two more attempts after that good lift. We'll see if he elects for a uh, handoff for his heavier attempt. Now Henry Clark coming out with 110 kilos. It was also one of our missed openers on squats that he did happen to adjust. I think he was the same in that he skipped some commands. Now, Bench has three commands. You have the start, you have the press, and you have the rack. Lots of opportunities to make a silly little mishap. Let's see if Henry Clark remembers all three of them. He gets the start. He gets the press. And he gets the rack. Doesn't skip a single one. And as a result of that, three white lights. It's a good lift. I think Henry can... Keep looking to add Kalos in the total here. He's uh, really in contention for podium, potentially looking at second behind Arvin here. So he's going to look to get as many kilos as he can on the sub for the world. Yeah, when you're in a fight, these podium positions for these jostling for spots, especially on bench, every single kilo matters. We're just trying to build up our total. In deads, we can start to make some crazier movements. But for bench, any miss lift is just more that you're going to have to deadlift. So it's good to start lighter and build up. Make sure that you don't miss anything. Willie Wong here with 110 kilos, taking a bit of time with that command. I think, I think Willie's running into the same issue that we saw earlier with Arvin with those bonk issues, with those heels just barely up. Our, uh, our head ref here isn't liking the heels off the ground there. Yeah, those 1.5 gen heels didn't make the cut. The 2.0 heels were a bit better. Now, Willie may time out. He has four seconds left to get that star command. Can he do it? He gets it just in time. And he blows it up. Waiting on the lights. Three white lights. That was some amazing composure from Willie there. Staying nice and calm under the bar despite only five seconds to get that press command or that start command. Uh, he got it with, I think, maybe one second to spare. Now, John, what would you do in that situation being a bench specialist? I know that you don't wear Ivanka shoes, but would you stick with those shoes and try to adjust your foot position for the next two attempts? Or would you take off the shoes, put on something new, try to get faster start command? I think if I was in Willie and in Arvin's position here, I would just elect for a different shoe. I feel like it's not necessarily worth it to have to like, slide your feet forward an inch or so just to get more flat. You might run into the same issue again just due to the shape of the heel there. So uh, I think it'd be worth it to them to switch to another pair of shoes if possible. Um, but I think these are just the uh, complications of game day, needing to adjust and, and you know make any kind of adjustments you need on the fly to make sure you can put up a total. So speaking of, we have Joshua Manuel now with 117.5 kilos. He is wearing Ivanka's shoes. What generation are they? What commands will he get? And he's getting a replace command. These shoes are looking to be the bane of these lifters' existence. Yeah, it's tough. Like, he, his, his foot looks like it's completely flat, especially from that side angle there. But I think it's just it's tough from the front judge just because, you know, you see that little bit of carpet uh, or a little bit of space between the carpet and his shoe there, and that's preventing him from getting the start command. Now he does get the start command. He does get the press. Waiting on the referee's lights. I'm assuming it's going to be a good lift. However, these Ivanka shoes, especially not the newest generation where they did fix the heel issue, is creating a bit of an impasse between the lifters and the referees. It could be that the lifters have their heels flush on the floor. However, the illusion of the shoe 
is causing the referees to second guess that position and hesitate on giving them the opening or the starting command rather. However, so far, no lifter has completely failed to get a bench opener in. And next up is Wes Bowie, hoping to string together that string of success that the other lifters have had with 120 kilos. Wes, Wes is currently jostling for third place right now, about seven and a half kilos behind third place. So he's looking to pick up these kilos on his bench press here. It's three white lights for Wes, another good lift. Next up is Justin Ganser, 125 kilos. At this point, I'm going to be looking at every lifter's feet to see what shoes they have coming out. It's going to be very telling for how the rest of the lift goes. You guys can't hear it right now. The music in this venue is very weird. It almost sounds like an orchestral anthem for some 1950s Soviet-era nation of some sort. And now it's dead quiet. They recognize their mistake and they've elected instead for silence. Just a cancer coming out. No, no funky shoe on his foot. It's a very flat heel. He gets an easy start command. Slow on the descent, but a fast press command as a result of that. Gets the rack command. Three wide lights. Funky choice of music didn't hurt him in the slightest. Next up, we have Eric Nielsen, the tallest 83 kilo I've ever seen in my life. A very lean man. You should have seen him earlier. He elected for a short, or rather a, a short for him, squat rack height, and nearly jumped over it. Wow. That's a fast opener. That's a fast opener. That's a jack man. Got that. Close grip, flat back bench. Loads of power behind him. Those muscles aren't just for show. Currently, he's in first place with a very comfortable lead over the other 83 juniors. That wraps up our opener benches for this flight. Now we go on to seconds. Opening us up in the seconds is going to be Juan Carlos. Excuse me. Corner Rios taking a seven and a half kilo jump from his opener. I think that's a very reasonable jump considering how his opener moves. 87.5 kilos. Looked good to me. I think he might have another five, two and a half kilos. I think a seven and a half kilo jump would be a bit overzealous. I agree with that. It looked that was a very comfortable second. Bit of work, but I think he's definitely got room there. Speaking of non-overzealous jumps, Leo Jenkins electing for the smallest possible jump of two and a half kilos for 97 and a half kilos after his opener of 95. Now we had no missed openers in the first round, which means that at this point, until deadlifts, no one again is in fear of bombing out. So <laughs> if anyone wants to you know, throw on 20 kilos onto the bench and just give it a shot. Nothing's stopping you. I think for now, maybe we should uh, see how many lifters choose to come out with those bonk issues, given how uh, the openers went. I'm going to make a bet and say that they remain a bit stubborn about it, and they keep coming out with the Ivankas lifts. The referees keep hating it, and we have a bit of drama in this flight. No drama with that lift, though. 97.5 kilos is a good lift for Leo Jenkins. Yeah, I imagine he'll probably elect to take another very small jump given his opener. Yeah, it's weird typically to have a smaller jump from opener to second and then have a bigger jump from second to third. However, with these local lifters, there's not that much jostling for position. Um, you get to see all kinds of things. I've seen very, very small jumps from opener to second. And then very large jumps from seconds to thirds. Even in this flight before with squats, we saw two and a half kilo jumps leading into 20 kilo jumps. It is what it is. Now Kingsley Song going for a seven and a half kilo jump from 92 and a half to 100 kilos. 
Kingsley will need every kilo he can get here on his bench to keep it close with uh, with Henry, who's currently in third, about 15 kilos ahead of him. Well, unfortunately, he did get a replace command. He has 20 seconds to get a star command, lots of time. I think, I think he was a bit confused there. I thought he, I think he thought he had to get off the, the bench there, but I think he didn't realize he got another shot at it. It's a star command. No replace command on this one. Ooh. Bobbled it a little off the chest there, but it looks strong after the fact. Refs agree. Three way light. Now the lift can look ugly, but as long as it's within the rules, it's still good. Yeah, hopefully Kingsley can keep that momentum up and continue to close the gap between himself and Henry for third place position. Now Demisi here with a relatively large jump in terms of the bench press, 10 kilos from 100 to 110. Oh, he's been asked to walk back off the platform. I don't think they call bars loaded yet. Now he can come on. Of an unstable unrack, but he collects himself. Makes light work of 110 despite the unrack issues. Plenty of power behind that close grip bench there. Next up, we have Scott Foxnap, 112.5 kilos. Currently, Scott is in third place behind Joshua. Josh has a bit bigger of a bench, but Scott has a much bigger deadlift too, so I think he's just hoping to keep it close and make up the ground on deadlifts later. Keeping it close, he is. He's taking every single kilo he can on that bench press. I wouldn't jump more than two and a half kilos on that. But regardless, a good second attempt. The thing with a two and a half kilo jump from your second to third is at least if you miss it, you know that you didn't leave any kilos by accident on the platform. And if you do hit it, it's an extra two and a half. Speaking of two and a half, Arvin Lee with 112.5 kilos. Not a two and a half kilo jump from his opener. It's a seven and a half kilo jump, but it is two and a half kilos more than 110 kilos. Start crown for Kings. Bit of work there, but it was, a, it was a great press. The referee seemed to have forgotten about the Ivankas issues. Maybe they just wanted to send a bit of a message with the openers. Tell them that, hey, we hate your shoes. And then, you know, seconds and thirds, you've learned your lesson. Here's a start command. John Rocks is coming out to 115 kilos. John Rocks going to lift him flat here with no handoff. Taking a seven and a half kilo jump from his opener. Let's see how this moves. Again, that decently far unwrap from him, but it doesn't seem to phase him too much with 115. So far, we haven't had a single missed bench press. Now, if things go the way that they have, that means that we'll see a miss soon because I keep cursing these lifters. <laughs> However, Curtis Linton with 115 kilos going to try to prove me wrong. And I hope that he does. A 10 kilo jump from his opener. I think he'll be able to get pretty comfortable with how his opener moves. And he seems like a very strength based uh, bencher with the 
not a not a necessarily a narrow grip, but pretty flat back, very much using those chest and triceps to push all the way through. So. It's two to one. The head ref doesn't love it, and he is confused as to why it's a blue card. But he has strength for days. He doesn't care about the blue card. He can press a red and a blue. I think it was a blue card there just to like sunk a little bit before he pressed it up. Could have been a bit of a heave. Now, once you get the press command, the bar has to travel upwards or it can stall. But any downwards movement. And that's a big no-no. Henry Clark coming out for 117.5 kilos. Currently in third place, hoping to maintain his lead over Kingsley, who's aiming a jostle for position. Pretty drama-free lift there. Gets all the command, gets an easy press, gets three white lights. It's not just textbook, it's storybook. You can tell that I've got some fairy tale bench press done there. I had no idea where I was going with it. Honestly, <laughs> I don't. I, I regretted it as soon as I said it. I hope the few people watching just ignored it entirely. I'm so sorry. Really long. Coming out with 117.5 kilos. I'm going to keep his Ivanka shoes on. Hopefully, this doesn't uh, affect him too much with getting that press or that start. We got it last time with only a second to spare. Hopefully this time he gets a couple more seconds to play with. Got a ref moving around. Let's start to man. Good second, a little bit of work. All right, three white lights. The Ivankas are, they caused some issues in the openers. However, they're staying pretty loyal. <laughs> In second so far, uh, I think, especially compared to his opener there, I think his feet were a little bit more flat, so the ref was a little bit more lenient, giving him that uh, that start command there. So, next up we have Joshua Manuel with 125 kilos. Currently, Josh is five kilos off of our uh, first place lifter in the 83 open category so he's a little bit behind on deadlift so i think he's hoping to keep the gap small on uh subtotal going into the deadlift so josh is also an Ivankus enthusiast it's going to be our running theme of the day but he gets an easy star command no issues on the heels oh gets stuck there i think it's a good lift but i think it might have been a little up and down there Bit of an issue on the press, unfortunately. So, Nick, if you were in that situation where you have the strength but you kind of just get stuck there, what would you be doing? Would you elect to take it again, or would you be ambitious and take a two and a half kilo jump? Well, I think on other lifts, you can maybe summon a bit more strength to make a technical adjustment, what have you. However, on bench, it's a lot harder to sort of summon anything more. I think on bench, if you fail it, you just have to retake it. Yeah. Um, it also creeps up very quickly. Les Bowie with 127 and a half kilos. And it's not easy. Like I said, it creeps up very quickly. It's not like squats or deadlifts where, you know, two and a half, five kilos, you barely feel it. On bench, you add five kilos and it feels like 10. Speaking of adding five kilos, Justin Ganser coming with 130 kilos from his 125 kilo opener. Now Josh hoping to maintain his lead here over over Josh who's potentially looking at jockey for first place here. And that's just a little too heavy for for Justin. It was only a five kilo jump. Like I said, those those kilos really they creep up quickly on bench press. So if Josh can hopefully make some adjustments on his on his third attempt uh, and hit that 125, I think the door swings wide open for him to get into that first place position. Yeah, 
Here comes Big Jack Eric Nielsen, 83 kg lifter. You wouldn't know unless I told you. With 145 kilos on the bench. Ask press command. Did he jump it? It looks like. Ooh, he did jump the press command. Three red lights. All of the judges caught it. It was almost too fast for his own good. Now, John, what would you do in that situation where you have one more attempt to go? You It was very, very easy. However, you did jump the command, so it's a no lift. So I think considering that Eric is pretty far ahead of the pack here uh, compared to the other 83 juniors, I would actually consider taking a small enough jump that um, it's not a, a crazy jump here. Like If I was Eric, I think I would take that jump to maybe 150. I think he very comfortably has that, um, and especially because there's no one who's particularly chasing him. I think he'd be pretty comfortable to do that. I would agree with that five kilo jump there, and so would our next lifter, Juan Carlo, taking a five kilo jump from his second to his third, up to 92 and a half kilos. Unfortunately, that's going to be a no lift. It looked a bit unsteady once he touched his chest. I think he just lost it. Uh, I was going to say, I think, I think he just kind of tended, he bobbled it a little there and unfortunately lost it. So. Our, our next three lifters, we got a, we got a run of 83 juniors who are all very close to each other in terms of uh, jostling for a position and hopefully getting onto that podium. And the first one off from those is Leo Jenkins with 100 kilos on the bar. A lot of these lifters electing to have no handoff. Now you get a little less assistance during the lift, however, it is a lot more consistent. That's a beautiful serial. Let's see if he gets it. Speaking of consistency, Leo gets his third six for six going into bowl. Next up is Kingsley Zong. He also has not yet missed the lift. See if he can also join Leo Jenkins in going six for six in the polls. I think he can. Three white lights for Kingsley Dong. Perfectly attempted. 102.5. I think that was also perfect attempt selection. He only took a two and a half kilo jump from his second to his third. So considering that he needs those kilos to keep it close going into poles, I think that was a smart decision. I don't know if he had two and a half kilos more than that. Two and a half kilos. Harvin Lee, two and a half kilo jump from 112 and a half to 115. with those Ivanka shoes that have caused lifters some issues on the openers. However, the seconds were smooth. Let's see how the referees feel about them on the thirds. See our ref leaning in here. Let's see which way they go. He stalls out. It's a little too much. We got the command, but it didn't matter. It was just a bit too heavy. But a 12 and a half kilo jump from your second, you really don't leave too much on the platform. If anything, he benched as much as he could on the day. And that's all you can really ask for. Scott Crotch now gambling that two and a half, electing for a five kilo jump instead with 117.5 kilos. It's quite an aggressive jump, but I think he's trying to keep it close on subtotal between himself and Josh. If he gets this, there's only a seven and a half kilo difference between them. So 
Balls out. We'll see that five kilo jump was just a bit ambitious, overly so. Unfortunately, I think with that response, I think the door definitely has closed a little bit on him. Uh, and jostling for that second place position for, uh, compared to Josh. So that five kilos that he missed there is another five kilos he'll have to pull to make up that difference. Well, you can always pull more. It's not too hard. And Nick, you're no stranger to that. I'm a stranger to winning. Damon C. Latilla <laughs> with 117.5 makes easy work of it. He is no stranger to winning. It seems beating that lift. Three white lights. John Roxas with a previous bench PR of 107 and a half. Coming up for 120 kilos. That's a 12 and a half kilo PR if he hits this. On bench press, that's that's big. Yeah, his, his second looked quite comfortable at 115, so I think this five kilo jump is quite intelligent, and hopefully he can get it here. Big PR, as Nick said. Good cash buyer spotters there. A bit heavy today. I think kind of like you saw there, Nick. Uh, the he had to pull it a little bit farther forward from his gun rack, and I think that did impact him quite a bit, especially at that top end load. He created a very very strong arch, but as soon as he unracked it, he deflated under the weight, and that's just what happens with a very long unrack. The technical issue, easy enough to fix in training. I'm sure he will later on. However, first we have Willie Wong attempting the same weight, 120 kilos. Hopping for a two and a half kilo jump. Let's see how our rest feel about his advanced machines and how flat they are. I think at this point they're just giving him a pass. You know, that's okay. Oh, it's the rack there. Doesn't seem to slow him down too much, though. Three white lights. Clark with a previous bench field of 120 kilos, now attempting 122.5 kilos, looking to collect the smallest possible PR you can in a powerlifting meet. These these five kilos here are really going to matter for him to make sure he can keep Kingsley off the podium and secure his spot in third in third place. Oh, hovering off the chest, not getting a start command as a result of that, and missing, unfortunately. So I, think, I think he got a little too excited there off his chest. He got a little excited, pressed it just a little bit, realized his mistake, tried to correct it, but it was too late. You aren't going to get a start command unless the bar is motionless on the chest. And unfortunately, he wasn't. Curtis Lynch coming up for a seven and a half kilo jump after his second 115. Now looking at 122.5 kilos. Curtis, a bencher with a lot of strength, not a ton of technicality, doesn't need it. Nice handoff there by Anton. Oh, see how our judges feel about that. There might have been a little bit of up down there. Two of the judges didn't agree with it. They did see it as a up down, as opposed to just a stall. Unfortunately, so that'll be a no win. So two to one. We'll see if the, his coach goes into the jury to try to contest that. No jury. Fortunately, no juries at a local union. The judge's decision is final. 
If I was him, I would just count it as a gym lift. No one's going to ask. Emmanuel was about 125 kilos. He had a lot of missed attempts in these thirds. Let's see if Joshua can tip the tides in the favor of green. Or if we're going to overload on red today. Yeah. So he's actually retaking this because he just missed it on his on his second. There was a little bit of up down where he just got stuck and then powered his way through. So hopefully he can make the attempt this time. This extra five kilos or seven and a half kilos actually on his opener will help him close the gap a little bit going into deadlift. Uh, Looks a lot smoother than a second. What do the judges think? They agree for the most part. He gets two white lights and can drop for a good lift. He redeems himself from that second. Yeah, I think he made the right technical adjustments and blew it up. Always happy to see that. Speaking of trying to redeem themselves on a missed second, Justin Gansel previously missed 130 kilos. It looked like it was just on strength. There's another shot at this right now. Yeah, so if he gets this, he'll be leading Josh by two and a half kilos. So this five kilo jump that he's making here really is going to make a difference going into polls. He's fighting. Unfortunately, it was just too heavy today. He gave it a good fight. It was a lot better than his second. However, I think just on the day, 130, a bit too much. Wes Bowie looking at 132 and a half kilos now. The spotters and loaders are just rushing down the bar. Over the course of the day, a lot of chalk will fill into the knurling, reducing the effectiveness of it. So you got to give it down a brush. you got to give it a wipe. And let these lifters have a fair shot and a fair bar. Plus, Bowie will get that fair shot at 132 and a half now. Yeah, so if, uh, if Wes gets this, he actually benches himself temporarily into third place position. So this is a big lift for him right now. Just loses it. So Eric actually opted for a 12 and a half kilo jump from the second. That's big. It's a big jump. This is a huge gamble. If he gets this, he hits 157 and a half, obviously. However, because he failed his second due to jumping that command, if he misses this, he only leaves bench with 135 kilos, which is remarkably easy opener. It would be a shame to leave bench with so many kilos on the platform. Let's hope Eric can hit this while also hitting every command. He gets the start. He jumped the press before. He gets the press. Oh, wow. He gets the rack. The judges agree for the most part two white lights. He took a bit of a gamble there, but I think he might, he might even have a little bit more room there. He put all of his money on Bitcoin and it blew up. He went to the moon. That wraps up our flight A bench press where we're moving immediately into flight B. Aaron Miles will be opening our flight B bench press with 85 kilos. Here comes Aaron Miles, 85 kilos. He is one of our sub junior lifters today. Kid managed to go three for three on squats, ending with 157 and a half kilos. Makes 
need to work on that opener. Nice and nice and light and easy for him. He did drop it on his chest a bit. Could become an issue with the later, heavier attempts. Yeah. However, for now, he manages it and he handles it smoothly and professionally. Unfortunately, we got, we got some of our lifters split up here. We got a 93, I, I believe a 93 open was actually in the other way. So the rest of the 93s are actually in this way, or in this box. Sorry. So, well, we have an assortment of lifters here today in both strength A and B. Ranging all the way from 83 to 120 plus, from sub junior to open to masters plus or masters two. Okay, masters plus, what does that even mean? They're old, and then some. For Vernon Luke Clay with 97 and a half kilos, and it's good. I think judges agree. Two to one. So, Nick, do you mind uh, explaining to our uh, audience here what it means to have a little light on bench? I would need a cheat sheet. The red, blue, and yellow cards are the one thing that I have not yet completely memorized when it comes to the rule set. Um, they are the bait of my existence. I assume yellow is going to be for either heels. I think yellow could also be bugs. Yeah, it? yeah. So However, it's a failure to complete the lift properly. So it's likely from that side ref they either saw the heel or the butt come out. Justin Peterson with 100 kilos. No yellow, red, or blue cards from any judge. Three whites across the board. I don't have to do any thinking on why it could have been a bad lift because it was a good <laughs> lift. You need more of those because my brain hurts. Asa Ibrahim, Ibrahim, coming out for 102 and a half kilos. This is two plates for a sub junior lifter. He gets to say, I benched two plates in high school. No one can tell him no. He's really wrapping those wrist wraps, and they did come loose on his one of his squats. I think it was his second squat, the left. If I can remember, wrist wrap came loose. They look tight enough for this opening bench, at least. The Astro op opted for some heels on his bench press. That's a platform official two plate bench press for Yasser. Next, we have Roald Kalea. With 107 and a half kilos. Yeah, unfortunately, he missed his second and third squat attempt, so hopefully, he can uh, build up some momentum on his bench press leading into deadlift. Yeah, those misses were just due to some overzealous attempt selection. The lifts were just a bit too heavy, so hopefully, he learns from that and takes some more conservative jumps in both the bench and the deadlift. Doesn't leave too many other kilos on the platform. See how this 107 and a half moves first. It'll be telling because this opener squat wasn't the easiest. And fortunately for Roald, he's in flight B and he's currently in second place. His uh, main competition, Willie Wong, is in flight A. So assuming he can make all of his bench press attempts, uh, he can close that gap between them, which is currently 20 kilos. 107 and a half looks smooth, but not speedy. Let's see if that can trend with the rest of his bench. Or if we're going to have a repeat of squats, Diego Salazar Valencia, shout out to his cat. I got to do it every time his profile comes up onto the board. And his cat is very cute. If I had the cat with me back in the booth, I would simply put it up to the mic and let it purr. It would be much more enjoyable than anything I could say. However, there are no cats back here, so you are stuck with me. Only dogs behind the mic. Oh. Diego Salazar with 110. And a big press. Yeah, bobbled it a little off his chest there, but made a great recovery and an easy open. So I think we got a bit of a battle on our hands here for, for the 93 open class between uh, Willie, Will, and Diego. Um, 
I think because Wold had some overzealous jumps on his squat, there's some room there for Diego to actually take second place from him. But before we can get to that, we have to get to Ami Osai. 110 kilos on the bench press. Did a very, very strong squat session where he looked calm, cool, and collected to squat over, well over 500 pounds. Can he do the same on the, on the bench and the deadlift? Why not? Let's just get ahead of ourselves. Haven't even benched yet. Let's talk about pulls. Looks strong. It didn't look smooth or fast, but it looks strong, and it's a good lift. He doesn't seem too phased by it. Next, we have Big Joe Rowe, Case Bitter, 125 kilos. For only one day, I'll remember that we have other sponsors that I have to shout out, but for now, shout out Case Fitness. Coming out with some Ivanka's shoes. Let's see. Let's see how the rest feel about it on his opener. Those also look to be the older generation of Ivanka's shoes, which had a very, very prominent heel issue. So hopefully he doesn't get too many start command issues. And he doesn't. Fast start command. Decently fast press command. Three white light. The big go route. Christine Costoy, his athlete profile says sub junior. However, the lifting sheet says junior. Who am I to believe? I'm not going to ID him. I don't care. <laughs> 125 kilos is all I care about. That's what's on the bar. Start command. Very easy press. I hope he's a junior because if he's a sub junior, teenager shouldn't move 125 that easily. So. He got one red light, uh, specifically a yellow card from the front judge there, so he might have jumped the press command just a little bit. Andrew Sampson coming up for 130 kilos. He had my favorite squat style of the of squats. I don't know what I'm saying. Um, let's see if his bench is equally as aesthetic. He's coming out with those bonk issues. His heels look perfectly flat. Ooh, oh, he jumped the press jumped. command right off the bat. Jump, yeah. Unfortunately, that's going to be a no lift. However, the press itself, very, very fast. Even with a very, very long start command because he just took everyone off guard. So, I think, I think you would definitely call, call that a silly junior mistake lifter. Or silly junior lifter mistake. I you, still make them as an open. I just call them silly mistakes because I don't want to demean myself too much. However, I think that it was a very, very easy press. If I was him, I'd go up five kilos and just take it and gamble it and run with it and be free. Speaking of an extra five kilos, Mason Johansson with 135 kilos. Arms are shaky, but his press is smooth, and some lifters are just like that. Some lifters just like to shake like a leaf for no reason. I think it adds to the drama, it adds to the excitement. They like to sell that it's heavy, even though they think it's light. Felix Rashley coming out to attempt the same weight, 135 kilos. Man's got some pops on him. Put a work there, but nice and easy opener. He jumps up and down the platform, and the ball jumps off his chest. Just the same. Three white. Light. John, love your profile picture. Send it to me personally. 
142 and a half to one on the bar for John Profile Picture Emmanuel Rebudella. I need to give you a better nickname. Profile Picture is terrible. It doesn't do it justice. 142 and a half is basically three points. If you're going to count the one pound it's missing, I hate you. So he's opening at 142. Currently, he's sitting at a 580 projected total. He's currently tied with Joseph, so they're definitely going to be battling out when it comes down to deadlift. So both of them just got to secure every kilo they can for the bench press match. He's just securing every kilo or every pound. That's 315 pounds. I'm saying it, not saying 314, but 315 pounds for Don for a good lift. Next up was our big slaughter of the day. DJ Powell ended squats with 320 kilos, took a shot of 332.5 kilos, opening bench now with 165 kilos. In terms of raw strength, no body weight modifier or anything, easily our strongest lift today, shifting the most tonnage. Let's see how far he can go with these bench press. Yeah, hopefully wearing those Ivanka shoes doesn't hurt him. Getting his heels down. Oh, he looks perfectly flat. Judge agrees. Fast start, man. Get the press, man. His head came up a bit, but did the judge care enough? No, they don't. Three white lights. If the head comes completely off the bench, it is going to be a red light only from the center judge. I doubt the side judges will catch it. However, the head only slightly moved off the bench. The judges liked it enough. Three white lights. At the Coliseum. Well, that wraps up our opener in bench press for flight B. We're now moving on to second attempt. So we're we'll starting out with Aaron Miles and 90 kilos. And he's one of our guaranteed sub juniors. We have two of them guaranteed. Another one which who knows who to trust. Much more controlled descent there, but he actually struggles for 90 kilos off his chest. Yeah, it didn't it didn't move. And maybe we were talking before about how he just let the first one drop. I think on his third, do it the same. If the slow controlled descent doesn't work for you, let it buck. Vernon Luke Lava. On the ground. Lane. I, I apologize. My screen got smaller and the E got all fuzzy. Vernon Luke Lee coming up 102 and a half kilos. We are above the 225 mark and will be for the rest of his attempt. Opting for a very narrow grip here. Narrow grip, no handoff, nearly a flat back. That's a man's man. And that's a bench's bench. Oh, wow. Not a. Not a lot of slowing down between his first and his second. No red light difference too. They're both getting three white lights. Nasser Ibrahim, our other guaranteed sub junior. 107 and a half here. Like, people jump from his opener. I think this is a well adjusted. I don't think it is too, too overzealous. Sorry for that. We are we're back. We're good to go. We're normal. Very strong on rack there. Very strong. Technically sound. I may say so myself. I ask, what did you and your mind you? To have a sub junior of this technical ability, put some challenges on him, put some muscle on him, get him strong. We're going to have a big heavy hitter in a couple of years. Yeah. Yes, sir. In, in a few years, might be going head to head with his brothers in the super heavyweights. Justin Peterson coming out for 107 and a half kilos. I think some say this is your favorite lifter of the day. Well, that is because he has the best mullet of the day. No one else has a mullet. Justin does. 
He also has a 107.5 career bench press. And the judges agree. Now, it would have been a true crime if they made him tie up that leg during bench press, but they didn't because the judges understand that sledists like that shouldn't be contained. Palea electing for a five kilo jump from his second to his third. He had some heavy jumps that proved to be too heavy on squat. Let's see if he's making that same mistake on bench or if he's matured and made some better decisions, put some more kilos on his total. Not only every kilo he can get here, uh, he's currently in second place position. However, he's a bit smaller of a puller compared to Diego, who's just trailing right behind him. Oh, it's work. Work, but it's honest work. Three white lights. So, Nick, in a, in a situation like that where it's very difficult to get it up, would you elect to take a two and a half kilo jump or would you just scratch the attempt? I think on squats and deadlifts that are more systemically fatiguing, a scrap like that, you scratch afterwards. However, with bench, it's not really like a hard bench press is going to kill your deadlift. I elect for the two and a half, and you pray, and you hope you make it work. Diego Salazar coming out for a five-kilo jump, 115 kilos. This one is for the cat back home. I hope the cat's watching. If the cat is watching, they will be very proud of that press. Or should I say, press. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, so, with Diego getting those five kilos, he narrows the gap between himself and the goal by five kilos. So, uh, these two men will definitely be scrapping it out on deadlifts to see who comes out in that second place position. Tell me how to say, coming out for 115. His opener wasn't the easiest thing ever. We'll see if this will also be a scrap out. He's opting for. Uh, no wrist straps, self handoff. And no belt either. No belt on bench. What a weirdo. Who does that? Well, I'm here, guys, because he's a man and he doesn't need one. That's a good lift. Big Joe Rowe electing for a five kilo jump from 125 to 130. I have some background information on him in that his handler is handling for the very first time. So if there are any funky attempts to be made, any mistakes in the selection, you know who to blame. One twenty five to one thirty is a pretty conservative temp selection. I can't foresee a five kilo jump testing Joe too much or at least beyond his limits, but we shall see. Uh, his opener moved quite easily, so he should be able to make easy work of this. Him and his handler making too, not making too many egregious mistakes today. Three white lights on that play. We've got plenty of room left as well. Justin Costoy up next, our maybe, maybe not sub junior. For a 10 kilo jump from 125, 125 did move extremely well. 135 though, that's a 10 kilo jump. Oh. That is not Tristan. Yeah. Sanders walking Sanders right now. Sanders, yeah. get away from that bar. That's not yours. Tristan now coming out for his bar. Yeah. So assuming he's actually sub-junior, he might even be able to get 142 on his third. Could you imagine you're in high school and you say, I benched 315? I can't imagine that because I did. And I have a poor imagination. However, Tristan does <laughs> not have a poor bench. Blows it up. Oh. 
huge case there. I think he loads it. Loads I think he loads it. 152 and a half kilos is what I want to see on this one from the Xander Sampson, who previously tried to come out to a bar that was not even loaded at the way he wants to, now he's coming out to 140 kilos. This is the way he wants it. So Sander actually missed his opener just because he uh, didn't wait for the start command. He didn't wait for anybody. He benched that bar like he had somewhere to be. Yeah, so hopefully he's a bit more patient. He has, his current PR is 142 and a half. He looks like he's more than prepped to hit more than that today. Oh, hits a bit of a sticking point. It's sticky, but he finishes it. Let's see what the judges say. Thank goodness he didn't get cocky and load 142 and a half on that second because I don't know if he would have had it. God. Luckily, Sander hits that and he keeps his meat alive. Not jumping up and down on this attempt because that's a bad omen. Hopefully, he's just saving the balance for the bar. Setting himself up in a nice big arch there. Big arch. And a big Ooh. press. And the judges love it. Three white lights. He got a little bit of room left there. Then the bar drifted the slightest bit towards his head, so he had, just had to correct for that. But that was an amazing bench. Oh, that's a nice one. Mason Hansen now coming out for 150 kilos. Music in here is aggressive. It makes me want to run through a wall. Got into a bit of a wall there. Unfortunately, it does not have the gas to get through it. I wish I could have ran through that wall for Mason. However, I am not allowed out of my chair. <laughs> John Emanuel with the greatest profile picture, 150 kilos loaded on the board. Hopefully his presses are as good as his profile picks. Time to get set up there. Big breath, big brace, Ooh. big bench. Three white lights for John E. To round off these seconds, we have Ajapal Singh Dhamma, 175 kilos, a 10 kilo jump from his opener. Three red. On the bar for a bench press discipline attempt. 385 pounds. We aren't quite at the 400 pound mark. However, depending on how this moves, we could break into it on third. a bit shaky at the top but looking smooth off the chest i think his, his opener looked the exact same i think that's just the nature of that narrow grip bench you don't really see that too much of a pop from these lifters are very consistent throughout so you also have a decently heavy bar at those weights it could just be that he's getting a bit of weight and getting a bit of rip on bench really speaks to the lifter's strength 
wraps up our seconds. Moving on to thirds, we have Aaron Miles bringing it up to 90 kilos. He missed this on his second. Now, I don't see him in the wing. It could be that he's scrapping this attempt. That gives us time to shout out some of our sponsors. We have a lot of sponsors today. Kings Fitness, Impact, Wiley Strength, Big X Powerlifting, Inner Strength Products. Anton is in the way of my banner. I can't see them all. Strong Arm Sport, Mountain Barbecue, PC Nutrition. I'm trying so hard to read. You guys have no idea. It's still, I think that says Fit Kitchen, Supplement King. SBD. Oh man. We got the push pull. This is testing me. <laughs> Can't forget straight up fitness. I only have two more seconds left. A7, bang, energy. <laughs> Mood ward, smelling salt. Mood meals. Element. We have a lot of sponsors. I know I'm taking the piss out of them, but I do genuinely want to thank all of them for supporting me like this. They run off of sponsors. They run off of volunteers. If it wasn't for them, if it wasn't for the people you see on the camera right now, we wouldn't be able to run meets like this in the APU. So genuinely, thank you to all of our sponsors. I apologize that I couldn't appropriately read all of your names. Blame Anton. So we're now back to the meet. We have Vernon Luke Lave with 107.5 kilos. Hopping for another five kilo jump between his second and the third here. He's a very interesting bench press style with very flat back, narrow grip. So we'll see how he does on his third here. Oh, hits a bit of a sticking point. And unfortunately, cannot get through it. A bit heavy today, and that could be a trend that we see with these third attempts. With our previous flight, we also had a lot of third attempts that were just a bit too heavy. But that's. That's what third attempts are. If you aren't pushing the limit, if you aren't getting near 100%, sometimes you overshoot and go past it. But if you're not trying, why even bother? Yasser Ibrahim going to try and bother 112.5 kilos. Consistent five kilo jumps from both opener to second and second to third. Let's see if his lifts stay as consistent as well. Oh, just a little too much. We tried, and that's all we can ask for. Got a, got a bit of a run here on Miss Faith's attempt. Justin Peterson so far has not missed a lift. I think that's due to his magnificent mane of hair. Will it continue to bless him with white lights? Are you, are you giving him your energy to make this third attempt? Justin, I will give you everything. Or that main. However, if you miss this lift, I'm going to tell you to buzzer. Justin, I didn't mean it. You keep the hair. You keep going on. You still have deadlift. It's a bit heavy. But again, at least you tried, and that's all you can ask for with these thirds. So far, not a successful third. Can it go on to lay up? Break that. Be very, very difficult. 115. Right, two, opting for a two and a half kilo jump here for a two and a half kilo PR with 117 and a half. So he's going to need these two and a half kilos to make sure he can keep Diego out of second place. And John, you did ask me that after a grinder second like this, would I come out for two and a half? Or would I stress? And he's doing what I said I would do. I would come out. I would try it anyway. He's got that grit in him. See how gritty he is. Oh, and he fights through the sticking point. Let's see what the split for Jay is. Let's see what the judges say. Unfortunately, the judges don't love the grit. They don't love the lift. Three red lights. Yeah. So unfortunately, you got a blue light from that center ref, so most likely some up and down, and a 
yellow cards from the side draft, so his, his heels or his butt might have came off the bench. So the grinder like that, it's very likely that his butt came off the bench. Uh, he stuck with it, though, and we have to give him props for that. He showed a lot of heart with that lift, even if he did miss it. Here comes Ami Osai with 117.5 kilos. And he breaks the curse of the third. So far, we haven't had a single hit attempt. The judges say, Ami Osai with three white life and the first successful first third of flight B. Diego Salazar Valencia and his cat coming out for 120 kilos. His cat isn't actually coming out with him, other than in spirit, but maybe that's all you need. Diego needs these five kilos right now to tie it up on sub total between himself and gold. His second looks quite easy, so we'll see what he's got on his third here. So far, Diego's been very consistent, hasn't missed a lift yet. Let's see if he can continue that streak. Go six for six, leading into deadly. Lee duck out in SPD. Very easy third attempt for Diego. SPD Canada is one of our sponsors. If you look around, you can even find some active affiliate codes. Bill Rowe coming out for 135 kilos. 25 kilo jumps from opener to second and second to third. Hey, do you think Joseph might be taking some very conservative jumps considering how his swamp went? I think is Joseph not in a battle in the he's not he's no he's I think he's he's a very comfortable lead right now. Uh, I do think that after missing a, a third that was just a bit overzealous, he just couldn't hit depth with it. Taking that safer bet and trying to collect every kilo you can is the right move. And I think that one thirty five looked like a pretty solid attempt. Maybe he left two and a half kilos on the platform, but it's better to be safe. We got we got Sander coming out for 145. His 140 attempt was very difficult, so let's see what he can do on this third. A miss move is it out of the question. They do happen even in raw. They're not always an excuse. So it could have just been a classic RPE7 with miss group, and this 145 could blow up. Very smooth handoff by Anthony. Oh, and he hits that second thing very quickly. Unfortunately, it's a bit too heavy. I don't know if it was on our piece of the history, but I do think that 140 was just the limit. And 145 was a bit of a flare. Kristen maybe sub junior cross going now coming out for the same way at 145. We did say that, you know, if he is a sub junior, benching that three plates in high school is quite the milestone, and he's trying to shoot just above it even. Oh, and he blows that up. It is true that he's a sub junior and not a junior. And you can safely say that I bench more than three plates in high school. An accolade that not many of us can truthfully say, but a lot of us still do, such as myself. I actually benched five plates in high school. I think one time it was even six plates. We'll leave it Nick. Maybe seven plates. I thought it'd be like six plates, like three plates per side. Oh, no, no, no. Come on. I'm not going to be disingenuous about it. Seven plates for sure. Definitely seven plates. <laughs> we put one on my chest as a board. Anyways, Mason Johansson coming out with 150 kilos, 230 pounds. Reattempting 150 after we missed it on his second attempt. Let's see if we can get it here. It's a replace command. 
what do you think that was for? He did look a bit shaky, but otherwise, I thought he was almost relocked at his heels. How did he start? Uh, so I heard the head ref there say it was his right heel just barely off the ground there. So he's about 15 seconds here to get the start command. Shaking under that bar. He just hits the wall. I think that replace command, weights like these, replace command really kills you. It's really tough to recollect yourself after a replace command like that. Especially when you're under very close to your one round max, that does take quite a toll. 150 was also a 15 kilo jump from his opener. Why you typically want smaller jumps on there. Over Felix Rapsley now coming out for 150 kills, only a five kilo jump from his second, a bit more conservative of a jump. We'll see how he handles it. He's setting up very far down the line, trying to control it very far forward. See what our refs have to say. Really light, light. Hold the top bar very far out, hold it down, push it back up, and that's all that matters. John Emmanuel Rebudella coming out for 155 kilos. Graphic on the screen is lying to you. There is going to be a yellow on the bar. You can see, taking his time to get set up here. Very nice unwrap. Solid touch, solid press. The judges agree. Three white lights. Great lift for John. Might have had a little bit more leanness. Our biggest bench press of the day. He's going for 400 pounds. We are breaking into the 400 pound mark. The lowest possible increment too, with 182.5 kilos, 402.3. If you want to call it four plates, I won't stop you. There's also going to be a seven and a half kilo PR for us. It's very difficult to tell with these narrow grip ventures how. Uh, how much room he has left, but we'll, we'll see how he does on his third attempt right now. Well, we don't have to guess too much because he's about to show us. Oh, and he powers through. Locks it out. What do the judges think? They think it's a good lift. That's three white lights for a 402-pound bench press for Ajay Paul. And that will round off our bench session for the Gravity Games. We will be back for the deadlifts and the end of the 2024 APU Gravity Games in just a bit. We are going to take a bit of a break. Don't go anywhere, or at least come back in 10 minutes if you do go somewhere.
Ilana Ibrahim. And I'm Kylie Morrissey. The two of us, along with Camille Lim, are going to be your meet directors for the Gravity Games. Our goal for this meet is to bring new elements to a standard powerlifting meet and create a unique lifting experience for our athletes. We'll be doing this by giving out additional prizes, including athlete interviews in our live stream and creating an overall unique atmosphere for our athletes. We'll see you all on April 13th. We can't wait to give you an out of this world experience. We are very excited to announce that the narrative lens will be the Welcome, Welcome to the Gravity, the Gravity Games. Games. Welcome to the Gravity Games. Welcome to the Gravity Games. Welcome to the Gravity Games.
Latillo, my bad. The screen is a bit fuzzy. Opening with 100 kilos, very, very easy opener, I imagine, for him. It looks decently easy for him. Yeah. Interesting grip he has there. He has a full strip with his uh, overhand. Having the same deadlift opener as the bench opener is a bit uncommon, but we'll see where he goes with that. He has had some very, very big jumps. Both the squat and bench, so it's good to see that he's trying to secure his total with that there. Next up, we have Juan Carlos Camero, 150 keys. Good lift for Juan Carlo. Back to Henry Clark, 172 and a half kilos. Now, opener pulls tend to have the least drama, I think, of any lift, just because lifters tend to like a very, very secure, easy opener. At this point, there's a lot on the line. Bombing on deadlifts is the worst place to bomb at, because we've already had a successful squat and a bench. So I expect a lot of these lifters to take some very, very easy openers, secure their total, and then take some bigger jumps second and third. Nick, have you ever uh, bombed in a meet? I don't even. I don't, I don't, why, would I, why would I do that? Why would I have a bomb at, at two meets? Why would I bomb at two meets? I wouldn't do that. I'm not. A, <laughs> I mean, NAPS isn't an, inter, in, an, an, an international meet anyway. So. I don't even know if NAPS is a meet. What would that even stand for? Exactly. North American Powerlifting Federation. That's not real. 172 and a half. Henry Clark. Henry has secured his total. No bomb out. So very comfortable opening this for him. So Henry is currently trying to swat away Kingsley, and he's trying to position himself for third place in 83 kilo junior. Leo Jenkins. Copying the same way, 172 and a half. He liked the look of it. He said, I want to slice too. Leo went up to the attempt table and just said, I'll have what he's having. Here's our first conventional tour of the flight. Some would even argue our first real lift of the flight was just as great. It was quite light. Curtis Linton at 175 kilos. Curtis only has missed his third bench so far. Five for six in the pole. Three nice looking legs loaded on the bench. Hold it all the way up and control it all the way down. You only have to do one of those. But it is very gentlemanly to set it down as if you're not trying to disturb the neighbors. Curtis Trevor's a gentleman. Three white lights. We saw with 177 and a half kilos. Kingsley's looking to close the gap between himself and Henry to jostle himself into that third place position. He's also looking to pull conventional. 
We have a pretty good split of sumo and conventional today, it seems. Which we love to see. Only one of those is a real way to get them. The other one is for charlatans. Let me say weenies. Weenies and Weenie Hut Jr. enjoyers. <laughs> and if we're seeing uh, plenty of people coming out with white stuff all over their legs, uh, care to explain to the audience what that is? Candy powder. Baby powder. <laughs> We're eating candy back there. Baby powder helps reduce the friction on the legs, so it's going to be especially useful for both sumo and conventional lifters, both of which are totally fine and totally allowed. John Rocks is showcasing a 185 kilo bowl, and the reason why you use that baby powder it reduces a lot of the friction on the legs. The bar can get a bit sticky, the legs can get a bit sweaty. Baby powder just lets that bar slide up the legs. Oh, much easier. Just Bowie coming off 190 kilos. Wes has made some ambitious jumps on his squat and defense. I think he's just looking to make up some ground on his deadlift here. Wes has folded his socks funny. I don't know why he wouldn't fold those all the way up. The bar could snag on one of the folds on that socks. It's unlikely. Why chance it? Judges don't seem to care about. However, I am seeing to my right. One of the referees is signaling to the lifter that he should hike up his socks the entire way. Even though it passed for that first lift, they could red card him later on. In the Even though it looks a little bit after this. One of the only mandatory pieces of equipment in the deadlift is that you do need to have knee high socks. Shoes and shoes and a singlet. The rest completely up to you. Marvin Lee with 195 kilos. So with that, he secures himself his 500 kilo total. Joshua Manuel now coming out for 200 kilos. Almost 200 even more. We got a, we got a bit of a fight on our hands with our 82 open men um, class with Joshua Scott and Justin Alderson. About 10 kilos of each other. So it'll be very interesting to see how this shakes out. Currently, Josh is actually in the lead on sub total, but both Scott and Justin pull more than him. So we'll see if he can hold on to his lead. Well, it always sucks when you have the lead in sub total, and then the deadlift specialist comes from last place, and suddenly he's in first. Next up is Willie Long, with 205 kilos. Very aesthetic looking load. Three reds and a yellow and a collar. No chains on the bar. Just big build. Pure glory. The Bluey's our first lifter upping for a hook grip. Hook grip conventional like a weight lifter. Almost could have cleaned it. Bob Crotchdown looking at 210 kilos on the bed. Scott, one of our few sumo boys, it seems. A bit rare in this session. The judges like the blue lights. I think he might have let go of it a bit prematurely. You do need to follow the bar all the way down the platform. They might have given him some leeway on that one. I would be careful in the upcoming ones, the second and third, to follow that bar down. You have to maintain control of the bar until it hits the ground. And that's just the fine as keeping your hands on the bar. 
Eric Nielsen, 82 kilo lifter. Bacon Jack coming out to 220 kilos. I think the, the refs are going to tell him to have to pull his socks up. But that was a very easy opener for Eric. Easy opener for Eric. The judges are going to give him white lights for now. However, they will tell him to pull his socks up. And it looks like he just forgot. Gets a little warning from the referees. However, I did see him pull up his socks. So he should be good to go on the second and third. Unless he decides to play with some shenanigans and pull it back down just to piss everybody off. Justin Gantzler coming off with 225 kilos, 496 pounds, 65 plates. So depending on how much room Justin has left, this actually might be his chance to pull himself into first. With this lift, he actually temporarily pulls himself into first place with this lift. And that's the power of the puller. Three white lights. You guys can't hear the energy venue. Very somber. <laughs> if, only you guys, if there was only a camera on our commentators, you'd see Nick busting it down. It is very, very, it's not very loud electronic music, but it isn't quiet. The energy in here is electric. The bar is not loaded yet. We are going to clean and brush the bar, leading into the second round of deadlifts. It just gives everybody a fair chance on the bar. A lot of baby powder, like you said, can accumulate on the bar, make it quite slippery. The knee seeing the turn of video. Clean bar for 115 kilos. That's often for a 15 kilo jump on deadlift. Very narrow grip on the bar, almost completely off the early. It's a good thing that they did clean that bar, otherwise it would have been covered in baby powder and been all the more difficult to hold on to. Now, lifters can elect to call to have the bar clean between attempts. And on third, it will be automatically cleaned. However, if they don't elect to clean it, it is up to the volunteer's discretion. And Anton Kushka, it, it seems that there's blood on the bar, so they will have to clean that. Nick, do you opt to clean the bar between every attempt on deadlift? I do. I think that it would be silly and foolish not to call to have the bar clean. I don't want any variables. I have the bar clean before my opener, for my second. Right now, we're just getting any sort of blood or debris off the bar. It's a biohazard to have the lifters rip onto someone else's blood, and it's just aching. That's going to be a nice clean bar, courtesy of our volunteers for Juan Paulo Ramiros. 165 kilos. There's a the bar and platform free, free of any bodily fluids for Juan Carlos to pull on. Oh, just a bit too heavy today. Uh, he took a very aggressive 15 kilo jump between his opener and the second. Unfortunately, just didn't budge off the ground. However, he has another attempt. I've seen crazier things happen, especially on deadlifts. He might come out, switch to conventional even, and just rip it off the ground. But first, we have Leo Jenkins, 175 kilos, three reds on the bar, and the call up, no change. That is a big plate. Leo's only opting for a two and a half kilo jump from his second, or from his opener, sorry. I think that might have been too safe of an attempt. I think he should have jumped five, seven and a half. Even. Nick, do you kind of see with the conventional lifters that it's not necessarily an easy opener? Hmm? Would you say for conventional lifters, they might not necessarily have an easy opener? Yeah, I think with conventional, you don't get to rely as much on the leverage and momentum that sumo can bring you. Every lift is going to be a bit more taxing. So you need to be very, very strategic with those attempts. Kingsley Zongbo with a relatively easy 185. It was slow off the ground and it was spent towards Roger. Mm -hmm. 
We have Henry opting for a 190 kilo uh, second attempt. Yeah, so I think with this attempt, he very comfortably solidifies himself in third place position. Um, it will put about a 25 and a half kilo uh, difference between himself and Kingsley. So I think he may be looking to jump into second place at this point. So good luck for Henry Park. Curtis Lindsay up next, 195 kilos on the bar. Curtis Lindsay is a big blue strike lifter of the flight. Showcasing that you don't need to be super technical. You just got mounds of muscle. Yeah, that booga booga strength. Might as well use it. Curtis has that strength. 195. First it was on the ground, then I looked up, and it was off the ground. Curtis actually took a 20 kilo jump from his first to his second. So what do you anticipate it'll take between the second and his third? After that, maybe a 15 kilo jump. So it looked just as easy. And he set it down just as gently. John Ross is coming up for 200 kilos, taking a big hit of that ammonia to get piped up. Looking for a 15 kilo jump between his first and his second. Let's see if he can get it. Blows up 200. Looked like a last warm up, not even an opener, but it was a second. He's got lots of room to go with that. Perfect new loading of 207 and a half kilos. So, with this, he'll hopefully have a 512 kilo total. And that'll put him very comfortably ahead of Henry, who's in third place behind him. So um, if he does miss this, it will definitely swing wide open for Henry to be in contention for that second place position. So let's see what Arby can do here. He's taking a 12 and a half kilo jump. And hopefully that's not too aggressive. It's sizable, but for deadlifts, it's enormous. Like I said, all these lifters will offer an easier opener and then have those nice big dunks from second to third. Gain a lot of ground in the deadlift. Having a bit of a sticky lift, not as smooth as it could be, but three white lights regardless. And he's happy with it. Joshua Manuel up next with two 12 and a half kilos. He's opting for a 12 and a half kilo jump. Um, his main competition, Justin, opted for a seven and a half kilo jump. So, assuming that he does get this and Justin does get his second as well, Joshua will have a two and a half kilo lead going into that. Or third attempt, sorry. So in terms of this personal best, he is pacing towards his PR of 225 kilos. Sticky off the ground, but it doesn't slow too much to knock it out. I think it's. I think the muller power might have to carry him to his third deadlift. I don't think it's possible to miss too many lifts with the muller. It's a bit of a magical air type. It instills a lot of power, a lot of glory, and it makes the weights very baby. So does this mean we may be seeing mullet manders next national? Absolutely not. My brother will kill me, and I don't have the hair. Scott Rockdown is coming out for 220 kilos. See one of our cameramen, Bray, really feeling the music in here. You guys can't hear it, but he clearly can. Grooving out, jamming out, head banging harder than these weights are banging the ground. Scott Cox now looking to bang 220 keys into the ground once he locks it out. And he does. Give it a good old slam. 
Really long, liking the look of 220, saying, give me that too, keep it on the bar. I'm going to pull it even faster than the last one. Well, there's a conventional double overhand hook grip lifter. It's an odd archetype. You don't see a lot of them. They're a rare breed. Oh, he loses grip at the top there. Yeah, that's going to be three red lights. Hopefully he can make a comeback. Currently he's sitting in first place position in the 93 open class. And that tends to be the issue with hook grip. Even though it does allow for a more symmetrical pull, it is a bit more inconsistent of a grip, especially if the bar starts to drag along the thighs or if the skin starts to tear, it doesn't seem to be quite as consistent or secure as a good mixed grip is. We have Wes actually taking a very aggressive 32 and a half kilo jump from his opening. This is 222.5 kilos for Wes Bay. His PR is currently 210, so let's see what he can do here. Lewis, right, right before lockout on the thigh. Fortunately for him, he has one more attempt at it. Um, if he actually had gotten that, he would have temporarily pulled himself into third place position. So I think he's aiming to get himself on a podium. So he's got heart making sure he wants to end up on that podium or as far down as possible. The thing with a conventional pull like that is you can really just fight and grit your teeth and make miracles happen. So we'll see. We'll see how much grit Wes can muster on his third. Two dancers coming off the field for 32, 25 kilos. This is only a seven and a half kilo jump from his second. First, first, sorry. A good work there. Provide so much distance, but not enough to deter him. White lights. So currently, we have just a two and a half kilos behind Josh. So we'll see if he can close that gap a little bit more. Luckily, um, Justin is a heavier puller than Josh, so he'll be able to elect the load um, that he puts on the bar to pull himself into first place position. We're starting to get some lights brewing up in the deadlifts, as we should. But before that, with Eric Nielsen, the 240 kilograms. Eric Nielsen looks good. This is a pretty big jump. There's no baby powder on his thighs. Barely any chalk on his hands. At least he fixed his, his uh his he did initially have that issue with the socks, but they looked past. However, they're up to his knees now. And the bar is up to his hips. Okay, good lift. Three white lights. No sock issues deterring him from those hard-earned kilos. So, Nick, if you were Eric, he is very far ahead of the pack for the 83 juniors. Would you opt for a bit of a YOLO pull on your third? I think you can only go so high. I think that any of the really fun milestones, like a 600-pound player, is maybe out of reach. If I was him, I would load 265 because it is 584 pounds, which basically six plates. I think it's the closest milestone. You have nothing to lose. However, it looks like you loaded 257 and a half, so we aren't the same person, sadly. Demisi Latillo coming out now for 125 kilos. He hasn't even set up on that bar. Really, interestingly enough, he basically is gripping the, the center knurling with his right hand. He hasn't setting up even. That's something that he's going to have to. Expecting moving forward. For now, it is a good lift at 125 kilos. Robert, might just be in some secret tech we don't know about. Well, he could be a pioneer. We'll see in later years down the road. However, it's a technique I haven't seen utilized before. And there could be a reason for it. Anyways, Juan Carlos. 
coming out now for 165 kilos. Now he previously couldn't break the ground with this. He's going to see if he can change anything, make it move differently, maybe even try to lock it out. Taking his time with the setup here. Unfortunately, cannot break the board. A bit heavy. It could be that there are magnets under that spot of the platform. And hopefully they roll the bar out of that magnet zone for the other lifters. However, Leo Jenkins now, 182 and a half kilos. Now the third attempts are going to dictate that the spotters and loaders will brush and wipe the bar clean for every single attempt so that each lifter has a fair shot at a clean barbell. <laughs> Going for a 182 kilo deadlift. That's basically four plays. And he did it. He picked up four plays. I think he had lots of room there as well. He didn't need it. Four plays is a great milestone to end off at and end the meet at. Go off on a high note. These are the third plays, so the final lift of the day for these gentlemen. And 192 and a half kilos is going to end the day for Kingsley Zong as well. So, unfortunately, he's just at a striking distance from third place. And I think he's just opting for a PR of 192. Yeah. This is ultimately a sport about competing against others. But at the same time, it is also fun to just compete against yourself. See what numbers you can hit on the day. See if you can beat the barbell. And Kingsley Zong beats that bar. He beat it hard. 192 and a half kilos. <laughs> Not enough resistance for Kingsley Zong today. So, interestingly enough, Curtis only opted for a two and a half kilo jump from the second attempt. It could be that he forgot to get the card in in time. It could be that this is just all he thinks he has. Last yeah, Nate Curtis's 195 was easy enough to file for at least the 200 mark. But we'll see how 197 and a half moves. This could be a calculated decision in regards to a mistake application. This might also just be for potentially just a qualifying photo that you need, so we'll see. Regardless of what was on the bar, Curtis picked it up. He's probably going to toss it overhead as well. Yep. As an athlete, that's all you do. You go up to the bar and you pick it up. And he's part now going to try and pick up 207.5 kilos. He's opting for another 17 and a half kilo jump here. Um, Henry is currently solidified in third place, and he's just out of striking distance from second place. So, let's see what he can do. He's one of our only lifters who's opting for this very high belt position. Like, what do you think of that? I think that belt can sometimes get in the way. A high belt position lets the hips still glide through. Like, help the belt get in the way. Henry, unfortunately, not able to glide through. Two log out, got stuck at the knees. He walks away with the third, uh, third place position and a bronze medal for himself. Away on the podium is never something to be ashamed of. John Rockford looking to walk out to 212 and a half kilos. So, 
from his opener to his second, he took a 15 kilo jump, and from his second to his third, he's taking a 12 and a half kilo jump. Um, he's just out of striking distance of podium, but I think he's just looking to walk away with the PR. Setting up conventional. Getting his arms ready for the pole. Does it perfectly along with the beat in the in the venue as well. Oh, struggles a little bit at the top there, but nice kick. Four speed is fast. He struggles against the bar. But the judges have no trouble giving him blue light light for good this. Marvin Lee jumping along, getting ready for 215, getting ready for a fight. You can see it in the corner there. Third attempt deadlift. You have no other list beyond this point. If you're going to give it your all for one lift, this is the lift you do it for. Empty the tank, blow it up. If you pass out after, at least you know you don't have to lift another lift. Put it all, put it all out there. Irving taking a big hit of ammonia. He slaps the back as well. I thought for this final deadlift, 215 kilos. Fortunately, he has second place position already locked up. So this is just a premature victory lap for him. It out. What do the judges think? Unfortunately, it did bobble downwards a bit. The names, like the other lifts, the bar can only go up until you get the down command. Unfortunately, he fought through that sticking point. I didn't think he would, but he did. But he simply moved downwards before he could pull it back up. And there was no lift. Yeah. I think it looks like he just got a little too silly and uh, was not able to wrangle it back in. As one would say. Sometimes he gets silly. Sometimes you can't wrangle it. So we got Willie retaking his second attempt. Uh, so he failed right at the top with, uh, at lockout with his grip. So, Nick, would you uh, actually recommend that he switch his grip for this last attempt to, to get it in? Because he clearly had the strength for it. I think it would depend on how his skin is. If it just fell out due to a little bit of a, a bit of strength, I would stick with the hook. It's what you're familiar with. However, if that thumb is torn at all, I see you just the hope that you've done enough mixed grip in your life to figure it out. See what he does now. I think that's far. It's an ammonium up. Plenty of back smacks. There's a lot of chalk in the back of that thumb. I think he's going to go for another hook grip attempt. Let's see if the hook stays loyal today. Or if we'll have another mixed gripper in the future. He drop. Breaks the floor. Gets it past his knees. And he just runs out of gas. Bar started slipping out of that hand again right at lockout, and he didn't have the gas or the security in the hand to lock it out on Next up, we have West Bowie, 222 and a half kilos. He did fail this as well on his second. Just a bit too heavy. We'll see if he can make any adjustments he needs to. He can get a little gritty. He can get a little glory. Find that ladder to baby and pull 222 and a half kilos. So with this, if he makes it, he pulls himself temporarily into third place position by two and a half kilos. So I think Scott's backstage sweating a little bit. That's always tense, watching people deadlift to your position. Forcing the same sticking point at his second attempt. Just gets stuck right above the knee. Can't quite finish it. Next, we have Joshua Manuel with 225 kilos, rather. This does match his PR, if I remember the athlete profile. There it is. 
125 kilos. Imagine if we are, if we can hit this. Uh, so with this, he actually would secure himself a 547.5 kilo total. Nick, would you opt for a jump this big when you have someone so close behind you? If the pressure's on you, sometimes you just have to answer. Well, hopefully we don't see the same mistake that Josh has made as our, with our other lifters, and hopefully he can finish. Sometimes pressure creates diamonds. Or something. That's at least how they told me diamonds were formed. I think it's a giant psyop. I think they make them in a factory. Handling that mullet power. Picks it off the floor, gets it past his knees. So manual. Time is too hard. Facing himself pretty well ahead in the competition. Taking 225 officially on the platform. With that, I imagine we'll see an attempt change very shortly here from Justin to uh Barely pull himself into first place position. Hopefully they are paying attention. With these third attempt pulls, you are allowed up to three changes. They're unlike any other lift in that regard. So they just opted for a change to 237 and a half and 235. I believe that must be a mistake. But that still puts him 10 kilos on. It could be that he doesn't think he has the 10 kilos and he's instead opted to just take a PR. Could be that he was forced out. Like I said, when you have pressure on you, sometimes you have to answer. Regardless, we have Sean Crouch now on. Right now, it's 130 keys. Currently, Scott is in third place position. This will cement his third place position with this ball. Oh, and he loses at his knee. Fortunately, just fell a bit forward, I think. Got a bit of turbulence at the knees, lost balance, lost the bar, and lost the lift. Just a dancer, it looks like they are going to load 237 and a half kilos. They are allowed to call for a change up until they say bar is loaded, and by that point, it is final. Looks like that is what they'll be electing to pay. 237 and a half kilos being loaded. Rush down and clean for Justin Dancer to end out the day for him. So most likely he's just loading the 237 after the today. Uh, he's still solidified his second place position, so he'll be walking away today with a silver medal. It was a good lift. I don't think he had a lot more, so I think that pull was on the money. You can't pull four positions. Just take what's there and end on a good note for, your, for yourself. Nick, would, would you take that advice yourself? No. <laughs> Eric Nielsen coming out now to 257 and a half kilos. Two and a half kilos under his PR. So, Eric's coming out today for a uh, victory lap right now. He's currently 100 kilos ahead of his opposition. See, it is a bit of an odd choice for a attempt. There is no one on his tail. It is just under his PR. You can see how it moves, but I think that you know, if I was in his position, I would have chosen 265. That's a very comfortable turn. Area. 265 was there, and I think he should have went for it. But regardless, he ends the day with 257 and a half kilos, which is very, very strong. Regardless, yeah, ends off the day with a very impressive 630 kilos. Right? Strong total, strong lifter, ends out our A flight, and now we move on to the B flight, the final desert lift flight of the HP Gravity game. So we got a few interesting battles to see how things shake out here. So um, Willie Wong is our current 893 men's open in first place. However, he has the disadvantage of being in flight A, with his main competition, Gold and Diego, currently in second and third in flight B. So these gentlemen know exactly what they need uh, to lift in order to beat him. So we'll see if they can put it together. 
Quite the advantage to know exactly where you have to put on the bar, and your opponent can't do anything to stop you. For the first out, we have Aaron Miles with 157 and a half kilos. Sub Junior and Andy. Back, Aaron has secured himself a 400 kilo total. Luckily, so far, we haven't seen any bomb outs. Knock on wood, if I had any wood available, I don't, which scares me. Justin Peterson coming out at 165 kilos. Hopefully, he sets down the bar with some precedence so we can see that bullet flow because he sure does keep it up with some speed. There it is, the slightest in the wind. Three white lights without a turn. Up we have Vernon Luke Lane with 190 views. Either. Oh, there we go. And we're back. The deadlift move was not as much haste as we expected. Yasser Ibrahim, uh, 195 days. Our other guaranteed sub junior lifter of the day. Well, he was a very technical squatter and bencher, so I am a bit surprised to see him come out conventional. But he still takes a hook print, so he's still a bit of a Technical sub junior, if you will. 95 doesn't provide too much resistance, but he gets two white life for his effort. Roald Palea in contention for that 93, right? 93, 93, yeah. 93 kg open spot. Hopefully, at 205 kilos. So, fortunately, these men know what number they need to beat. That number is 542 and a half, so. With this lift, he'll secure himself a 530 total, and he only needs 12 and a half more kilos to get himself uh, into that first place position. Let's see how 205 moves, and if he has 12 and a half kilos more on the deadlift. Now, he has had some unfortunate attempt selection in the squat and the bench, namely the squat. Let's see how deadlifts move. Looking for a wrist wrap hook print. Not often you see wrist wraps on the deadlift. Seems to help Roald though. Some people do say, or at least few, that the wrist wraps are secure the hand closed a bit by wrapping very, very tightly around the tendons, forcing them closed a bit more than if they were to be raw and naked. However, other lifters feel that they get in the way of it, which is why it's not too often that you do see people walk out with wrist wraps on the deadlift, like Almio Sai here. No wrist wraps, but does have a belt. 212 and a half kilos on the pole. The dropping for a conventional stance. So he's currently in third place position. Lagging behind by 12 and a half kilos. We'll see if he can make up the deficit. Draw all the way to lockout and then it throws a bit. Ledge himself around the bar, a bit uncomfortably almost. Mason Johansson now looking at 217 and a half kilos on the deadlift. So Mason's looking to fight for that second place position. He uh, unfortunately was a little too silly on his bench press and taking 15 kilos up and missed his second and third attempts. So uh, he's just trying to shy Almo away with. Uh, 17 and a half to strength. Something to have a false grip on the other hand, underhand rather, but it is smooth regardless. I would almost say 
You could try and do a little silly on it. Attempts, maybe not a 15 kilo jump, but a 12 and a half and a 10 wouldn't be unwarranted. Diego Salazar now coming up for 225 kilos. Currently, uh, Diego is also in contention for that first place spot. Very similar to Gold, this deadlift will give him a 530 kilo total. So uh, it's very likely to see these two men go head to head for that first place position. Very smooth for Diego. He accelerates the lockout and whips back easy and efficiently. Christian Costoy now looking at 230 kilos. 507 pounds. Our sub junior, maybe junior visitor. Not only can he bench three plates, he can pull above five. A bit of a pause rep. Flexing on the opponents. Three reds, unfortunately. <laughs> a bit of downwards movement. I think, I think you could see there, he, uh, as he started, he looked at the head ref in confusion where he paused. And, and then the head ref kind of gestured at him to keep going. So uh, I think Tristan will very comfortably take uh, a jump out there. There is no start command, nor is there a start, pause, re-pull, down command in the deadlift. And he is electing for a 15 kilo jump after that. It was a very easy pause rep, honestly. Anyways, Felix Rashley now coming up for 235 kilos. Let's see if he pauses it or if he pulls it smoothly. Oh, a bit of a pause there as well, right above the knee. We're good. Deadlift. He also kind of dropped it. Three reds, unfortunately. We're seeing some mishaps on the opener poles here. Hopefully these men can put it together. Because, uh, um, as I think Nick had previously said, you need to get at least one successful attempt in a squat, bench, and deadlift at the quarter. Samson now coming up to 240 kilos. We see, see a third pause in a row. I, I'm going to start getting confused what sport we're in. Hopefully we have a smooth 240 been a very smooth lifter on both squat and bench so far. Very good lift. Looks a little silly at times, but he's keeping up that trend. Ooh, even a very nice control on the way down. Fairly made a noise off the platform. Good lift. 240 keys for him. Big Joseph Rowe coming out to 250 kilos. 551 pounds for Big Joe Rowe. Now, I think every handler here so far has made the mistake of not asking for the bar to be clean. Joe Rose currently being handled for the first time by Tommy Rez. And making that same mistake, hopefully it doesn't prove too much of an issue for Joe. I know him. He's going to elect for a grip conventional. Very easy. Very odd lockout in which he whips back aggressively. Worried that that might cause a bit of a hitch issue later on. Biggest cost it doesn't. For now, it's a good lift. It's going to be holding the bar at 250 for John Manuel. 250, 551 pounds. So, fortunately, we've got a bit of a fight on our hands for the 105 men. Uh, John Emanuel is currently two and a half kilos behind Joseph. So, they're very close in the deadlift, so let's we'll see how this session plays out. Honestly, they have very similar looking pull, both in style and speed. Hard to guess who has the edge here. So Joseph's opting for a 20 kilo jump, so he must feel very confident after how his opener moved. Here comes Ajay Paul Singh Guman. Our 700 pound, 400, 700 pound squatter, 400 pound venture. Where is he going to end up deadlifts? He's opening with 260 kilos. How 
almost a strongman style type hold. Very, very wide stance. Very, very wide grip. Rows, rolls it in rather. Pulls it quite smoothly. Three white lights. It's a good lift. I imagine he loads above 600 and finishes out that trifecta. Seven, four, and six. Nick, do you, do you tend to notice that with the bigger men, they have to grip a little bit wider and pull conventional? Yeah. The bar is set at the same height for everybody. So if you are a bigger, taller man, you have to get a lot more between sort of yourself and the bar to get down to that position. It necessitates a lot more of a wider stance, a wider grip, just to sort of get towards the bar. Body weight doesn't tend to help as much on the squat and bench as it does with the pull. But regardless, Ajay Paul still makes easy work of that 260. Oh, well, he's opted for a 15 kilo jump, so hopefully we'll see him crack into that 600 pound range. Before we get there, though, we have to return back to the start of the flight. Aaron Miles, one of our sub juniors, with 165 kilos on the ground. Got a very exciting flight ahead of us with a, a fight for the 83, or sorry, 93 and 105 open. Bit of work at the top, but he finishes it out. Good lift for Aaron Miles. Justin Mullet Peterson coming out to 185 kilos, looking to get an official four plate deadlift. Been quite an aggressive jump in his opening, it's a 20 kilo jump. However, this will be a five kilo PR for him. Looks like a good lift. Okay, one of the smoothest PRs I've ever seen. And we're going to push it. 405 pound plate, four plate PR. Milestone lift. Bars loaded for Vernon Luke Lee. 200 kilos, 440 pounds. It's a bit of work. His opener wasn't easy either, but unfortunately not a good lift. Two reds on both the side. Right cards, I imagine it was an insufficient lockout. The shoulders just weren't behind the hips. To get a successful deadlift, you need to have the shoulders behind the hips and the knees locked out. Otherwise, it won't get a look at whites in the judges. So, Nick, if you're in Vernon's position, do you opt to retake that 200? I would, just because it wasn't easy. It, you, he did fail on a somewhat of a technicality, but it wasn't an easy lift to accomplish regardless. Unlike Yasser, Ibrahim's 207 and a half, making easy work of that. That is not a lift he'll have to reattempt. Good lift for him. I think Yasser is most likely facing for a 500 kilo total. And for a 105 sub junior lifter, that is, would be quite impressive. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but Royal Pelea liking for a 10 kilo jump from his opener. He only needed five and a half to jostle in the first place. Does this not leave him just two and a half kilos under first? Unfortunately, it does. So I think he might just be trying to leave some room in the tank between his second and his third, which may not be the wisest decision, but it might be part of his game day plan. I think the play there would have been to secure first on your second because there is still another 93 open. Jostling for first, you secure it, put the pressure on them to fight you for that position, and then retake it on your third. We'll see how rolled pull goes here regardless. Move smooth enough. I think he had that two and a half in him. I think he did as well. He's now going to be forced to both make up that two and a half kilos on his third, along with putting enough pressure on who is it? Diego. So that's the other other man in the flight who will be competing for that uh, first place position in '93 with really long knees. So unfortunately, though, so both of these guys are uh, heavier '93s, whereas Willie was like an '86 kilo lifter. 
So these guys will have to total 535, not as high as 532. Okay. Uh, he'll have to get that extra five kilos on his next attack. High total goes to the lighter body weight. Almio's high, 220 kilos of weight on the bar. Oh, get stuck in slow off the high. More fast to lock out than slow on the way back out. But it's still three white lights. It doesn't matter if the lift is slow, if it's ugly, if it's legal, it's still good. With that, he's currently only two and a half kilos behind um, Mason, who's currently in second place. So he may be trying to jockey for position and hope to for himself into that second place position. Speaking of our 93 open battle, Diego Salazar, oh, 235 kilos. John, what will this pull him into? Currently, uh, if he gets this pull, it'll bring him to a 540 total. So that would pull him uh, just behind the required total. So. Uh, he'll have to opt for another five kilos on his third attempt in order to pull himself into first place position. And that's given that Roll doesn't put even more on his third to put the pressure on Diego. Diego's making very easy work at 235. If you ask me from a competitive standpoint, these boys are making some missed plays with their attempts. I think Roll definitely had two and a half more. I think Diego definitely had five more. They both could have pulled themselves past the current first place, jostle for position more on third. As is, they're going to be having to play a lot with their third attempts to secure both both positions, really. Not so. Both of them have their thirds currently in. They're both going to be tied on total at 557.5. So both of them believe they have plenty of room left. Felix Rashley with plenty of room left with 235 kills, not providing too much resistance, three white lights. So yeah, I guess he had to retake that after missing that on his opening. Between Rold and Diego, who has the body weight advantage? Um, Diego has the body weight advantage as well as he's a bigger pull. So I think he has the advantage competitively because he'll be able to choose what he wants to load on the bar and he can just match uh, Rold's total in order to walk away with that gold medal. Rold is going to have a lot of pressure on him to try to pick a number out of Diego's reach, but also one that he himself can pull, like Mason just pulled 240 kilos for another good lift. So Mason actually opted for a 22 and a half kilo jump there. And I think with that demo, he's definitely slammed the door shut on Almeo, potentially being able to jockey for that second place position. So I think he's very comfortably in second place. And now it's just a matter of whether or not he can close the gap enough between himself and Sander to uh, get that full medal. We've got a lot of battles going on. The second and third deadlifts is where the meet really starts to get interesting. First, we have Tristan Costoy, maybe sub junior, maybe junior, but definitely a 245 kilo puller. Two white likes the front judge giving it a red card. I'm assuming a bit of a soft knee at the top, but the other judges don't agree, and it is a good one. Up next, we got Sanders Sampson, 255 kilos, four reds, a yellow, and a collar. Very pretty looking bar. Hopefully, it's a pretty looking lift as well. So, Nick, would you recommend anything for Tristan to make sure he's not soft at lockout? That is a technical issue that is going to be addressed way better in training. There's not too much of an adjustment you can make on the day. You just have to hope that the judges like you enough. And sometimes that's what it comes down to on game day a little bit of luck and a lot of strength. Sander Sampson looks to have a lot of strength. Doesn't need the luck too much because he's got three white lights and a clean looking lift. Master with that lift, he very confidently creates a 50, or yeah, very confidently creates a 30 kilo lead for himself between first place and second place. So we'll see if uh, if Mason can put together a big hold to potentially make Sanders sweat a little bit. Now in the 105 open battle, we have John Emanuel Ledudella going first with 265 kilos. Joe Rowe will answer right after with 270. So with this, um, assuming both men get their seconds, there will be a seven and a half kilo difference between the two. So very, very close when it comes to these uh, 105 men. John. If it's a game of chicken, John just blinked a bit. Two white lights, 
one red. It's a good lift, but it wasn't confident. It wasn't fast. So now with Joe Rowe having a bigger second and also having a projected lead, depending on how this moves, we could have a fight where Joe Rowe could run away with it. Only real advantage John does have is he's just the slightest bit lighter. So we'll have to see how it shakes out. That advantage may not even come to fruition here. Joe with much faster bar speed. We'll see how the judges like it. Three white lights. So I think John is just, his strategy right now, I think is just to try and tie Joseph and hope that he misses his third and then hope that he wins on body weight because he only took a seven and a half kilo jump. And I think that's about all he might have. John will have that advantage the whole last. John will have the final answer. But before that, Ajay Paul Singh looking to round out his 700 400 with another 600 on the pole. 275 kilos. Five reds and a collar. Oh, and I think three white lights is a good win for Ajay Paul. So, Nick, if you were. If you were him, would you go for uh, an even more aggressive jump and maybe go for 300? Or you? I think 300 is definitely out of reach. I think that the next milestone, my completely objective, definitely not subjective level of milestones, would be 290. I think that it's just a very pretty number. I think that 15 kilo jump is pretty consistent between his first and his second. So I think that if you're going to end up the day, he'll definitely have the heaviest pull of the meet. They'll have the final lift of the Gravity Games. I say go out with a bang, get the crowd on their feet, and leave everyone with a smile on their face, or at least something to talk about. So he actually opted for a 285 kilo deadlift. So very interestingly, Joseph has also elected for a 290 kilo deadlift. So I take back what I said, but it looks like Joe Rowe will be the one ending out the meet. If nothing changes, well, with these third pulls, things can change. Aaron Miles is going to be starting us out with 172 points. 380 pounds, just under 400 for this sub junior lifter. Oh, a little bit up and down. It's a bit of up and down. Does catch it and walk it out, but the judges are going to give you three red lights for that. Unfortunate way to end the day, but still, he did collect that lift at the end. There's a lot of heart, there's a lot of poise. Tiny little technical issue for the sub junior lifter. I think if he cleans that up, he still has a bright future ahead of him. It's a good first meet. I think it's his first meet. I could be wrong. Definitely seems like it is. I feel like it's very common to see these sub junior and juniors make very silly mistakes, whether that be jumping commands or just slight mis execution on their lifts. Everyone makes mistakes. It's better to make them early than later on in your career. I mean, you'd hate to go to Worlds. Go out for your first deadlift and bobble it. That would suck. Go out for your bench and your head's off the bench. Yeah, allegedly. Allegedly. It's just a rumor. I don't know who that happened to. I wish them nothing but the best. I wish Vernon Luke nothing but the best. Because 200 people deadlift. Be attempting this after a very difficult second. Let's see if he can get it. Oh, he's got it past his knees. And he locks it he out. Just has to lock it. Get the shoulders back a little further. I don't know how the judges are going to feel about that. Two white lights, it's good enough for them, and it's good enough for him. A good lift. He gets redemption on that, on that second attempt, rather, where he did miss that just on lockout. Justin Peterson taking a look at 200, going, that works nice. I want some of that. Keep that on the bar. Just clean it up for me. I'm going to pick it up, too. Yeah, so he's taking a 15-kilo jump there. It'll be a total 20-kilo PR for him, so let's see what he can do. I think the mullet magic might be coming in here. Do you think you could ever go up to the attempt desk and just ask them to just, like, keep the bar loaded at whatever the last guy hit? I guess they wouldn't know where to put you. Never mind, that was silly. Justin Peterson coming out now for 200 kilos. Busting it down a little. Shifts a bit to one side, unfortunately. And just loses it. He put it all out there. He went for a big jump, nice, smooth 
roundabout number, 200 kilos, a milestone at these local uh, local meets, rather, these third deadlift attempts. That's where you're going to put it all on the line. You're going to go for a number that you like. You're going to ask them to load it, and you're going to try and pull it. Can't fault the lifters for trying. I can't, can't ever fault anyone for showing some heart. Yasser Ibrahim going to show some heart now for the 212 and a half kilo jump. Or not jump, attempt. <laughs> if he made a 212 kilo jump, I would call him a fool. And I would get up and shoot him. So up for a five kilo jump from his second attempt. I think he was a little sticky at lockout, so probably a good, good safe decision. Look for a conventional. Let's hope the hook stays loyal. Oh, gets stuck with his quads, and he, I think he locks it out. The thumbs say good. I give that lift two thumbs up. The rest give it three white lights. Emil Sai, I end up four reds on the bar. No change, just a call of 225 kilos. Emil Sai. Very comfortably in third place position. Um, unfortunately for him, just due to um, Mason making his second attempt, um, pulling for podium is just out of his reach. So I think he's just going to walk away with the 225 PR, or he's hoping to walk away with the 225 PR. And you can see our favorite camera and Bray busting it down, enjoying the music in the venue. Oh, oh he is scratching the attempt, actually. That gives us 50 seconds to, again, give a shout out to our sponsors. I'm not going to make the same mistake I made last time of trying to read the long list and failing tragically because, frankly, 50 seconds is enough. Instead, I will give a heartfelt thanks. To the sponsors that make this event happen, to the volunteers that make the event happen, to Bray, who is waving at me right now. Thank you for having the camera work to make this event happen. So, uh, we, while we still got a few seconds left, I think we could uh, recap a few of the battles we got going on here. So, the, the one that we got coming up real quick in the fight here is between Gold and Diego, both fighting for podium position, or sorry, first place position in the 93 class. And then we got a battle just at the end of the fight between our 105 open men. Now, I do want to say that I think Royal is making a bit of a misplay here with a relatively large jump. He only needs that two and a half kilos to get into first place. Diego, the onus is on him to pull afterwards. Diego could always miss. Trying to push your opponent out of position by that far, I think is putting too much faith into them. And possibly too much faith into yourself. This is a really very, this is very much a huge jump and a huge attempt for him. 12 and a half kilos above his PR. He's opting for a 17 and a half kilo jump. Yeah, more than he needs by a long shot. Maybe this pushes Diego well out of the strike zone. Gold pulls for the win here. Maybe he bites off more than he can chew. And falls just short of that first place. Well, currently, he's sitting in third place position, so we'll see what he can do. I'm getting down to the bar with that double overhand hooker from strap or strap. Sorry, yeah, no straps are allowed on the platform. If you manage a way to sneak them on, you're good to go. Oh, he breaks the floor. Oh. Little shaky towards lockout, but he does lock it out. What do the judges say? Unfortunately, that is going to be two red lights so for a bit of a downwards motion and a bit of a bobble. Yeah, so looks like Roll is going to be walking away with that bronze medal. So Diego has the option now to change his third deadlift to just exactly what he needs to get on the, into first place. For that, though, we have Felix Rashley with 237.5 kilos. He's only often for a two and a half kilo jump after failing his opener and just taking it on his second. Interesting attempt selection. 
However, Oops. it is also interesting because it's another strat. So, you make a king with Diego, and you only need five kilos to secure first place. What would you do? I'm going to be honest, it is a harder decision than you think it'd be. Obviously, we can sit here rationally and go, hey, it's only five kilos loaded, but pride is in the way. You know that you can pull much more than five kilos. At this point, you now have to balance between a number that is high enough that you're happy with, but also low enough that you know you can hit it with absolute certainty. Oh, well, currently he's opting for a 17 and a half kilo jump. Way more than he needs. Yeah, between his first However, and second, he only took a 10 kilo jump. It could be what he wants. You're not just competing against others in these competitions, you're competing against yourself. And unfortunately, sometimes you beat yourself. Pride is a dangerous sin. One of the worst ones. It's up there with sloth. Oh, well. Unfortunately, the, uh, we'll have to get that attempt change in before they load the bar for Mason. Mason's opting for a 250 kilo deadlift, and Diego would only need a 240 kilo deadlift. So the bar cannot go back down. Um, so he'd have to get that attempt change in very, very soon. Well, they say bar is loaded for Mason. So this will, I think this will, we'll see now how, how everything's going to line up. But I think, I think he's out of time. The bar is loaded for Mason. We have some 250 keys. Diego is now secured at least above 250 keys. So eight has retreated. Mason is very currently solidified his second place position. I think he's just going for a PR lift here. He passes his knees and locks it up very easily. Mason gets a clean 250. That is the lights have not yet come on. I'm going to preemptively state that was three white lights. There's no way that they give that red. And it is three white lights. I am clairvoyant. I see all. Diego Salazar coming out now for 252.55 kilos. Not only is this for the 93 gold medal position, it's for all the marbles. It is way more than he needs. It is way above the other competitors in the class. He's doing this for his cat. I'm sure of it. He's doing it to assert his dominance. If he hits this, not only does he walk away with gold, he walks away with a 9 for 9 day. It was a very, very few to do it today. Very, very elusive. Nine for nine is a perfect day. Can Diego have it off? The top is 52 and a half kilos. And I think that Got it. does it. Gold medal pull for Diego Salazar. His cat could be happy with a perfect day. Nine for nine. That's one too many per jokes for one session. I have regret. Tristan Costaway now coming out for 260 kilos. Junior, maybe sub junior, Tristan Costaway. So far, has only lift, missed one lift. This is 230 kg deadlift opener. He elected to jump 15 anyways. Hit it. Elected for another 50 kilo jump, which is coming up for now. 260 kilos. I think if he hits this, it's a, it's a basic one. We don't count on this opener if you go up. Oh, and he's powering through. Oh, a bit of hitching. A bit of a hitch. He shouldn't have said that too loudly. The judges are now going to think about it. And it is three reds. I put that entirely on John. They would have given it to him as white lights if John didn't say so loudly that it was hitching and tell the referees what to give him. John, you're a terrible one. <laughs> the referees were thinking, yeah, that's a good lift. And the, all you heard in the venue, the, the venue went quiet. John just yelled, hitching. Can't believe it. Anyways, Sander Sampson coming out now. For 265 kilos, regardless of how this goes, I won't say a damn word. Can't speak for my co-host, John Walls. He might just say he dropped it. I think, I think Sanders about to let the dog out here. Big 265 kilo deadlift. 
basically a 585, basically six pound plates loaded on the bar here. Judges feel about the lockout. I'm being nice and hush hush because they love it. Three white lights didn't want to put any impure thoughts in their head about the lockout. We're coming down to our final battle of the day here between the 105 open men. So, um, John, with this deadlift, will currently tie Joseph Total. Um, at the body weight advantage. Exactly. So, I think that's what he's hoping for. That 265 he pulled on his second was quite difficult. So, I think he's just trying to pull himself to tie Joseph's total and just hope that he doesn't make his third attempt. Yeah, if he hits this and Joe misses his third, whatever his third may be, John will walk away with the win. He puts the onus on Joe to hit, but he has to do his job here first. He needs to pull this to jostle into first. Hammerman Bray really feeling it in the corner. Can John feel the same energy? Can he pull it as hard as Bray can dance? He's oh, pulling I... it. He's locked it out. Do the judges agree? Three white lights. He pulls himself into first place. Can Joe Rowe answer? Depending on if he changes it, we will see after Magic Paul sing. Attempt 285. So, Nick, if you were if you were Joe, would you opt for a attempt change just to pull exactly what you need? Now, I am not Joe, and I know Joe. I've handled Joe in the past. It doesn't matter. Joe has decided on 290 probably months before he was going to go out no matter what and pull it regardless. Joe is a man that doesn't care too much about placing. He does after the fact. He always wants to win, but he doesn't care to change the lift just the place he will go out for 290 i bet money on it not too much though because i am broke but i do bet money on it that he'll go out to 290 regardless of positioning and go and pull for all the marbles so we will first see ajapal singh guman come out here for 285 kilos or 628 pounds to round off his own day before we see 290 kilos loaded up for joe Rowe to end the gravity games Powerlifting me. Quite impressively, Ajapal Singh actually had the highest GL card in all men. You don't see that very often for men this big. No, not from a super heavyweight, but that's what happens when you squat 700 pounds. Also feeling the music in the room as well. Ajapal can squat, he can bench. He can pull! Oh, and he locks it out. 285 kilos. Or three white lights for Ajapal Singh. Rounds off the day with a huge 787.5 total. So now we're coming in our last deadlift of the day, the one that'll decide the winner of our 105 Open Men class here. This is a huge jump, 20 kilo jump from his second. 290 kilos, 639 pounds. So this will give Joseph a 660 total on the day. Yeah, that'll place him in first ahead of John if he hits this. However, again, if he does miss this, John has the same total as Joe and weighs just a bit lighter. Bar is loaded. No more changes can be made. Joe is going out for all the marbles. The final pull of the meet. To cap out the day, to cap out his day, and to see if he can cap it out with a gold medal around his neck. Goes pulling, gets it to his knees, gets it up to his knees. He holds on to it. What did, ref what did the ref say? Three white lights. Joe Rowe pulling well ahead to get that gold medal to end his day with a 290 kilo, and to end the 2024 APU Gravity Games. That'll conclude the day. It was all the lifting we have. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you to all of our sponsors. We'll see you guys.
with the next meet.
Thank you. 